Happy New Year. Oh, and Happy New Year. Hey, we're way past our bedtime. Ah, it's been a good one, though, haven't it? It's not all here, eh? This is going to be our year, is this? That'll be a sciatica coming on again. I'll organise some. Well, who? Was it my true anybody? I'll go and get me caught. Well, it's supposed to be somebody down. Oh, well, that'll be easy. Streets are full of folk carrying coal at this time of night, aren't they? Otherwise, your coach will turn into a punchy. Otherwise, my mum will have a fit. You know what she said. Just the two of us. <laughs> hey, up! What are you looking for? Pub's next door. You said there was somebody in there. I don't know. Landlady can't find her own pub. Door weren't closed. Uh, no. Are you on your own or? On my own, yeah. Just needed to be. Yeah. So, uh, if you don't mind, uh, please. How many have you taken? How many, Ken? I just want to be left alone. How many? Well, however many I've taken, whatever I'm doing, it's none of your business, is it? It's none of anybody's business, so if you could just... Right. What are you doing? Ambulance. Three. That's all, three. No. It's all right, no, thank you. Three. And why? 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 Because, uh, because it's the best thing. It's never the best thing, Ken. Not that. <laughs> No, well, uh, you don't understand. Try me. Well, I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. <sighs> I'm sorry, this must be very embarrassing for you. No. Although it might be embarrassing if Alec turns up with a search party. I'll just let him know I'm all right. Don't worry. I won't say out else. So don't worry if I'm not back for a while. Never mind that. I'm all right, and I'll see you when I get back. 
Well, I'm sorry about that, Alec. I can't talk now. I'll see you later. So? Even this. Even this I make a mess of. Well, I'd say you were making a pretty good job of it myself. Till I came sticking my nose in. What else have you made a mess of? <laughs> you married, you mean? You think you've lost Deirdre? Deirdre? Tracy? Everything. Not everything. Oh, yeah. I'm 51. 51 years old. What have I got left in the world? Just thrown it all away. <laughs> just thrown it all away. <laughs> Nobody else had just me. Come on. And everything. Everything. I'm so alone. <laughs> I can't believe how much. No, you know. I'm here now, aren't I? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I should never have involved you. You didn't. I involved myself. I'm sorry. I was once near to what you're doing. Very near. Oh, it was a long time ago. But I thought I'd lost everything. I had the tablets all ready. And I was all set to do just what you're doing. So I do know a bit about it. You were younger. True. You can start again. So can you. No. And why in this house? Why here? This house, any house, what does it matter? Well, I imagine if it's in this house, Deirdre would be the one to find you. No, that's not the reason. No? Why? Why won't she forgive me? You're a woman, you tell me. I forgave her. I forgave her when she... Well, I forgave her, so why can't she forgive me now? Well, I dare say she can. <laughs> but you're not asking her just to forgive you, are you? You're asking her to love you. In fact, you're trying to force her to. Camping on a doorstep. Monitoring her comings and goings, and now this? You love Alec? True. Suppose he turned his back on you. Well, I'd probably do what you're doing now. But I'd be wrong. I'd be wrong. Because I can't make him love me. Lord knows why he does, but he does. And that's a miracle in my life that I'd have missed out on if I'd have done what I set out to do all them years ago. You might love Deirdre Ken, but she'll love who she wants, like we all do. My New Year's resolution i tell you. Yeah. I'm going to be more decisive, more the master of my own destiny, because I sometimes feel that I can be a little bit, well, a little bit too easily influenced by other people's opinions. No. No? Yeah, I don't think you are, no. Oh. Oh, well, perhaps not, then. And I, my New Year resolution is... I am not going to worry when you have to see Angela where business is concerned. Oh, really? Yes, because that's all it is. It's just business. Yeah, she's just a buyer. She, she happens to want to buy what we're selling. And then the fact that you were once married to her is 
Totally irrelevant. Totally irrelevant, yes. Well, then. Oh, maybe. You don't know what a load that is off my mind. Oh. I doubt Tracy will ever speak to me again. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. After what was said tonight. She's how old? 13? She'll have forgotten all about it by tomorrow. We all will. Oh, will we? Yeah. You think I'm just going to go back to that damn flat, sit looking at those four walls? I know every inch of them, every speck on the wallpaper. Move somewhere else. Where? I don't want to be wondering about what was going on here. I look at it this way. Twelve months ago, could you have imagined how you'd be feeling tonight? Of course you couldn't. And you can't imagine the next 12 months either. There might be all sorts of things lying in store. You think so? Look at me, I've told you. I'd given up all hope. The person I loved had turned his back on me. I thought that were it. You've got to go forward, Ken, not back. I don't want to go back. Believe me, I don't want to go back. Well, then you've got to accept. You can't make Deirdre love you. <sighs> no. Doesn't mean that she won't one day, but you can't make her. So what can I do? You carry on and see what turns up. You must think I'm pathetic. No. I think you've had a very bad year. And if I was you, I'd be glad it's all over. It can't get much worse, can it? Not a lot. Well, then. So, what will you do now if I say it's time I was going home? Now? Yeah. I'd better tidy this place up a bit. And then? Then, then I'll go back to that damn flat. Good. And thanks. Well, I dare say you don't altogether mean that. I bet there's a part of you that hates me for doing this. Still, happen one day you'll be able to thank me for it. I mean it. Ken Barlow. Yeah? He's been going through a very, very bad time. He needed somebody to talk to. Well, he doesn't have Becky's moments, does he? Shh! I want to listen. Why? What, what were we listening for? Anyway, what do you mean, bad time? He never has hotels, does Ken Barlow. Alec, don't ask me about it, please. Just believe me when I say I've no choice but to do what I did. All right, all, all right, I won't ask you. And shall I tell you something else? I love you. God, you'll never know how much I love you. Hey, love, come on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Most of this country is wandering around with thick heads, full of regrets, telling each other, never again. Uh, well, I think I have more reason for regrets than most. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say, we both told one another things last night that we'd rather weren't passed on to anybody else. Yeah. So, all forgotten it never happened, OK? Oh, it happened, Bert. And I'll always be grateful, I will. <laughs> what? Well, if I thought that, I'd never be able to face you in the Rovers again, would I? Across that bar, I'd have to go and hide in the cellar. Well, what do you want me to say? I want you to promise me that the next time you come in the Rovers, you'll just say, half a bitter. Like you didn't care whether it was me or Betty or Jack serving you. And I'll say 44 and you'll say thank you, because you're always polite. But it'll be just like last night never happened. I'll try. Well, I've winded her and I've fed her. Yeah, give her here. You go and get I some sleep. I can't get to sleep while she's crying, can well, I? Well, shut the bedroom door. You shut the bedroom door. You're just as tired as I am. You wouldn't think this sort of thing went on nowadays. You wouldn't know. Though I gather they're quite regular events. Mr. Sook didn't seem to know all about them. Then he seems to know about everything. Hey! Isn't that that boss of Curly? What's he called? Mr. Holmesworth. Oh, Holmesworth. Fancy him being. He wasn't planning on doing much actual dancing. Me neither. Perhaps if we just say we called in to give moral support. Did he marry? I seem to think so. I'm really not sure. I don't think he's too sure at the moment. He's ill treating, eh? I heard he was ill treating us, I tell you. Oh, I'm hardly getting at any food. So. Oh, so annoying. Oh, the Young Father's Brigade. I think congratulations are in order. Oh, thanks very much. Tell you what, let me buy you all a drink, eh? Wet the baby's heads. No, no, I'll save you money. Spend it on your fancy piece. Eh? Come on, let's get down with you. Right, what's up? No, see you later. Yeah, you can tell us how you get them asleep as well. Because it's the finest exercise in the world, you know, is dancing. Is it? Oh, yes. A top ballroom dancer needs the fitness of an Olympic athlete. If you'd uh, just excuse me for a moment. Certainly. And uh, were you ever um, top class? Oh, no, no. Just the gifted amateur. Though I did take some lessons. Me and the wife used to go when we were first married. To the back when. You're not here this afternoon. Oh well, no, no, we're actually uh, living apart. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, it's probably all for the best. I did what I could, but you have to know when to let go, don't you? But I must say, I'm very pleasantly surprised to see you here this afternoon. Yeah. Bit of a surprise to me at all. I suppose she doesn't care much, your friend. Emily. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot of her tight round here. You know, older ladies, nowhere else to go. But uh, don't let that put you off. There is quite a young, sprightly element here as well. Really? Oh, yes. But you'll never be short of a partner. I can promise you that. Oh, must you go? I'm afraid so, Mavis. I'm a married man now, you know. No longer a free agent. <laughs> the things you men say about your wives. But only behind their backs. Ah, yes. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry you've got to go when I've just got here. Why didn't you ring me, Derek? Tell me Victor was here. Well, um... Well, we had some business to discuss, but uh, I'm sure you'd have been very bored by it. Oh, yes, you would. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I'd like to take an interest. Well, perhaps Derek will tell you about it, then. <laughs> anyway, all the best for New Year. Oh, right, thank you. I had uh, unto you and Yvonne. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
No, I don't think Mrs. Bishop really enjoyed it. She didn't seem to want to talk about it. Ah, uh, well, you know what. Alma! Oh! A gin and tonic, that, please. Nice to see you, love. Don't worry, I shan't be asking how you're feeling. Oh, I'm feeling terrible. You know, I think it's the worst New Year I've ever had in my life. Oh, well, things can only get better then, can't they? 125. 125, exactly. Gracias. <laughs> you no, know, I keep telling myself I have to put a brave face and act like I don't give a damn. Then I think, why should I? I'll, uh, I'll be going over to Darlington next week. Oh, yes. That's what Victor called to talk about. Oh. I'll be taking Angela. Show her around the plant. Take her out to lunch. Standard procedure, really. Make the buyer feel important, you know. Mavis? You'll be spending the whole day with her. Well, more or less. Uh, I Do mean, you know, just, just the two of you. Yes, but remember what you said, Mavis. Your New Year's resolution. You're not going to mind about me and Angela. You said that. You remember, <laughs> Mavis. Morning. Nice day for it. Back to reality, eh? Morning, Percy. Been away, have you? No, she's just been to post a letter. Oh, Phil, can you come here? Is it the trouble, is it? I'll, uh, I'll bring your case in for you. Lane. Listen. And delays there have caused multiple tailbacks the last couple of weeks, so please be careful. Hey, oh. Tracy. Did you give us a heart attack? What are you doing here? I've just got back. I'll fetch your case. Oh, right. I thought you'd still be at your dad's. I haven't been there. I've been at Debbie's. Debbie's? Why? I had a row with me dad. Oh, Tracy, you didn't. No one was having rows with him. <sighs> what was it about? Nothing much. I'm with Paris. Thanks, Phil. <sighs> I can't stop. Um, let's do it again sometime, eh? Right. Look, I'm sorry. I've got to... I'll let myself out. Keep smiling. Thanks. I mean it. You're welcome. So, were the shops open? Did you buy any clothes? Never mind what I've been up to. It's your story I want to hear. You were right. It was a £10 note. I usually put them on top. Sorry about that, love. Do you want to go home for a couple of hours? <sighs> wouldn't do any good. I'm sure I wouldn't sleep. Why is Victor doing it? I mean, it's almost as if he's forcing them to be together. Listen. He's asked Derek to show Angela around a waste paper factory in Darlington. Look, and take her to lunch. Even so, I mean, it's hardly ten days on the Costa del Sex, is it? I mean, it sounds as much fun as doing a military two-step with Red Holesworth. You might have headache, but you haven't got swollen ankles. You don't know her, Rita. She's just like one of those lady ringmasters in a circus. Does she wear a top hat? Oh, you know what I mean. They crack their whip and, and some little poodle comes dancing out and does a few tricks for a biscuit. Well, that's just what she was like with Derek. Mavis, don't you think you're letting your imagination run wild? I mean, it's just a business appointment, that's all. I've heard Tracy's side of it, and I think you've got some explaining to do. Copy? No, I don't. And if you think I'm going to apologise for going away for New Year, you're going to have a long wait. I've just made some toast. Because what I do is my business, Ken. I don't need your permission. Is that clear? So, Tracy got back OK. Good. She told me what you said to her. What were you thinking about? I'm sorry. I handled it badly. You can say that again. She reckons you were expecting me to see the new year in with you. I mean, where the hell did you get an idea like that from, Ken? It's laughable. And it's certainly no reason to make the kid feel she's not wanted. Look, Nidri, I was wrong. I admit it. I said things that I shouldn't. I expected more of her and you than I was entitled to. You're entitled to nothing from me, Ken. I realise that now. Well, it's about flipping time. Sorry it's taking so long. But uh, I got there in the end. The pennies dropped and I promise you there'll be no more trouble. Well, let's hope not. Let's... Just get on with our lives in peace, eh? 
I'll second that. Good. By the way, uh, how was Paris? This dress she's making. I thought we could go out somewhere. Well, she said you can come round and listen to it radio if you want to, and my dad. Um, listen, uh, what dinner are we on today? One till two, why? Great, so am I. We can go for a walk. Outside, you mean? It's freezing. There's ways, you know, to keep warm. What do you mean about keeping warm? Go to the park. Oh, yeah. Hiya. Don't mind if I join you, do you? Hey, cup of tea, love. <laughs> Asa went to wedding fix then. I bet you can't wait, can you? <laughs> oh, hey, love. I don't see you. Ah, oh, Mr. Watts, take an early lunch, would you? I've got to go out on urgent business. What urgent business? No, no, Mr. Watts. Yours is not the reason why. <sighs> well, I don't know why he's a chirpy. Oh, neither do I. Oh, not to worry. This time next year, you might be starting a family. Give <laughs> over you. You want to watch him? Kim, he's got hands like an octopus. Like it was my birthday. <laughs> so with him. I'm stuck. Why can't I just phone Susan and say thanks? Because it's not the same. You've got to make an effort. Come here, let's have a look. Oh. That seems fine. Why don't you tell her how you've been getting on at school? Oh, no, school. I'm dreading going back. It's going to be awful. No, it's not. I've seen your dad and everything's fine. What did he say? Not much. He said he was sorry, so you can start worrying. Were he mad? I bet he were. I spoke his new year. I think you might be blowing it out of proportion just a little bit. Don't think you were wrong leaving him in the lurch like that, though. It's not what I did he won't forgive me for. It's what I said. Why? What did you say? He looked at me like I tried to stab him. What was it that you said? That he weren't my real dad. Oh, no. Look, I'm going out. Where? Well, to Debbie's. She says I can have my dinner. Are you sure? Well, phone a mum and ask if you don't believe me. But I would rather we lived in a tent, Derry, just so long as we were together. You have an unhealthy obsession with camping, Mavis. I don't wish to discuss it. Well, it would be a lot better than being dependent on your ex-wife to pay our mortgage. Do you want another drink? No, I don't. And you're not listening to me. Yes, I am. You made yourself perfectly clear. You don't like me doing business with Angela. Well, I understand that. I sympathise. But surely you don't expect me to cancel the order. Yes, that's exactly what I want you to do. Well, oh. Haven't you thought of the consequences, Derek? I'm sorry, you're going to have to decide. It's me or her. Two hot pots, was it? <coughs> Battery OK? Yep. Carb at OK? Yep. Well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. 190, son. Can you help us out for half an hour, son? I'm sorry. I promised Sally I'd get straight back. It's a full-time job having a baby, you know. Jack can tell you what, and Jack. Take my advice, son. Spend a lot of time with them when they're young, and you'll be proud of them in later life. How is your Terry? No comment. See what I mean? You know what little Rosie growing up like Terry Douglas, do you? All right, so when are you coming back to work? When my paternity leave's over. What paternity leave? You want to come and bet. Tea dance. Not really my scene. It's a perfectly normal and healthy activity. Rita enjoyed it. Did she? She enjoyed it as much as I did. I think we could be good company for each other. It's important at our age, both being widows. Don't you think? Hello. Oh, it's you. What are you doing over here? What can I get you? Well, I was just passing, so I thought I'd get the Gazette, see if there are any events for unattached gentlemen of a certain age. What sort of events? Well, I was wondering whether there was any uh, dancers on the horizon. Ah, well, why not? I mean, you obviously enjoy dancing, don't you? And it's as good a way as any as meeting new faces. My thoughts precisely. And I suppose being on your own, it takes your mind off personal problems. Mm. Good for you. I'm all for it. Well, what time shall I pick you up, then? I beg your pardon? About half past seven, a few drinks, uh, something to eat. We have a few things in common, me and you, don't you agree? You are joking.
Can I come in? Tracy. Of course you can. Come in. Can I get you something to eat? No, I've had my dinner, thanks. To what do I owe this honour? I've come to say I'm sorry. Your mother sent you, right? No, she didn't know I'm here. It was over what I said. I didn't mean it, honest. Oh, forget it, love, please. I couldn't stop thinking about it, though. I didn't think you'd want to talk to me again. I was afraid you'd feel exactly the same about me. It's not honest. I said some terrible things to you, love. I shouldn't have done that. You were upset about me, Mum. No, I've been selfish. You've had a rotten year and none of it has been your fault. That's something I'll never forgive myself for. But listen, things are going to be much better from now on. Your mum and me, well, we're going to live our own lives separately. But that doesn't mean that we can't all live in the same street or that there'll be any more friction. Now, that's got to be good news for you, hasn't it? I hope so. Anyway, whatever happens, you'll always be my dad. I don't want another dad. Just you. Happy New Year, Dad. No. Just the half, Liz, love. Oh, hi, Don. I'm glad you've come in. I've got the press here for Gail's baby. Well, she won't want visitors just yet, will she? Half, was it? Yeah. No, it's just be family for a few days. So do you think you could give it to us? Well, I tell you, I don't think we'll have time tonight. Uh, look, just keep it behind the bar, eh? Up and Martin will pop in in the next few days. Oh, right. Uh, 44, please. Thanks. <laughs> you what? Oh, keep your voice down. And are you? How about you? Randy Reg? I thought he were married, didn't his wife take him back? It didn't work out, apparently. She's gone and left him again. Go on, you might enjoy yourself. Give up. I'd rather go out with Percy Sugden. Has he asked you now? Oh, my God, I thought he were angling for summers. I'm never going again, I'll tell you that. Wait till I see Emily Bishop. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I can't find it anywhere. Can't find what? Pickled beetroot. You sent me for pickled beetroot. We haven't gotten it. It's out of stock. Won't be until Monday. Well, what did you ask me to fetch it for then? Well, it was just an excuse, you know. I missed you at lunchtime. Oh, I missed you too, <laughs> Curly. <laughs> not in here. It's not the time or the place. It's the only time and the only place. When we're married, we'll have all day if we want to. And all night. My mum keeps asking me when are we going to set a date as well. I don't know why she bothers asking all. She makes all the decisions. Norman! Well, she does. You take more notice of her than you do of me. No, I don't. I love you. Do you? Of course I do. You know I do. Right, then. <coughs> oh! I'm not disturbing you, am I, Mr Watts? Miss Turner? Some trouble, was there? Well, yes, um, Mr Watts... I was just uh, helping Miss Taylor look for the, uh, the, the pickled... <laughs> Pittle beetroot. We're out of stock. Not until Monday. Ah, well, that's why we couldn't <gasps> find it. Uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the pickles, Miss Taylor. Right, then. <clears throat> this is not good enough, is this, you know? Oh, no. This liaison with Miss Taylor is taking your mind off the job. I mean, half high or half high not, stressed you the better by policy of interstaff relationships. Well? Yes, Mr Holdsworth. I'm really setting a very bad example, as this, you know. In future, I shall keep my eye on the pair of you. Sect? Is that all you can think about? Not any more of this, and I shall be straight on that phone to head office. There'll be no mercy. Think on. But were you not worried about Ken causing more trouble when mm. she got back? Of course I was. But, as it turns out, I needn't have worried. Ken knows all about it and seems to have accepted it. So things are peaceful, are they? Well, for now. Between me and Ken, anyway. Tracy went right over the top, though. Anyway, thank you for bringing that recipe round, love. What recipe? At you, Tracy, love. Aye, how was Debbie? I called somewhere else apart from Debbie's. Oh? Me dad's. Anyway, I'd best be off. You were fine. Do you mean it? Yeah, if you must know, you were brilliant. Anyway, I'll just finish off that letter. <sighs> this isn't like Ken. I mean, I know it. I ask you, Liz, wouldn't you be suspicious? Yes, I would. I know you think I'm being stupid. I don't. I think most women would feel the same way. Can you afford to take the risk? Well, I'd have thought the risk was letting Derek get into Angela's clutches again and ruining our marriage. And you don't think your marriage would be at risk if he turned down this order? Well, we'll weather that storm. Ah, easy to say now, but what happens in six months' time when Derek's out of a job? Who gets the blame? You do. Well, what else can I do? You could try trusting him. Oh, like you trusted Alan Bradley. <laughs> oh, 
I'm sorry, Rita, I didn't mean that. I just thought you, of all people, would see it from my point of view. Go, go and make a drink. Hello, Rita. Hello. I've run out of envelopes. Over here. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You give somebody a bit of advice and because it doesn't suit, they put the boot in. Mavis. Oh, seems very unfair. And I was just getting over another shock as well. Oh? I had Reg Holdsworth in here at dinner time. And? He wants me to go for a drink with him. What do you reckon to that? Oh. And are you? What do you think? Well, I don't think it's advisable. You ask me, it's a bit of a cheek. How do you mean? Well, making a presumption that just because you danced with it somehow gives him the right to your favours. Oh, I don't think it was exactly a proposition in me. Well, if you want my advice, I'd stay well clear of him. The man with his reputation. Reputation? Ooh, didn't you know? He's a ladies' man. Which probably explains why his wife left him. Um, three hours. I think I'm going to have a sleep down here, Kev. Right. We'll go and get a quilt from upstairs. Mm. Yeah, okay. Look, don't answer. It might be the nurse, might it? She's still awake. Oh, she's looking at me. Get you, get you, get you, get you. <laughs> you must be trying to get her to sleep. So you, you don't know what tired is till you've had a baby. Well, that's one problem I never have. What? No, no, having a baby, me and Kim, we never get a minute together. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, here I am at the crossroads of my life and someone's nicked a flaming map. Probably Mrs. Taylor. Yeah, probably knows that, Kayla, lad. So we're going to get the quote from upstairs, so. Oh, look, she's going to sleep now. All right. Listen, I better go. All right, close the door quietly, Kayla, lad, please. Oh, Kayla. Yeah. Come again. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you. Oh, when the Gazette will have that and all. Right. And I'll make sure you get your daily papers, love. Oh, I hope you don't mind me saying, but well, we're ever so sorry about your news. Oh, you've heard? Well, yes, we, we haven't heard the details, of course, have we, Rita? And we don't want to, do we, Mavis? Well, no, of course not. Well, it's too late now, but I suppose it was inevitable. Why inevitable? Well, because I shut my eyes to what was going on. I was never really part of Mike's business life. I mean, I supported him, and I never complained when he said he was working late or staying away overnight, but I never really took an active interest in his work. So when he said he had to work late, I never knew whether he had to or not. Well, I'm very sorry the way it's turned yeah. out, though. And if he could turn the clock back? Well, she can't, can she, maybe? No, I know that, but if you could, would you still encourage them to spend time together? Well, I thought I was securing our own future. Biggest mistake I've ever made. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to lock up? No, no. Can't do anything till Alma gets back, can I? Besides, I'm on the night shift tonight. I'm not in that much of a hurry to get home. Night shift? I've got a baby. Oh, of course. Congratulations. Cheers. <laughs> it's your first, isn't it? Yeah, well, I hope so, yeah. Hard work. <laughs> I remember my two. Peter slept during the day and Susan slept during the night. Rather inconvenient. Yeah, well, my lad old's behaving himself in that department. Only trouble is, Nicky and Sarah Louise keep trying to wake him up to show him the prezzies, and Nicky can't understand why he don't want to go on his skateboards. You know what they're like, these kids. Oh, sorry, Martin. Oh, all right. No, you get off. I'll see to everything. Right. See ya. All right, bye, Martin. Give my regards to Gail. Yeah, will do. Cheers. Bye. See ya. Cheers. Hello, Ken. Where have you been hiding? Had a good Christmas and New Year. Fine. Oh, well, I'm glad somebody did. I'm sorry about your trouble. Oh, so am I still. I'll get over it. Takes time, I promise you. <laughs> well, you always said what a swine he was. All the same. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Worst time of the year and all. I know. Anyway, Happy New Year. Thanks, Alma. And to you.
So, have you seen Ken over the new year? Oh, you know what it's like. One mad rush. What was Paris like? Oh, wonderful. In fact, if I'd known he was going to be so calm and reasonable when I got back, I'd have enjoyed myself even more. Excuse me. Right. Yes, Percy? My, that's quick service. Uh, well, I'm not sure what I want just yet. How about half a bitter? Well, very kind of you, Mrs Gilroy. Very kind indeed. Go on, then. What's half a bitter? Well, it's more to me than it is to you. <laughs> Thank you. You're very good health. He's gone off, has this? Jack, I'll see to him. Clear off. I beg your Clear pardon. off. There's no wrong with it. Charming, isn't it? Another pipe, please, Jack, for the poor old panda. That's why I am, you know. I'm a giant panda. Have you been down the flying horse for you, come here? Sir? You know why there's no giant pandas born in captivity? 24-hour surveillance, video. They don't like it, you know. It puts them off. I'm a man, me, you know, Jack. You just said he was a panda. I mean, I want to go in the jungle, but everywhere I turn, I'm being watched by Mr. Taylor, Mrs. Taylor, Mr. Oldsworth, your Vera. Ah, well, our Vera's got a lot of relatives in the jungle. Hyenas, parrots, boar constrictors. Uh... Anyway, thanks, Jack. What for, sir? For listening to me, because you understand, don't you? I wouldn't bank on it, son. Well, this time I've been pushed too far. I'm going to tell the tailors exactly what they can do with them. Petty, bourgeois, narrow-minded, twisted values. Don't you agree, Jack? Yes, go on. You tell them, son. You go for it. <laughs> so, I'm going to take your advice. What advice, Curly? From this moment on, I am no longer engaged to cautious Kimberley, and I shall tell her so at the first available opportunity. But first, I'll buy you a pint. A tea dance? Don't knock it. Some of them old folk were down to, like, dervishes. I could hardly keep up with them. Give over. I just hope I'm in as good nick in 50 years' time. 50 years, you cheeky beggar. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, Rita, do you not fancy getting out of it? Maybe. Not just yet. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> What's this? From an admirer. A dancing grocer? Oh, yes. I told you I wasn't going to take no for an answer. Uh -huh. Cheers, Rita. Mm. Oh, he's got some neck. Well, you're a dark horse. Cheers, Reg. I think I shall be having an early night. <laughs> this time last year we were living over the old cabin, do you remember? <laughs> Who'd have thought we'd be eating our own parsley grown in our own garden? By us, without the aid of chemicals. Or that I'd have a job. What? Who'd have thought that a year later I'd have had a job? Surely you haven't forgotten the humiliation, the frustration, the despair, the uncertainty of where we were going to find the next crust. Oh, no, of course I haven't forgotten. Yet you're quite prepared to go through that all again? Well, we won't have to, Derek, because I've decided I'm going to be more supportive. Oh, well, I'm pleased to hear that. Yes, I'm going to have decided I'm going to take more of an interest in your work, so I'm going to ask Rita to have some time off. Time off? Yes, yeah, so that I can visit the factory. Well, I can show you around the factory at a weekend. You don't have to take time off. Oh, not your factory, Derek. Victor's. At Darlington? Yes. I've decided that I'll come with you and Angela, and we'll all have lunch together. Darlington plant sorts and processes the recyclable paper waste from a network of 15 different collection points throughout 515, the 515, Mavis. I don't see why this should interest you. Oh, honestly, you get more like Mike Baldwin every day. Throw a veil of secrecy over your work and, and fob the little woman off with a string of platitudes and excuses. Well, not anymore, Derek. Look, Milton. we must be off. If you still insist on coming... Well, there's just one thing I don't understand. I'll explain it in the car. Oh, yes, and show me up in front of your ex-wife. No, it won't take a minute, Derek. Go on, then. Well, Victor has a bailing machine, right? The, the one that we're taking Angela to see. Right. And you've got a bailing machine here at the Weatherfield. Plant. Correct. Well, what's the difference? There's no difference. They're both exactly the same. Taking Angela to see Victor's when she could stay here and have a look at yours. I mean, you'll be doing a bailing for her. It's Victor's idea, not mine. You better ask him. No, on second thoughts, don't. Oh, look, Mavis. It's not going to be much fun for you, especially when we start talking jargon. Oh, well, you promised you'd teach me the jargon. I will, but not just now. <sighs> look, you must understand that the contract's not signed and sealed yet. The negotiations are at a particularly delicate stage. 
And you think I'm going to say the wrong thing and lose you your job? No, I don't. Oh, I won't be any trouble. Honest, I won't. I promise. I know you won't. Well, come on, we must be off. Just so long as Angela realises she'll have to sit in the back. She doesn't actually know you're coming yet. Oh, oh she's still awake. I don't know how she does it. What time's the next feed? It's not for two hours. Oh, well, I can't put these on. They're sopping wet. Don't blame me, Kevin. I told you to put those on the radiator last night, didn't I, yeah. before you came well, to bed? Well, what am I going to put on now? Well, I'm late already. Don't go in, Matt. Can manage all on his own, yeah. can't But it? can we? That's the point, eh? Hundred and forty-two pounds, and you know what they do, don't you? Eh? If we can't blame me, pay it. Cut it off. You've not had any breakfast yet. Yes, I know. She can't live on love and affection alone, oh, can she? Eh? She needs food and warmth, and that costs money. She doesn't need food, not till she's been weaned. Yeah. Well, you need feeding, don't you, eh? Otherwise, you'd both be poorly. Kevin, don't go in, please. Have oh. a few days more. I'll pop back this afternoon. See how she's getting on, all right? She'll be doing fine. It's you and I that's done in. She could go all day without sleep, she could. Mm. Shame she can't tune car engines, innit, eh? <laughs> Give us both chance to get our heads down. See you later. Are you ready? We must be off. I'm just checking the cooker. We've not used the cooker. We had bran flakes. Oh, just a minute, Dad. I think I need to go to the toilet. Give me strength. You've just been. Oh, Derek. Well, I'll try to manage, but... How long will it take us to get there? This rate about two and a half weeks. I promised to pick her up ten minutes ago. Oh, Terry, don't rush me. I can't take any more pressure. You can't. That's a good one. Now, look, are you coming or are you not? If so, let's get going. You don't want me to go, do you? Are you doing this on purpose? What? Trying to delay me. Is it all part of some devious plan to undermine my composure? Well, it's not. Honest, it's not. I'm beginning to perspire, Mavis, and I haven't brought a clean shirt. Oh, shall I go and fetch you one? No, just get in the car. What time do you call this? Lucky I turned in at all. I'll turn up because I wanted a rest. You've just had two weeks holiday. That was an holiday. I'm glad I didn't have twins, I tell you. Can I borrow these? Yeah. You're going soft. It's only a fortnight old. Yeah, maybe. But she's already got us jumping through hoops. Why? One of them Damien kids, is it? Possessed. Oh, she's not. She's lovely. Just takes up every minute of the day. <laughs> and night. I thought Sally's mum was supposed to be helping you. Yeah, she was. Only Sally's sister's took bad, aren't she? So she can't come, so we're on our own. Oh, don't sound too disappointed. Oh, I am, I tell you. I'll never tell another mother-in-law gag in all my life. She was Frankenstein's monster. I'd smother her in kisses if she could get that baby asleep. So you come here for the rest now, have you? <laughs> That and the money? Yeah, well, you've had your rest, so now you can earn your money. You can start by putting a new clutch in that transit. And uh, I hope you're not expecting a dinner break. Davis, what's happened? Oh, I just froze. Did you change your mind? Oh, I just had a premonition it would only make matters worse. Oh, do you think I should have gone, Rita, do you? Oh, you can't keep asking me, love. You've got to make your own decisions yeah. now. Well, I have, haven't I? But do you think I did right? I promise I won't get the blame if it goes wrong. I promise. Well, I think you've done right. I mean, let Derek keep this appointment, whatever it is, and then if this big deal comes off, he'll be happy. And if it doesn't, well, at least you want me to blame, will you? No. Oh, thank you, Rita. That's what I wanted to hear. Right, now... Oh, didn't Mrs Williams ask us to put a copy of nursing on one side? She's away this week. Oh, I'll put it under counter. Now, how about putting kettle on? Mavis? Anybody there? It's a long car journey to Darlington. Oh, she's a very forceful woman, Rita. Do you, do you think she... What? Hijack him? Force him to take her to Cuba? Oh, just about me arriving at her house now, and she'll be ticking him off for being late, and I'll get the blame. Oh, I wish I hadn't said I'd go in the first place. Did I tell you to go? No. No, well, forget about them two. How about making us a cuppa? He said he'd phone the minute he got there. Shall I put kettle on? Ah, oh, Miss Taylor. Pickled beetroot, Mr. Holes, if it's just been delivered. Oh, really? Has Mr. Watts not had a word with you? I asked him to detail you to hardware. Mr. Watts hasn't spoken to me all morning. Oh, well, carry on, and when you've done, hardware. 
Well, if you ask me, you're off your trolley. You're lucky to have a chance of marrying a nice girl like Kim. Beggars can't be choosers, you know. I beg your pardon, Vera. Well, look at you. You're not exactly Nigel Avers, are you? Hey, you might not get another chance. It's not Kim that's the problem, it's her parents. I mean, she has to ask permission to go out for a drink. They tell her what time to come in. They tell her what to watch on the telly. They tell her what to eat. By the time Kimberly's married, she'll just be a clone of Mrs. Taylor. And me, I'll end up like him, pipe in mouth, out in the greenhouse, propagating me prized pelagoniums. But it needn't be like that. Marriage can be exciting, you know. I mean, look at me in our jar. Never a dull moment. I didn't have that in mind either. Oh, well, before you've started, you. Ah, Jack ain't got a greenhouse. He's got his pigeons and his drink. Cheers, Jim, lad, first today. Mm. Ah. I'll tell you what, Jackal. I wish I had your job. I mean, you get to spend all day in here, drink the cellar dry, read the racing page, and you get paid for it. Now, me, I come in here, I do exactly the same thing, and I don't get peanuts for it. <laughs> Hello, You've even got someone answer the phone for you now. Um, no problem at all, sir. Thank you. Wrong number. Did you not work today, Lem? Yes. Gonna ask you the same thing. I'll just fetch you some silence because we're working through. So what's your excuse? Week off. Not going away, you and Steph? Oh, don't ask daft questions. What were they working all these hours at Pum Delight? I'll tell you what, mate. At least you live in the same house. Me and Jenny not seen each other for days. Hello, Weatherfield Massage Parlour. What? No, it's a pub, actually, mate. The so bloke here wants to know if we sell bike spares. Yeah, yeah, Do you a nice line in hot pot? No, 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 no. Hello? Yes, Jim McDonald here. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't worry, it's just my other number. Aye. Yeah. Oh. Hey, hello. Oh, there you sound like it, though. It's a good job Alex out, you know. Shh. You're lowering the tone of the... You yeah. shouldn't be in here. It's got to be near Betty, it's his office. Hang on. Cheers, Betty. Oh, See you, does. No. See you. It's not right. Oh. Hello, Rita. Look, hey, what's this I hear about you and your partner going on come dancing? Hey, I'm in no mood for flippant remarks, Betty. Many a romance started on the dance floor, you know. Glittering lights, satin dresses and sparkling champagne and a 15-piece orchestra. If you must know, it were a cup of tea and a record player in the church hall. And as for romance, that's definitely out now. Give us a vodka and tonic for a clocky one. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Mavis, very nice. It's not your birthday, is uh, it? No, I, th I think it must be Derek trying to say it with flowers. <laughs> say what? Well, we had a little upset this morning. Oh, isn't that nice of him? They're lovely. Yeah, it's just that he's put to Ginger from Fred. I can't think why he'd put Ginger. I mean, I'd say I was more a, a lightish brunette, wouldn't you? I'll look inside. And don't you think they could be for Rita? Well, no, why would Derek be sending flowers to Rita? Because they're not from Derek, they're from Fred. But she doesn't know anybody called Fred. She'd have mentioned him. Fred Astaire, Mavis. It's a joke. Oh, I see. You mean... Yes, I do. Oh, well, I'd better not look in the envelope. No, you'd better not. If you don't get the wind up, you get colic, but I don't want to pass it too hard. Shh, Rosie, you're going to wake Derek again. <laughs> Nothing will wake him. Not even Sarah will lose his trumpet. Oh, we can't even turn the telly on. Oh, Gail, it's no good. Give her a year. Go and put the kettle on. Oh, way. You're a little terror, aren't you, eh? Oh, Just like Nicky was. Just like Nicky. Oh, worry awful and all. <laughs> Perhaps it's because it's my first. Mm. I don't think I'm cut out to be a mum, girl. <laughs> Rubbish, of course you are. When I had Jamie for the night, it all seemed so easy, but then when it's your own. Go put the kettle oh. on. All babies are different, you know. My three are nothing like each other. I take that one in there. <laughs> He's just like Martin. Don't wake me till my dinner's on the table. Yeah, but you're dead calm. I'm... I'm really ratty with Kevin. What do you think I'm doing wrong? Worrying too much. I can't help it. I keep thinking there's something wrong with her. Not about the baby. That's natural. You're worried you're not a good mum. Well, you are. 
Yeah, and I'm not so sure about it. <laughs> Don't you believe all them adverts? No such thing as a perfect man. If I'd lost as much sleep as you are, I'd be climbing the curtains. Everyone gets to the end of the tether. Honest, they do. Especially when they've not had enough sleep. So one day, Mickey's first words weren't obscene. <laughs> Some of the language he heard from me. Honestly. Honest. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Mavis. You go for your dinner, love. Oh, them are nice. Are they from Derek? No, they're not. He hasn't even phoned. Well, that means he's got held up. I expect he will. Well, I'll be at home for the next hour. Ginger? Who's Ginger? Oh, Rita, don't act dumb. It's you, of course. Ginger Rogers. Well, that's a new one, on. Oh, I see. And Fred Astaire would be... Precisely. Well, would you credit it? <sighs> Quite honestly, I'd be surprised at nothing. He's only asked me to another of them flaming tea dances. What am I going to tell him? Well, you just have to make your own mind up, won't you? Look, if Derek phones, tell him I'm having my dinner at home, which is more than he is. even wanted to speak to me. Mr. Holdsworth said he asked you to give me a message and at lunchtime you'd vanished. Well, there's something I have to discuss with you. Well, I hope it's about me being put on hardware. I hate it, Donnie. I want to go back on delicatessen. Listen, it's got nothing to do with hardware or the delicatessen. It's about, well, not us. Well? well? I can't discuss it here. Why not? We are engaged, you know. Gosh, next thing you'll be asking me to make an appointment. Look, I just want to fix a time when we can have a talk. See, I told you. I hope you're not going to be like this when we're married. Mr. Mr. Watts wanted in delicatessen. Delicatessen, no, Mr. Watts. See you later. All right. Mm. Mm. No, go, go on, Mr. Olsworth. I'm listening. Well, what I'm saying is, and no names, no pack jobs, you understand? Mm. Go on. I suppose somebody was to send you out of the blue, so to speak, on a whim, a bouquet of flowers. Oh, I love flowers. Somebody who you'd never seen in a romantic light before. Somebody mature but with a spring in the step and a sense of humour and somebody in whose eyes the light of love still twinkle. Come on. And with these flowers comes an invitation to a dance. How would your reaction be as a woman of the world, so to speak? Chewing out, Miss Fowler. Cheeky bumpkin. <laughs> Mind you how, Jack, you know, it'd kill you if it fell down. No, no, not you, you silly woman. I'm talking about Rita Fairclough. Go. Now, Mr. Wilton, you must have heard of him. He's the manager of the Weatherfield plant. Oh, look, will you put me through to Vic, to Mr. Pendlebury's secretary, please? Oh, hello. No, I was just wondering if Mr. Wilton had arrived, please. He has. Oh, good. Um, no. No, no, it's not important. I just thought, you know, with the roadworks on the A1, I, I wonder if he'd arrived in time for his meeting. Oh, no. No, no, there isn't a message. No, thank you. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Oh, thank goodness he has arrived. I, I, I thought he might have had an accident, but especially when the person I spoke to said she didn't know who I was talking about. Anyway, safe and well and still having lunch. Lunch? Mm. A bit late, isn't it? Quarter past four. Best of luck to him. Fit-looking woman, Reek Fairclough. Yeah, well, she can afford to be an now. I mean, when did you last pay for me the new hair, do I? Don't change the subject. I'm just giving Curly the benefit of my knowledge about this blessed state called marriage. Huh? Well, that's a laugh. I mean, what do you know about it? Number one, don't go for looks. Could be fatal. What are you about? How a good looking me, what curly, the right little cracker. That's exactly what I'm telling him. Yeah, well, which is more than can be said for you. Do you know a right slob him? You set me out in his working clothes, he did. Never got a wash in the note, so take the notice of him. She's a lovely girl, it's Ken. That's exactly what he's telling us if he'll just flame him. Listen, he isn't marrying Kimberly, he's marrying the lifestyle, isn't he? Uh, yeah, well... Well, but he, he, well, he doesn't want the tailors running his life for him, telling him what to do. He's an independent young man. He wants to make his own decisions, don't you, son? I never said he didn't, did I? You don't want old Mark Taylor telling him what pubs to go in and what horses to back. Oh, men. 
There's none of you got two thoughts to rub together. There are some decisions only a man can make. All right, Curly. So you think I ought to break it off, then? I flaming do. Break it off and chuck it away, lad. Aye. Aye. Right. Anyway, I thought she'd have had more sense than to get mixed up with a fellow like him, a jerk like him. Hey, oi, hey. He might look a bit of a jerk, but he's a sound lad, aren't you? I'm not on about Curly. I'm on about Mr. Oldsworth and Rita. Thanks, Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. At least he could have phoned. Well, do you know where he is? Ask me another. Haydock Park, Yates's Wine Lodge, Benny Dorm, God knows. Well, look, do you think we'd better get a taxi? I mean, I don't mind paying halves. I'll go and see if Don's free. He's had all day to himself. All I asked him to do was to make sure he brought the car home in time. Hang on a minute, I can hear the door. Oh, ah. Hiya. You'll never guess where I've been. You're right, I can't. We've got to be the other side of Manchester now. Pom Delight. Oh, she only loves me for me car keys. Our car keys. Well, make the most of them, cos you won't have them tomorrow. What do you mean? Got to go down to London. I thought you were off work tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so. So why have you got to go down to London? Cos that's where the boat show is. Boat show? Sorry. Oh, didn't I mention it? Life on the ocean wave. <laughs> Look, listen, listen, just listen, Gary, all right? Look, why don't you just go and buy yourself a copy of the Motorcycle News? Yeah. Well, look, you can get them down the cabin, all right, mate? Goodbye. Thanks for your custom. Oh, listen, you won't thank me, Rita, when you see him. I mean, come on. Do I look like a social worker, eh? Oh, another one, Kel. No, no, I better not, otherwise Mrs Taylor won't let me over the doorstep. All right. Good luck with Kimberly. Well, I don't think she knows what's coming. It could be tricky at work tomorrow. Stick to your guns. Oh, I will, I will. Good. Oh, someone cheered us up quick. Like a morgue in that calf. Give us a pint, please, Jack. What's up? It's Alma. She's walking around like she's in a trance. You know, it beats me how some men can do a thing like that. What, you mean Mike Baldwin? Yes, like a bolt out of the blue. No warning or not. I don't know. Some men just seem to enjoy being brutal, don't they? Uh, anyway, I'd better go see you, Jack. All right, see you, Curl. If you're not in bed past 11, I'll send an ambulance, son. What's up with him? Oh, I don't know. It's Ollie Bird, you know. What's up with Curl, eh? Hey. Wait, is this she? Right, what are you having? Uh, no, thanks. I'm just getting a carry out. Oh, come on, just have half. No, can I have a large bottle of brown and a bottle of orange juice, please? Right, well, I'll get them and a pint of pizza, please, Jack. Uh, you're going to get her a bit stronger than orange juice, aren't you, son? Oh, I ain't getting a baby tip, so no thanks. I've got enough problems without having an alcoholic baby on my hands. <laughs> Cheers, I'll uh, see you in the morning, all right? Jack or Alec wants a word. Something about the treatment in the morning. Right, love. Hiya, Kev. How's the baby? Can I buy you a drink, love? Uh, fine, and another time, eh? Cheers. <laughs> see you now. How are you, Kevin? How's family? Hey, you know, but it's been a grander now, you know. <laughs> Give all that. All right. Give us a gin and tonic, it, Bert. Oh! Rita, just the person I want to see. Can you give us a hand starting the car? It won't fire. Look, I promise Sally I'll get straight back. Look, I'm not asking as a favour. Is there anything wrong with it? I'll pay for it. All oh, right, where is it? Out here. Come on. I'll do you a favour, do you know that? Really? How come? Why? Well, mark your card for you, you know. Casanova, lover boy. <laughs> Told me about sending them flowers. Beg your pardon. Oh, it's all right. I'll keep my voice down. I don't expect you want folk to know, do you? Oh, just do I take it you're referring to Mr. Holsworth? Oh, aye, the groping gross. So that's what we call him at work, you know. You go out with him at your peril. I don't think it's any of your business. I bet you haven't heard about him and Rainy Dogs, have you, a long time? No, you won't, because I'm not going to stand here and listen to your evil gossip. Look, anybody that goes out with him wants the red testing. Vera, cut it out. Look, when I want your advice, I'll send you a postcard. Till again, do me a favour and keep your big blabbering mouth well and truly shut. Thank you, Vera. Which one of my friends would you like to get rid of next? Well, I want to try to give her some good advice. You mean, no point in wasting good drink, is there? Cheers. Ah, oh, that, before you say anything, I've brought you a oh, present. Oh, you. Derek, I've been so worried about... Oh! Oh, Derek, this is lovely. Natural wool, maybe. From Swaledale. Well, that's Harriet country, isn't it? Oh, I didn't know Darlington was in Swaledale. Well, almost. We came back across country. Oh, did you? Just to avoid the traffic jams, which reminds me I had a garbled message from Victor's secretary. Oh, well, you promised that you'd phone me and then you didn't. Correction, I promised to phone if I got the opportunity. Oh, you must have had half a minute. Well, let's look at my timetable. 9.15, depart Coronation Street. 9.41, 11 minutes late, arrive Angela's. 10.03, join motorway. Never Junction... mind, you're back now. How did it go? Like clockwork. Oh. And my copybook is unblotted. Did you see Victor? He was in attendance all the time. And he paid for the lunch. <laughs> and how about in the car? 
The conversation was kept strictly to estimated delivery dates, agreed profit margins, bulk purchase buying, and what's more, the contract is all but signed and sealed, so my job is safe, at least for the time being. Oh, well, I'm very pleased, of course I am. But does it mean you're going to have to see a lot more of her? I wouldn't think so. I'll be dealing with her works manager, so there's no need to be jealous. Oh, I'm not jealous. Um, by the way, Victor was asking after you. Mentioned you several times, as a matter of fact. Well, there's no need for you to be jealous, either. I know that. <laughs> So we're friends, are we? Well, more than that. Would you like an early night? Well, haven't you made any supper? Oh, you don't have to apologise, Bet. For I'm not having that woman dictating to me, telling me who I can talk to and who I can't. First thing in the morning, I'm going to face him with it. I mean, fancy telling Vera Duckworth that he sent me flowers and he'd ask me out, the fool. Well, you do what you think's right. But don't chuck the chance of the odd night out with him just because of what Vera Duckworth tells you. Oh, it's not to do with what Vera Duckworth said. I weren't going to go out with him anyway. Well, I know that and you know that. But is that how other folk will see it? It's only a tea dance. It'll hardly be the scandal of the century, now will it? Oh, see, practical boat owner. Is that the way you see yourself then, Desmond, eh? You don't own a boat, do you, Desmond? Hey, it was the practical bit that got me. Oh, they make a living with a spanner. They think no one else can do anything. No. I was only watching the other day, trying to put the roof rack on your car, and quite frankly, it was a bit like Monty Python. Now, I had to take the roof rack back in the end. It was wrong to start with. Ah, well, all I'm saying is, Desmond, a practically-minded man might just have spotted that before the elastoplast ran out. But you haven't got a boat, have you, Desmond? Some people would say the answer is no. The correct answer is not yet. It's the same as the Ferrari, the house in Portugal, and the mink for the missus. Oh, well, we can all dream. I'm past dreaming, Jim. I'm into serious drooling now. See ya. Do you know, that's something I, I've never really fancied myself. I mean, they blow over, don't they? They do. Cheerio now. Bye-bye. Do you know, I could have swore Victor just drove down the street, gone to your house. Yes, he probably has. Oh? Well, he'll have gone to pick Derrick up because they've got a big meeting down at Hawthorne's and it wasn't worth him going all the way out there and then all the way back. Oh, yes, the Angela business. Oh, I'd say business was the operative word, Rita, not Angela. Oh, you've changed your tune. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Anyway, now it's all been agreed and Angela drops out of the picture entirely and it's only Derek I'm thinking about now. Are we ready for the fray, Derek? Oh, there's plenty of time, I think. Well, you never know with the traffic. If it's bad... I know a way that beats most of it. Oh, yes, all those years of driving Angela to work, I suppose. No, many years of selling stationery, Victor. I'm impressed, Derek, a man who can do a deal with his ex-wife. Well, it gives you one advantage. You don't have to spend time explaining who you are. Ah. Oh, 40 minutes. We'll do it easily. How does Mavis, um... You know, with Angela being, uh... Mavis is, um... Not amused, actually. Not amused? Uh... Does that mean she's upset at all? No, 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 no. She finds it uh, ironic, I think you could say. She made a comment or two, that's all. I hope you've done all your homework, Derek, because I'm just riding shotgun this morning. I think it's mostly down to you. All you need is enough ink in your pen to cross a T and dot an I or two, Victor, that's all. And we've got a contract. You're proud of getting this business, aren't you, Derek? I think I've every right to be. You didn't think I could do it for a start. <laughs> you can't help yourself, can you? It's just human weakness, isn't it? I know what you mean. I mean, you're tempted. You know better even while you're doing it. Once a thing gets into your mind... <laughs> do you know better? There's times I've seen some mm. and I've told myself, mm. I don't want it, I don't need it, I've no use for it, I can't afford it. Mm. I've got on that bus and I've come home. Then I've got straight back on that bus, all the way back into town to buy it. You get this insane lust oh, for no. a thing sometimes, don't you? <laughs> oh, no. But a tablecloth, I mean, do I need another tablecloth? It's sales fever. And you'll find, as soon as the fever's broke, so are you. Oh, well, I must have turned the corner, cos I am. But it's a very, very peculiar weakness, isn't it? Yeah, I've got drawers full of pillowcases. Oh. <sighs> Is 
Here you go. Desi Barnes, he's doing a flit. Who's going where? Desi Barnes. What? He's putting a case in the back of the car. He's uh, just in front of the law. I bet his missus is under the patio. If you want to know where he's going, why don't you ask your Vera? No, he's not running away with our Vera, is he? No. She thinks she knows everybody's business. No, no, if he was, he'd have been out our house tapping me for uh, petrol money, wouldn't he? Mm. <laughs> Do us a favour, Beth. Look after these for our Steph till she comes in. Certainly, love. Only she went out without them and I won't be here when she gets back tonight. They'll be by the till. Where will you be, love? Climbing aboard the biggest yacht I can find. See ya. Told you, didn't I? I don't know how you can take him seriously. Maybe you're the only one that says I do take him seriously. You and Vera Duckworth, if that's the company you want to keep. Well... If you will go dancing with him. Maybe I go dancing with him because I like dancing. He happens to be a good dancer. I'm sure he is. A man like that. A man like what? Oh, you know perfectly well. I'm not sure I do. Maybe it's enlightening me. You shouldn't need enlightening, not at your age. And what age is that if it's not old enough to be let out dancing? You know why men like him go dancing. You know perfectly well. Maybe for the same reason I go dancing. They go dancing for one thing, opportunity. Oh, I see. A couple of fox trots and a many bodies, is that what you're saying? Thank you, Mary. I'm not going to apologise for what I'm saying. You can twist it any way you like. It's just an excuse to inveigle himself into the company of the opposite sex. And he's a married man. Mavis, I'm going to confess something to you now, and I've never told another person. I like going dancing because I like to be in the company of men from time to time. And I put it down to the fact that I seem to spend so much of my life in the company of nagging old women. I'm going shopping. You do your best to help people and you get no thanks, do you? It's none of your business, Vera. Hey, now don't you start. Well, it isn't. Well, I don't owe with that. I think if you see something, you don't think it's right, well, you've got a duty, a Christian duty. Oh, come on, Vera. Oh, you have. Christian duty? Well, yeah. It's just sticking your nose in. You don't know what's going on inside other people. You can't judge everybody else by yourself. People are all different, you know. Yeah, well, not so very. You'll find out when you get older. And I'll go mad if anybody says that to me again. I will, I'll go mad when you get older, when you get to my age. Oh, you're young yet. You've got all your life ahead of you. Well, I'll tell you something. I've got nothing ahead of me, only people sticking their noses in. Oh. Why is life so complicated? Well, I didn't, I didn't think it was. No, well, you didn't think it was, did you? Because you don't know anything, do you? No, hang on a minute. What, what, what are we on about? I'm on about Mr. Oldsworth and Rita Thingy. Who cares about them? Oh, it's too much kindling. Um, so what? what's, what's the matter with her? Well, I would hoping you'll be able to tell me that. Well, well, Mrs. Fertle. Hello there. Well, what a great surprise it is to find you uh, browsing amongst our humble wares. Well, you're as cheap as anybody. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope that's our humble wares you're uh, referring to. Now, these I can recommend. Mm -hmm. A bit out of the ordinary, like yourself, but very wholesome. Like myself. Yes. And, of course, it's a thing you can eat on its own, put it that way. Like myself again? I mean, I often eat on my own. Really? Mm. Well, I'm sure it must be a matter of choice. But try them anyway. Thank you. I don't know what's the matter. Everything's the matter. You're all confused, aren't you? <laughs> well, is it any wonder? You must know why, Kim. You know, you're a prisoner in that house. Hey, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Hey, don't go in there. You're having a little crisis. You know, it occurs to me that all these people that go jogging and all that, they'd do themselves a lot more good and a lot less harm if they went dancing. I dare say. 
Well, excuse me. <clears throat> Mrs. Duckworth, would you like to return this to its rightful place whilst you're on your way to wherever you're going? Hey, I don't believe it. It's everywhere. I mean, take Fred Astaire. Now, he must have been the fittest man on the planet, but there was nothing overdeveloped, nothing bulging about him. No, except his wallet and top of his head. <laughs> but you're right, he would fit. I mean, it's not the reason why he goes, but there's the pleasure of conversation. It's not the reason why he goes, but it's all part of it. Yeah, do you know, I never thought about that. You're right. Oh, yeah, so it is, yeah. It's long been my view that ballroom dancing is a very bastion of civilization. Well, I have a feeling civilization is doomed. There's not a lot of us about. Oh, well, then we must fight the good fight, Mrs. Berkeley. <laughs> and if you'd like to go down to the end, I'd be very conscious of the privilege. Well, uh, how very nice, Mr. Holdsworth. Uh, I don't see why not. <laughs> Do you know something? This is the last chance I'll have of uh, partnering Ginger Rogers because you are, you know, you're a dead ring. Well, uh, look, if you're passing, uh, we must arrange something, but I'll have to consult my diary, of course. It'll be a pleasure, Mrs. Ginger Rogers. The Chinese, you know, they used to bind baby girls' feet, so when they grew up, they couldn't run away. Well, they've not bound your feet, but they've certainly bound your mind. You're completely dependent on them, what they say and what they do. Not? Yes, you are. And if the truth be known, they're not doing it for you. They are? Oh, so you admit they're doing it then? No! Well, I could be charitable and say they're doing it to protect you. But from what? Life? You don't want to be protected from life. Me? You don't want to be protected from me. If you want to be protected from me, then why are we engaged? I'm going to have this out with them. I'm going to tell them what they're doing to you. And I'm going to tell them tonight. The day will come when the boot's on the other foot, you know, Derek. You think? I don't see it. Oh, yes, in a few years from now, it'll be Hawthorns jumping through hoops to secure their lines of supply. You mark my words. When the upturn comes, anyway, we've done very well to get ourselves in there. Come on, celebrate. You've done well. Yes, but they know they've got the whip hand, and they seem very keen to let us know they know. Well, that's how it is, Derek, but at least it keeps Weatherfield going, or it does as long as you keep them sweet. I, I was rather hoping you could find somebody else to do the... Uh... The day-to-day -day liaison, Victor. Well, there is nobody else, Derek. Well, I'm wearing enough hats as it is, and really, it needs somebody just to look after Hawthorns. Yes, I think your Angela, sorry, your ex-Angela, made it clear she'd expect somebody to be dancing attendance. There isn't anybody else, Derek. Well, you could take somebody on. <laughs> no, we need someone who knows what she wants before she knows, and then knows before she changes her mind. I mean, we need someone to get some grips in with her psychology, Derek. I mean, it's just like the snake and the mongoose. You're the specialist. Well, it's tantamount to a full-time job, Victor. Oh, don't worry. I'll find people to take you on other things. From now on, your job description runs to three words. Keep Angela happy. <laughs> Four o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, she'll settle down. Yeah. You know what I think we should do, you know? Huh? Keep her awake during the day. That way she might sleep at night. Dad, you've got to let them sleep when they want to sleep. Oh, yeah. You try telling that Mark when I'm nodding off at the garage. Oh. Don't she look gorgeous when she's fast asleep? Mm. What are we going to do for two? Oh, well, if there's anything in, eat it. I'm just going to shut my eyes here for a few minutes. Yeah. I think I'll join you. Oh. Oh. I think they're having a bit of a tough time of it. Because she's not sleeping through. Oh, she won't yet, Mavis. I mean, she's only days old. Oh, yes, but I've got the idea that she's hardly sleeping at all. You see, Derek always likes to have the window open at night, just the top. At this time of year, it's very hardy of him. Yeah, well, he was very bronchitic when he was a little boy, and they said it was the thing then, so he's always stuck to it, but we're having to close it now. Oh, not 
that I'd say anything. Well, I think it's very nice to hear a baby in the street again, but you look at Sally. You can't believe she's a mother. No, they make a lovely little family, don't they? They make you want to go around with a bowl of broth. <laughs> Mrs Sharples <laughs> would have done. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, ladies. Oh, hello. hello. Uh, you told me to call in. I did. Would you care to... Uh... Lead the way? You can think about closing now, Mavis. Well, I must say, I think she's very ill-advised. You can't tell her. It's no use. Look, uh, something I have to say to you. Has my name cropped up in conversation between you and Vera Duckworth? But I don't usually have uh, conversations with Mrs Duckworth. Well, I hope it wasn't over the loudspeaker system in the shop. Why, has she been speaking out of turn or something? Look, this is, this is very awkward for me to say. No, no, no. What has she been saying? Well, it's not so much what she said, it's the fact that she said it. What? Well, she seems to think there's something going on between you and me and she's said as much in the pub. Never. Right, she can pick her cards up on Friday. Oh, she'd have you for unfair dismissal like that. And I don't fancy my name being dragged through some tribunal. Unfair dismissal? <laughs> it's an act of charity employing the woman at all. She, she says already on a warning. Do you know, if I see her picking a nose just once more... Yeah, yeah, well, that's as may be. Look, just remember the woman's got an overactive imagination and a mouth to go with it. Oh, well, if she's heard one word from me that she could constitute into gossip, I mean, it just goes to show you how completely blameless our relationship is. And if it wasn't, she'd be the last person to hear about it. I mean, I do know the woman. Well, you've said something there. But anyway, the point has been taken, Mrs Fercliffe. Well, call me Rita and sit down. Well, mine's Reg. To me close friends and dancing partners. God. Do you know, it's only Vera Duckworth and possibly the Ayatollah who could make anything out of going dancing and taking tea of an afternoon. There is the fact that you're married. Yes. And there's also the fact that my wife has chosen to leave the matrimonial home. It's not very flattering to me. But if she puts any more miles between us, she'd be coming back the other way around. Yeah, well, if you're looking for a shoulder to cry on, just remember, it's not mine. Oh, no, I think that's perfectly understood. I hope so. That being the case, I don't see why we shouldn't carry on doing our bit for civilization. Why not? I need to get me hands out or I can't play the guitar. That might be an improvement. Mexicans play guitars, they wear punctuals. Study them. You're the designer. You look fantastic. Forget the guitar. I'm going to do a sun god in a plique with ropes and beads. Oh, great. It's all right for you. I'm the one that's got to get on the bus. Hiya. Hiya. What? Did you forget something or what? No, no, I just thought I'd come round. Oh, wasn't expecting you. I just thought I might go for a drink or something. Oh, well, I, I'm working tonight. Uh, you know, we've got a thing on, so... OK, I'll give you a lift there, then. Oh, no, no, it's all right. I'm going to go with the girls. I don't mind meeting the girls. Well, Steph's got this big thing against boyfriends. I mean, you remember all that business with Des, don't you? So, um, I think we'll be ready if I see you tomorrow, you know. Anyway, I've got to get ready now anyway, so... Yeah, yeah, OK. All right, then. Sure. Yeah. Sort of, uh, masterful type. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. Oh, no. Oh, Kevin. Shh, 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 shh. Hiya, fancy a drink? Come on, you damn prat. Well, I'll tell you what, man, I'm getting a great welcome everywhere tonight. Me, eh? No, go to Chippy and get some fish and chips. Shh, 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 shh. Tell very much, and I'll have a spritzer while I'm here. So, the boat show, is that where he's gone? It's just an excuse to get to London. He's gone with one of his mates. Didn't appeal to you, then? You must be joking. I didn't know boats was Desi's scene. Ah, uh, he likes putting it on. He goes into showrooms talking about buying Porsches and all sorts, you know, sometimes it's just embarrassing. Oh, I don't know. I could fancy a big yacht down the med like an ass's with Monte Carlo tied securely to the back end. So he knows all about sailing then, but does he? Not so that. Well, he was in the Sea Scouts. Really? Well, he's definitely known the lash of naval discipline. <laughs> you have, look, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a pound and three little ones. That's enough for a pint and a I, half and a packet of crisps. Chris, tell him. Fiesta time. <laughs> hey, aren't you supposed to be somewhere? What, me? Yeah, are you at one of your do's, one of your promotion thingies? Nothing on tonight. Oh. I thought that's where Jenny was. Whatever she is, she isn't at a promotion. Oh, my mistake. 
Now, you see, it's like Alec. He brings in these classic car magazines. Des and all. What is it they say? The difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. Oh, catch me playing with boats. There's got to be a better way of flashing your money about, you know? You don't like boats, do you, Jacko? Oh, the Isle of Man, it was enough for me, all that rolling about. No, I like to be somewhere where you put something down, it stays put. My memory serves me right. Two pints of bitter and a sausage roll certainly didn't stay put. No easy. I can't see the sense in it, see. Talk to Des. Did she tell Mark she had a promotion tonight, or didn't she? Well, I suppose she did. Well, what was she playing at? I thought you were supposed to have a great imagination. Well, why doesn't she just come out and tell him then? Life would be so much easier if people would just come out and say things. Have you uh, had enough, Norman? Yes, yes, very nice. Thank you very much. Um, where did you say Mr. Taylor had gone to? Oh, he's off on one of his peregrinations. <laughs> Peregrinated, eh? <laughs> Anywhere in particular? He's a law unto himself, Norman. Oh. See, I wanted to uh, have a chat with him. Oh, I think it's his brains trust night. Yes, Kimberly, I think perhaps it might be. You know, at gardening club? I'm sorry, there's uh, nothing for afters on this occasion, Norman. <laughs> well, if everyone's done... Uh, could I have another cup of tea, please? I might just be able to squeeze the pot, Norman. Um, haven't we got a tin of rice pudding or something in the larder? No, dear. If uh, you'll just open the door for me, I'll be in the back kitchen. So he does get let out sometimes, then? Not a question left. As a matter of fact, she had to make him go. Norman! Well, it's the noise this thing makes. It drills right into your brain. It's our clock, Norman. It's everybody's time. And what's that supposed to mean? Oh, I don't know. You know, you say very peculiar things you do sometimes. I'll be saying a few things to your mother tonight. Someone's got to. I've been thinking long and hard about this. Yes, well, so have I, especially with what you've been saying about my mum and dad. Look, it's not easy for me to say things like that, you know, but it's true. You think it's true. And you think it's true. No, I don't. When you're with your parents, you go back to being a little girl again. It's your mother. I regress when I'm with her. I have very grown up talks with my mother, actually. Well, it's more than your father does. And you're just being insulting now. No, I'm not. I quite like your father, but your mother treats him like a child. She she doesn't. Yes, she does. She lets him play in his greenhouse as long as he doesn't make a noise. And when she says there's no afters, there's no afters. Well, you're not going on just because you never got any afters, are you? Talk about who's being childish. I'm not talking about not getting afters. No, you're talking about not getting something else, and we all know what that is. I'm talking about what it means. I want to be something more than just a little boy who your mother allows you to play out with and bring home for tea. Don't I count for anything? What I think, my feelings too. Of course they do, that's what I'm saying, but she won't allow you to have any thoughts of your own, and if you did, they certainly wouldn't count. Well, that's where you're wrong, aren't you? Because I have got a mind of my own, I've made it up. Oh, come on, Kimberly. And I mean it, I'm sorry. <laughs> well. I think that's better for everyone, Norman. That's what you think, Mrs Taylor. That's your opinion, is it? Let's just leave it at that, shall we, Norman? I, uh, think you've forgotten something. No afters, eh? Well, you can keep the leftovers and all. Where'd you get to? Out. You mean after you'd finished your promotions job? 
Oh, well, one of you seems to have your wires crossed. Okay. Steph, you reckon she didn't have a job last night. Well, uh, she didn't, no. That'd be mad. Look, you go get it, will you? Tell them I won't be a second. And she... Huh? she fit, then? I shall ever be, considering all the hours she's putting in. Are you going to eat that sausage? Just worry it to death. You know what? I can't understand you. If I'd have pulled the stroke like you pull, I'd be over the flaming moon. Me? You're right. You know, I don't know you swung it, son. <laughs> but I'm proud of you. Dead crafty, that. Getting her to break off the engagement. That's not what I wanted. I love Kimberly. I wanted to marry her. Oh, look, you've hardly touched your breakfast. Best back bacon, that and all. Well, I said I didn't want any Vera. All I want to do is go to work. Of course you do. You want to get things straightened out between you and Kimberly. The only thing I want to straighten out is Kimberly's parents with a steam hammer. It will happen if I have a word. Vera, leave him alone. He's got enough of his plate without you putting your blaming on him. Look, you'll get over it. Might take him till dinner time, though. Come on, Vera. I'm coming. Do you know you're useless, you? Useless! You've never had an ounce of romance in you. You never used to say that when I was his age. And then I flaming married you. So you're definitely going with him? Why not? I mean, it's not a mortal sin to go dancing with a fella in the afternoon, is it? In spite of what some people think. I didn't really want a box up. I wanted a couple of those little packets for my handbag, you know. How about you, Betty? Do you not fancy it? What's that, love? It's tea dancing. I mean, you used to be a good oofer. Yeah, I did that. The Percy Sugden's formation dancing team cured me of all that, love, believe me. <laughs> well, good yeah. luck, anyway. One afternoon with Mr Holdsworth was more than enough for me. I do find him a bit overpowering. And that from somebody who shares a house with Percy so <laughs> Oh, point taken. See, See you. Bye-bye. Hang on, I'll bye -bye. walk across with you. Thanks, Thanks love. Bye-bye. Bye, 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 -bye. I do wish you wouldn't make pointed remarks when there are other people in the shop. Why not? I'm right, aren't I? You don't approve. Well, you know what I think of Mr Holdsworth. Mavis, we go dancing in the afternoon. We have the odd drink in the Rovers. It's hardly Casanova rides again, is it? It's a bit of fun. Nothing more. Believe me, it's a long time since I had that with a fella in my life. Well, she said anything to you? Not a word. She had a coat off and sat at that till quicker than a grease ferret. Uh, right, well, carry on, Mrs. Duffer. Miss Taylor, look, we've got to talk about last night. Mr. Watts, if you have anything to say to me about the way I do my job, I'm obliged to listen. But I don't have to discuss my personal life with you or with anyone else, if you'll excuse me. Listen, Kimberly. Mr. Watts, do I have to point out to you the seriousness of sexual harassment to which Mr. Holdsworth would take a very dim view of, I'm sure? Well, perhaps if I have a word. Leave it, Vera. Well, you're not getting very far, are you? I said leave it, Vera. Pardon, Mr. Watts? Nothing I can't handle. Carry on, Mrs. Duckworth. Now, uh, Mr. Watts, a word, Norman. Look, if it's about Miss Taylor. Well, Miss Taylor? Not unless she serves his cars in the spare time, no. Hey? You know that uh, you know that friend who fixed your car? Hmm? Well, put his number down there, will you? I need to get mine fixed PDQ before it goes really wrong. No problem. Good man. Tea up. What's that? I said tea up. What's that, Kev? We've only been in an hour. I'll tell you what, mate, keep this up. Your tea bill's gonna be bigger than your wages bill. Oh, all right, if you don't want it. No, you're right, yeah. Uh... So what time are we having dinner then? Half ten. Oh, all right. So tea breaks a little bit early. Some of us have been up since five o'clock, you know. Flaming kids. Ah, oh, well, look on the bright side, mate. I mean, they do say the first 20 years are the worst. Oh, thanks a lot, pal. Don't come running to me for sympathy when you're in the same boat. <laughs> Hello, Casey's garage. You're all done, is it? Who is it? Hello, Kevin Webster. Oh, aye. Uh, well, Norman gave me a number. I take it he did mention to you I was having a spot of bother with the car. Only I thought after the excellent job you did with his, you might have a look at mine. Aye, right, right, yeah. Well, after work, perhaps, about 6.30? Uh, yeah, right. Oh, well, it's, um, number seven, Hillside Roder. And if I'm not there by any chance, I shall leave the keys with my neighbours. Have you got that? Yep, yeah, I've got that. OK, I'll, uh, I'll see you there, then. All right, thanks. Oh, 
That voice sounded familiar. Who was it? Ah, he's uh, just a pal of mine, you know. Wants to flog his car, wants me to check it over, find out how much it's worth. What, anything in it for us? Hey? Well, we could do worse than have it serviced before he sells it. Good selling point, is that? <sighs> no chance. Pendle Repair Products, Derek Wilson speaking. Angela. No, 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 of course it's not a bad time. Never a bad time as far as Hawthorne's is concerned. Yes. Yes, Victor has explained the situation to me and uh, he can rest assured of my personal attention at all times. <laughs> Lunch. Me and you. Well, yes, of course, uh, if it's something that can't be discussed on the phone. Today? Oh, no, today's right out of the question, I'm afraid. Absolutely. Um, well, one day next week. Towards the end. Uh, yes. Look, why don't I give you a ring when I've sorted something out? and then I can give you my undivided attention. Right. Yes, I'll be in touch next week. Yes, I'm looking forward to it too. Bye, Angela. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? Yeah, well, she is now. She's just been fed. She's so alert. <laughs> I know, that's the problem. She's alert 24 hours a day, oh, that's the way it oh. feels. <laughs> Andy, do you want a cup of tea? No, I'm sorry, I'll have to go, I can't stop. I'm on my way to college. Oh. But you don't have to know what Jenny's playing at, do you? Jenny? Why? What's she been up to? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. She swears blind she had a promotions job last night. So? According to Steph, there was no job. Oh, I see. So you don't know anything? No, nothing. Well, if you find anything out, will you let us know? Might save me going in with both feet. Yeah, sure. Are you sure you don't want to stay for a nice cup of tea and we can have a little chat? Because, well, to be honest with you, I don't really get much sense out of Rosie from morning till bedtime. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'd love to stop, but I really have to go. I'll see you later, all right? All right. Bye, Angie. Thanks for coming. Ah, Mr Watts, I'm off now, so she's all yours. Make sure she uh, steers the course good and true. It won't go unnoticed by head office, I can assure you. Eh? Well, I'm handing over too. I'm not going back today, am I? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, good. Enjoy your afternoon. Well, I intend to, assuming, of course, you have not lost the keys. Keys? The car keys. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll let you have her back this afternoon. Uh, do you know when? Well, not too soon, I hope. <laughs> Fine, Norman. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Watts. Kimberly, this is ridiculous. The assistant manager stopping staff from going to lunch. Yes, I quite agree. Now, excuse me, please. Look, I don't know what they've said to you, Mum and Dad are yours, but look, it, it's your life. It's our lives. It's your future. I don't care what your Mum and Dad think about me, but we love each other. We want to spend our rest of our lives together. That's all that matters. Kimberly, you've got to listen to me. Well, you didn't give me much choice, did you? Well, now you can listen to me. Our engagement is finished. We're finished. And I don't care if I never set eyes on you again. And that's not me, Mum speaking, or me Dad. It's me. We're finished, Norman. Have you got that? Is it clear enough for you? Do you want it in writing? Kimberly, listen. And if you try to stop me once, I'm going to walk straight out of this door and try explaining that to Mr Holdsworth. Well, I really will have to be going, I'm afraid. And stop worrying. After what Rita's been through, I'm sure she's more than capable of handling the Mr Holdsworth of this world. It's just that she's so vulnerable. She's lonely, Mavis. Mr. Holdsworth's opened up a new window on life for her. I'm sure if you try to see it from her point of view. Anyway, I'll see you later and you can give me a blow-by-blow -blow account of the afternoon's event. That is if Mr. Holdsworth doesn't whisk her away and sell her into slavery. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, hello, Mavis. Hey. Mavis. Oh, there's nothing wrong, is there? Wrong? No, why should there be? Well, it's just that I didn't expect to see you. I thought you said you wouldn't get here. I know I did, but I decided it was time I got my priorities right. <laughs> priorities? Yes, priorities. I mean, after all Victor's put me through lately, well, both of us, I decided there are some things more important than work. 
like spending a lunch hour with my wife when I feel like it. Oh, thank you. Oh, I really appreciate that, Terry. But I mean, you don't have to prove anything to me. Not so far as Angela is concerned. That's all in the past. Dead and buried. <laughs> She's gonna let us have our dinner in peace. Shh, 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 not so loud. She don't want to go putting ideas in her head. She's bad enough without that. <laughs> Has Mark gone down to Grover's? Yeah. Don't you want to go with him? Well, with my wife waiting at home with open arms. <laughs> Besides, I fancy a half hour's kip. Oh, thanks a lot. Kev. What? Has, uh, has Mark said anything to you about Jenny? Jenny? Yeah, but she might be going a bit cool on him. Oh, she is. It's news to him. Why? Where'd you get that from? Just something that Angie was saying. Angie? Yeah. She said that Jenny reckoned that she was um, working last night. Yeah, that's what Mark reckons as well. Yeah, I know, and according to Stephanie, they didn't even have a job on last night. Well, it's not to do with us, that is it. We've got enough problems of our own. Well, you've not had a row with Mark, have you? No, not with him. But I will be doing with Curly Shops when I see him. You know what he's gone and done, don't you? He's only give Red Jawsworth my number at work. Does Mark know he's phoned you? If he does, do you think I'd be going back this afternoon? Well, that's £6.45 to the end of the week. How much? Well, there's your magazine and Nicky and Sarah Louise's comics. It all adds up. And don't I know it? Just hope this one stays this age forever. Oh, now, you don't mean that. <laughs> no, I don't suppose I do. <laughs> well, let's have a look at him, then. Oh, oh, isn't he bonny? <laughs> but he looks so content. Oh, well, he no choice. I laid down the ground rules before I brought him home. One squeak out of you, I said, and you go straight back. Oh, you are lucky, are you and Martin? Mm, so folk keep telling me. <laughs> Mostly those who don't have to change his nappy or get up at 5.30 to feed him. <laughs> what? Oh, bless you! <laughs> well, bless you. Better be making tracks. Feed Nicky and Sarah, and then Martin will be home. I tell you, it's like feeding time at the zoo at our place from morning till night. Oh, dear. Come on, monkey. I'll see you, mate. Yes, bye, Kim. Bye-bye. Hello, Mavis. Oh, Victor, what are you doing here? Well, I had to come, Mavis. It was the least I could do, considering the sacrifice you've made. Well, I'm not with you, Victor. I'm sorry, what, what sacrifice? Ever the dutiful wife, eh, Mavis? Derek is a very lucky man. How I envy him. What sacrifice, Victor? Well, over Derek's willingness to cope with Angela. I honestly thought that after her visit to Darlington that that would have been that, but it seems that Angela had other ideas. Angela? But to his credit, Derek took it all in his stride, in the full knowledge, of course, that he had such an understanding wife and that whatever he was called upon to do is strictly in the line of duty. I uh, haven't got a lot of time, I'm afraid, but um, if you were thinking of putting the kettle on, a cup of tea would go down a treat. Thank you. Do you know what I feel like a 20 year old? Well, you'd be hard put to find one in there. What? Oh, I see what you mean. No, no, all that passed a long time since. No, I prefer the more mature company these days. I mean, lively intelligence. Knows about life. That's the sort of company that puts the spring into my step these days, Rita. And with you, I think I've hit the jackpot on all counts. Do you know, I've never enjoyed myself for a long time. Thanks. Thanks for coming out with me this Oh, afternoon. you fool. No, I mean it. Every word. If my presence has given you one iota of the pleasure that you've given Shut to me... Sure, oh, you'll have folk wondering what we've been up to. Are you going to open this door? Are we going to stand here all day? Sorry. I'm sure we can find a more cosy spot than this to uh, discuss the pleasantries <laughs> of the afternoon. How about dinner, eh? Ah. Oh, no, it's my treat. I, uh, I know a fantastic little place. It's only about an hour's drive from here. I mean, we've got plenty of time, haven't we? Oh, sorry, that's the one thing I haven't got, time. I have to get back. Oh. So is this the end of our rainbow? The back of the church hall? <laughs> well, if you put it like that. Come on, come to dinner. No, not tonight. But if your knowledge of the gastronomic delights of Weatherfield will stretch to a tea shop where we can get a brew and a tea cake, you might be able to twist me arm. Say no more. <laughs> Thanks very much. So, um, how often will Derek have to see Angela to keep her warm, as you put it? 
Well, that's down to her, isn't it? I mean, that's why I expected you to phone me as soon as Derek told you. And who could have blamed you? I mean, no woman wants to know that her husband is meeting his ex-wife on a regular basis, whatever the circumstances. But you didn't. What? Well, phone me when Derek told you. Oh, no. I have to hand it to you, Mavis. If I was in your position, I certainly couldn't have taken it so calmly. But that's you all over, isn't it? Calm, stabilising, rational to a fault. I'll never be able to thank you enough, Mavis. And Derek, too, of course. He's a very lucky man, having you to come home to every night. Your face on the pillow next to his when he wakes in the morning. Look, Victor, I don't want to appear rude, but I really ought to be getting on. I mean, I've got half the papers to get out yet, and I don't know what time Rita's going to be back. Oh, of course. Well, um, thanks for the tea. And um, thanks once again for being so understanding. I'll be in touch, Mavis. Bye now. Taylor. Night. Norman, what are you doing? You stay out of this, Kimberly. He's showing himself up in his true colours, Kimberly. That's what he's doing. Oh, yes. Daddy and I knew all along he was wrong for you. Not only is he a sex maniac, he's a thug as well and a villain. Shut the door, Kimberly. Do you know what you're doing to your daughter, do you? She's not a little girl anymore, you know. She's a grown woman with a life of her own. A life that she wants to spend with me. Tell him, Kimberly, tell him. For God's sake, will you tell him? Heard from lover boy, have you? Oh, why? He rang me last night, didn't he? To tell me how much he missed me, declare his undying love for me. Only he didn't quite get round to it. Because by the time he'd finished going on about the sort of boat you could end up with if you happened to have half a million going begging, his money had run out. <laughs> Hi. Hiya. So, where are you working tonight, then? Working? Does it look as if I'm planning on working? So there's no job, then? Not tonight, there ain't, no. You might try telling Jenny sometime. Eh? Hey. Second night on the trot, she set off for a job that didn't exist. Hiya, Jacko. Oh, right, please, mate. Make Come a large one. Son, Liz and Liz let you off the lead, has she? Uh-huh. She'll be down later, though. She just doesn't want to stand here and pour all the money Alex just paid her back into his own till, you know? Alec will be disappointed. Don't you worry, sweetie. I'll do my best to keep him happy. Jim, have you ever thought for one minute that your Liz might like to go somewhere different on a night off? Nah, where? Well, I mean, I don't know, do I? But she must have some interest, you know, like the theatre, pictures, dancing. Oh, you mean like the widow Fairclough? Come on, love, can you see me tripping the late fantastic? <laughs> so what if she has seen another lad? She's a free agent. I never said she wasn't. But I think it's wrong to keep Mark dangling on a string if she is. I certainly hope you wouldn't do it. Oh, no chance. I never did fancy Mark. Mm. <laughs> Shut up, you two. Pound to a penny, I'm right. Pound, right. please, Jack. Right and? Mark? Well, you're cutting a bit fine, aren't you? Sorry? Jenny's been gone half an hour since. I think he means to work. Yeah, right. So are you off tonight, then? Jenny oh. won't tell me. Oh, Bolton Way, and you're right. I should be getting going. Mm. You're not going? I've no choice, have I? Not if I have to catch up with the other girls. See ya. Well, we certainly get the pound of flesh out of them, don't we? Seems like it, yeah. Same again, Ange. Hmm? Uh, go on. Not my show. Uh, whatever these are drinking, Jack, please. Oh! Yep. Cheers, Mark. Crafty right. mm. soul. At least you know where I am. <laughs> Oh, my leg, did you manage to get it fixed? No. We're going to have to run it in. Oh, what a garage job, you mean? So you're joking, aren't you? 60, 70 pounds worth of work there in Oldsworth Care. Now, I'll run it in over the weekend. Kevin, and what if Mark finds out? Well, he won't, will he? <sighs> you're not going to be working all weekend now, then, are you? Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, is it worth risking upsetting Mark and driving yourself into the ground like Look, this? Look, we've no choice, have we? These foreigners are the difference between us keeping our heads above water and going under. Now put the kettle on, eh? We'll forget all about work. We'll have a nice quiet night in, all right? All right. <sighs> hey, Kev, she's been a bit better today. Not nearly as fractious. I think she might be settling down a bit. I went off to the clinic and I got talking to this woman. She'd have exactly the same problem with her little boy, but now he's as good as gold, so that's good. Do you want me to run you a bath now or I'll make you a brew first? Kev. Kev? 
Oh, I'm home, maybe. Oh, sorry I'm late. Mm. I had three phone calls to deal with after the staff had gone, and the traffic was unbelievable. Oh, what's for tea? Mavis? Mavis? I heard what you said, Derek, and the answer is nothing. That's what I've prepared. Nothing. Because I didn't know whether or not you would be home for tea. I didn't know whether or not some customer might have phoned and wanted keeping warm. I'd have phoned you. You know I would. Oh, do I? And if it had been Angela? Angela? Well, yes, unless you're someone else who wants keeping warm that you've agreed to see whenever the fancy takes you. Now, wait a moment. I don't know who's been telling you all this. Well, it certainly wasn't you, was it, Derek? Victor. That's who it was. He phoned you. <sighs> Wrong. It wasn't Victor? Oh, he didn't phone me. He came into the shop this afternoon to He see... what? He came to thank me for being so understanding of the situation. He assumed that you told me, Derek, and I had to stand there and pretend that you had. Pretend I had this thoughtful, considerate husband. How do you think I felt, Derek? It wasn't me who agreed to see Angela. It was Victor on my behalf. <sighs> According to him, the survival of the company depended upon it. I had no choice. You must see that. What I see, Derek, is a man I thought I could trust. But a man who's thrown that trust right back in my face. I... <laughs> You've deceived me, Derek. And if you really want to know how I feel, well, just imagine how you would feel if it was Victor and me. He seems to have more respect for my feelings than you do. You're supposed to be my husband. Oh, Mavis! <laughs> Mavis! Last night, Mavis. I have to see her purely for business reasons. It's not some diabolical plot to get my hot little hands back on my ex-wife. Uh, morning. 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 Mavis. I'm not going to work till this is sorted out. I have a responsible taxing job. I need a clear head. What's all about that? Seems like Derek's been having it off with his ex-wife. Really? So she made your hands go all hot, did she, Angela? Maybe. And quite obviously the memory of it, or should I say the sensation, is still very vivid. It was a figure of speech. And how often did this happen? Your hands going hot in Angela's presence once a day, twice a day? Or were they permanently in a state of spontaneous combustion? Mavis! He's gone. He lied to me, Rita. Oh, dear. He said that once he'd got the business with Angela, that was the end of her. But it's not. No, he's going to go on keeping her warm. Volunteered, in fact, according to Victor. Well, at least it shouldn't be hard for him, keeping her warm, with his hands smouldering already. I might have known there was no point in talking to you about it. You can't afford to be serious, can you? You might have to start asking yourself some awkward questions about going dancing with a married man. I'm not going out with Red Joel's work. And anyway, he's separated. <laughs> Sorry about that, love. Me and me assistant like to limber up in the morning with a good old-fashioned spat. Well, it's true anyway. What, love? That Mr Holdsworth is separated. Kevin had to go round to his house. There was something wrong with his car and there was no sign of any Mrs Holdsworth. <laughs> Did you hear that? Ignore her. Now then, love, what can I get for you and gorgeous baby bunt in here? Oh. Well, so yeah. I'm sure I switched him off last week Friday. Obviously you didn't. That's funny, I've not done that before. Oh, yes. It was like a bomb, that little mini. Done a fantastic job as young Kevin. And very reasonable, too. Mm. Mind you. If you're doing it on the quiet, you can't charge the garage rates, can it? No. But his cops to back to life, there's no doubt about that. Thanks for recommending him to me, Mr. Watts. That's all right, Mr. Holmes. Yes. <laughs> Baked beans. Hey! Ah, Mrs. Duckworth. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmesworth, uh, I've nearly finished. Uh, I'll take and show what you know it is. Oh, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> I don't usually uh, discuss executive management with the staff, Mrs. Duckworth, but you are a sort of Mother Earth figure to Mr. Watts, are you not? Eh? Well, I mean, 
He's drifting round as if he's under the sentence of death. He's very listless. Sign up for me socks. Not exactly the turbocharged young executive head office that you're employing. Well, 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 what's his problem? Is it acne or something? Kim's his problem. She's chucked him. What, a lover's tiff? Is that all? More than a lover's tiff, Mr. Owlsworth. I think it's terminal. Rubbish. It's the exact nature of a lover's tiff, to be precise as that. A tiff. Oh, well, I'll have a word with Miss Taylor. Do a spot of counselling. Oh, do you think you should? <laughs> Mrs. Dole, what I don't know about affairs of the heart is not worth knowing. It comes from a vast experience of dalliance with the opposite sex. <laughs> All very proper, of course. Nothing salacious. Yes, I may be a supermarket manager, Mrs. Duckworth, but prick me, and do I not bleed? Well, you must tell to me. I'll soon get them back together. Hmm? Carry on. <coughs> Cheers. Want any grub? Um, no, thanks. We've got a very nice plate meat pie on today. Um, sorry, no. Just like your mum, mate. My mum's never made a plate meat pie. She hates cooking. I don't wish to know that. Don't you know that half the pubs in England are flogging home cooking these days? How are we supposed to do that if folk don't even know what home cooking is? Still, on second thoughts, might be an advantage. How's Jenny? Why? Just haven't seen you and her around together lately. Um, she's great. Glad to hear it. There you go. Thanks. You going to eat a sit back? Well, I was going to sit. Stop here, we'll dish a bit of dirt. All right. Moira Lomax got home from work last night to find her husband had flogged all the furniture. Moira Lomax? Why not? Yeah. She worked on button counter. Well, was she? Well, she did, yeah. That's not all. Mm -hmm. She's only discovered he'd run off with a 16-year-old girl. Get her off. It must be 50 if a day. Yeah. Your oh. turn. Oh, I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> what a dull life you must lead, <laughs> Rita. Well, Mavis is in the middle of another drama, which is working into a crisis. Do you know I could write a book? A couple of pages will do for now. Mm -hmm. Chapter one. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Ah, what about you, Mark? Oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me, love, should I have a pint, please, we got the time? I don't know. I'm a nuisance at home and I'm a nuisance in the pub. I can't win, can I? <laughs> Ah, well, so, how's the motor trade then, Mark, eh? Um, so-so. Ah, yeah. Well, uh, I did expect a bit of a dip, you know, after Christmas, but, uh, hasn't happened yet, touch wood. Yeah. There. Well, do you want pay? No, but how's it? She was forever in the jammy, don't you? Cheers, Jim. Hiya. I felt good here, something. It's always quietness. I've only just this minute put her down, so I'm afraid it's sardines on toast for dinner. Oh, my favourite. Hey, yeah, yeah. close thing this morning. What do you mean a close thing? Only went and left the lights on in the garage dinner. You know, when I was working on Oldsworth Car Sunday. Did Mark see her? Well, yeah, but he weren't sure it weren't his fault, <laughs> luckily. Poor Mark. Do you know, I feel dead sorry for him. Jenny's two-timing him and you're doing foreigners behind his back. Look. That garage, and especially Mark, owes me a few measly foreigners. I carried that guy when he first started, didn't I, eh? You know, when he was going off with all those different birds. Kevin, I hate that word. It's horrible. Well, it's what they were. Oh, now look what you've done. You've woken her up. I brought the car home with you. Uh, yeah. Right, put her in the cot and drive her around for a bit until she's nodded off, or else we're never going to get sardines on toast for tea, or I'm not. Yes, I know the German and efficient Gerald, but I am the same breed as Hornblower and Nelson. And I'm telling you, nobody's going to blow better by out of the water. Not while I'm on the bridge, they're not. Oh, yes. And you can send a little cable to head office to that effect. Goodbye, Gerald. They might be frying a competition in Heckman Wack, but I thrive on it Oh, yes. Yes? You said you wanted to see me. Did I? Uh, you'll not be mixing them cell by dates up by any chance, have you? I'm on checkout today. Oh, yes, of course you are. Oh. Mr. Watts. What about Mr. Watts? Yeah, well, exactly, Miss Taylor. What about Mr. Watts? What have you been doing to him with your mysterious ways and feminine charms? Eh? Is it, is it me a shadow of his former self? I don't think that's got anything to do with you, Mr. Holdsworth. Oh, do you? Nothing to do with me? When my number two has got about as much vim and pep as a dead donkey. Well, actually, there is something I'd like to ask you. So what is the problem, Miss Taylor? 
not being attentive enough, has he, oh, Mr. Uh, Watts? Been shortchanging you on the old compliments and chockies. Hmm? Been watching the match Well, he should have been more romantically engaged, and you have retaliated by withdrawing your favours. Eh? That's it, isn't it? You see, you're dealing with a man of the world here, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Oldsworth? You see, it's a sad fact, but modern young men today, they don't have the, uh, well, how shall I put it? The je ne sais quoi of my generation. No, how well, could they when their hero's been Sid Vicious? Well, mine was George Sanders. I want to transfer, Mr. Holdsworth. I want to leave. Yes, well, don't worry about it. I'll, uh, I'll talk to him, Mr. Watts. Uh, point out to him there's more to courting a young lady. <laughs> I think you'll find you'll soon be back in Moon Dune country. Was there something else? I want to transfer it, and I don't care if I never see Mr. Watts again. <laughs> <sighs> You do realise I had a gourmet lunch lined up for today, Derek. Red and white, no less. Instead, I find myself eating a salad sandwich on the A59. Oh, it's very good of you to see me at such short notice, Victor. So, what's the trouble? Well, actually, you are. Me? Yes. You told Mavis that I had to keep in close touch with Angela. Yes. Well, you might have known she wouldn't be exactly leaping for joy about it. I was trying to do you a favour. You were? Of course I knew Mavis was likely to be upset being the hot-blooded, passionate, tempestuous creature. Yes, all right. So I actually told Mavis that it was my idea, my instruction, in fact, uh, for business reasons. Well, she said that you said I'd volunteered. She did. She did. Oh, dear. Then I've failed, haven't I? Failed? Well, obviously, despite my attempts to head her off, Mavis is jealous. Blindingly so. I don't know what else I can do, Derek. Well, you butter up, Angela. But it's you she wants opening the car door for her, taking her to lunch, telling her how wonderful she looks. Angela has never looked wonderful in her life. But you have to tell her that she does, Derek, or we can lose the order. And the next thing to go missing could be your job. Devil in the deep blue sea, aren't I? I'm afraid you are, Dad. Between ex-wife and current wife. Oh, another day, another dollar. Yep. I wonder if our Rosie's still asleep. Be a miracle if she is. <laughs> yeah. You going out tonight or what? I don't know. Depends what's on telly, doesn't it? Is it? All right. Oh, uh, you come for another quick cheapo service at Outlook? We're just going home. Anyway. I thought boats was your fix at the moment. Oh, you should have seen the boat show, mate. Great. Everywhere you look, beautiful, sleek, gleaming crap. Yeah, what are you talking about, eh? The boats are the women what's draped across. The boats. Yeah, the boats. I can't imagine your Steph as a sailor. Oh, neither can I. She's more your butterfly than sea dog. And selling perfume and poncing about at these demos isn't exactly ideal nautical training. Is Steph and Jenny still being in? Yeah, doing one tonight at the Adelphi Hotel. Talking about quick, cheap services. Can you do me tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. Oh, brilliant. I'll leave it outside in the morning. Cheers. Might give you a sail on me boat when I get it. <laughs> see you, Matt. <laughs> I'll see you now, anyway. You ever been to see Jenny do one of these promos? Uh, only the one who did it at the Rovers that time. Yeah, sounds a lot more fun than staying in watching telly. <laughs> Mind you, anything beats staying in watching telly, doesn't it? Trying to tell me something, Kev? Don't dream of it, mate. See you, anyway. What? What are you doing, sitting here in the dark? Well, I'm not sitting in the dark, am I, now? You've put the lights on. Well, would you prefer to continue sitting in the dark? Yes! Sit in the dark, then. We're closed! Excuse me, miss. You wouldn't know if anybody's lost a glass slipper, would you? It'll be Mavis. You've been throwing them at Derek. Come in. Cool. What a day I've had. What a dark, depressing, unpainted day. Well, mine hasn't exactly been all bright and beautiful, either. Don't tell me. Other people. Well, yeah. That's what takes up most of my time, you know. Sorting out other people's problems. It's what I've been doing all day. 
Do you know the most beautiful sight in the world is, Rita? Raspberry bun. No. no. Better buys first thing in the morning, when everything's clean and shiny, and the shelves are as neat as garden. And then I have to let in the customers. Oh, I know what you mean. Well, I suppose after a day like that, you'd like a drink. Definitely. The cup that cheers but does not inebriate. Oh, I could do with something stronger than that myself. Yes. Made you a cup of tea. Don't want a cup of tea. You can't sit here in the dark all night. I can. Mavis. I spoke to Victor this morning. I saw him, in fact. And what did you volunteer to do for Angela this time? Check under her bed for burglars every night? Mavis, please. I did not volunteer to dance attendance on Angela. Well, I should hope not. You're not a very good dancer. Oh, perhaps she is. Is Angela a good dancer, Derek? You really are behaving like a silly child. Why should Victor say you volunteered if you didn't? Exactly, oh, Mavis. Exactly, Mavis. That's a favourite expression of yours, isn't it? Exactly, Mavis. Well, what's exactly about it? Victor is up to his old tricks again. That's what's exactly about it. What old tricks? He's trying to drive a wedge between us, <gasps> undermine our marriage. Well, that's rubbish. He's married himself now. But his all-consuming passion for you hasn't abated. I saw it in his eyes this very morning. Every mention of your name, and it, it was like blowing on hot embers. I see. See what? Oh, very clever, Derek, but typically devious. What are you talking about? All oh, this is a smokescreen. You're blaming Victor to cover up your own smouldering infatuation for that woman, which you've already admitted to. I have not. You know, I've been thinking about this all day, Derek. In fact, I've been thinking about nothing else. And when you examine the facts, it, there's a certain logic to your behaviour. First of all, you caught me, and then you reject me. You rejected me as well. And then you caught Angela. It was the other way round. She hunted me down like but a jackrabbit. Then she rejects you. But thank God. Ah, but that's the nub of it. Because she rejects you, she's still a desirable, unattainable woman, and I'm just the little wife in slippers who washes your handkerchiefs yes, for but you. You wash them beautifully, ma Oh, get out, Derek. Leave me alone. Yes. You want the light left on? No. Rosette. Cheers. Do you know what I'd like to do tomorrow, Rita? No, what? Go away, well, and play truant. Wouldn't better buys just crumble to dust if you went missing? Probably, but the batteries need recharging, and were better to recharge them than a race course. Hey, I didn't know you were into racing. Oh, yes, yes. The royal family and I have long shared an interest in racing. Oh. Would you like to come with me, Rita? Oh, sorry, I can't have too much to do tomorrow. Huh? Oh, well, some other time, then. Yeah, I'd love to. Do you know, I've never actually been on a race course. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Very colourful scene as a race course, you know. Some very colourful characters. Actually, I find that the main attraction, uh, studying them, you know. Really? Mm. I think we'd cut quite a dash, you and me, in the paddock. Lord Holsworth and the Duchess, casting expert eyes over their filly. Oh, so that's why you go, is it? Yes, and I can guarantee you'd meet some very interesting people. It's very well known, you know, in turfing circles, is Reg Holsworth, as the Arca can will tell you. Oh, I look forward to it, then. Mm. Do you know, you can tell a lady lives here. Well, I hope so. Mm, it's got the woman's touch. It's long been missing from my house, I can tell you. Not that there was all that much ever. It's got some very masculine tendencies, my wife, you know. She'd tell you herself she'd have loved to play rugby league. Oh, where is she? New Zealand. New Zealand? Mm, living with her sister. That's a long way. I thought that when she went. Do you know, Jack, you were right all along. Do you know that? Right all along. Usually I'm so. No, you were. I should have cut and run when you told me. Get thee behind me, Kimberly. That's what I should have said. Get thee behind me. You and your ridiculous parent. You should I, huh? Mm. But I didn't. And what's the result? A veil of tears, Jack. A veil of tears. It would ever thus if we got serious about women. I mean, serious is their game, not ours. 
powers is to enjoy a joke, a pint, and a game of snooker. Oh, Jack. What words of wisdom. Where's the toilet? Hey? The toilet, where is it? You know where it is, it's over there. Thank you. You know, Jack, the toilet is the most important room in a pub, and quite often the hardest to find, which is a comment on life, if you think about it. I shall be back. Hey, Alma, you know who you don't remind me of? My mother. Thank you. <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever seen him that drunk before. Disappointed in love. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Oh, don't worry, you're bound to put your foot in it from time to time. It's such a big clump. There's another member of it over there. Oh, yeah. What's this? Long faces in my pub. <laughs> have the same effect on ale as vinegar. Turns it sour. Now, Bet is not a member, are you, Bet? <laughs> you are. The Disappointed in Love Club. I'm sorry, I can't reveal our bedroom secrets. <laughs> we are actually under contract to the Weatherfield Gazette. You were revealing everybody's secrets this dinner time. Didn't we have fun? <laughs> uh, can I have the other half, please? I'll serve you, Kelsey. If it helps, I think Mike treated you very shabbily. He did, and it doesn't. No. Sorry. Do you know, I can't stop thinking about him. I keep dreaming about him as well. Night and day, you are the one, as the song says. Well, they do say one cure is to find somebody else. Well, I'll give you another quotation. It's from a poem this time. <clears throat> I'm into poetry at the moment, so uh, with apologies to the poet. Between his lips and mine crept thy shadow, Mike Baldwin. That'd be beautiful if it weren't so sad. Yeah. Has Curly not been in? Is he might be coming in? Curly. Oh, hang on a minute. All right. Fine. That's the spirit. Apart from the weather. Well, there's nothing we can do about that, love. Move to a better climate. Now you're talking. Florida till June, just about oh, soon. What? Steady the... now. There you go. Oh. Come on, lad. Curly, what's the matter with him? He's pie eyed. That's what's the matter with him. This is what women do to you, you know. I should have sought your advice, Jack. Oh, come take on. Take him son. down at some edge. Jack, or take him home. Right. Come on, Curly. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. oh. look at him. There you go. Mind your head. Mind your head. You might have said you were going to turn up. I thought I did. Anyway, I thought it was your squash night tonight. That's where I've just come from. Ah, it's a real keep fit night, you know. You're not sick. <laughs> anyway, I think you've timed it just about right because uh, I've just finished all this day. No! Oh, go on, you won't miss me. I'm sure Robert doesn't want to hang around this place, do you? We've got our own little pub to go to. Anyway, serving beer is all the same to me. Oh, let me down, I would. <laughs> Friend? Um, actually, she's trying to make him an ex-friend, but he's proven a bit persistent. But I'm sure Jenny can handle it. Uh, what meeting? Well, it, it's among the girls later. You know, we, we're going to ask for more money, so we just want to get together and, well, get our act together. We can't have a drink, woman. Well, just one, but Mark, I'm supposed to be working. Um, half a bit of please, and, uh... Uh, just on the road. So, then, who's the deal with Steffi? Uh, Robert. His name's Robert. She going round with him? Uh, she is, isn't she, eh? Yeah. Answer that, eh? Does his messing about with bolts. Steph's got a bit on the side. going to turn up. But, uh, thanks for taking care of Robert. You're a pal. I only did it to stop World War Three breaking out at my promotion. Yeah, well, thanks anyway. Jen, you can't run two fellas. Not indefinitely without them finding out. I mean, what if Robert had thrown a wobbler last night? Why? What did he say? Well, he thought it was a bit of a laugh, as a matter of fact. Yes, you did seem to be getting on quite well. So Mark didn't suss it at all? Uh, no. <laughs> In fact, he, um, you thought Robert was your fella. <laughs> well, I hope you put the record straight. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Well, stupid cow. You let him think he was my fella. Well, he called me on the hob, didn't I? I didn't know what to say. I'll tell you what to say. You're telling the truth before someone goes blabbing to Des. 
Make a pig's ear of your own life if you like, but don't drag me into it. Come on. A fella? Are you sure? Yep, and they told me. I'm gonna soil with me all nice. Won't let too many steps use and death finds out. Yeah. Well, let's hope he doesn't. Well, somebody should tell him. See what? Well, wouldn't you want to know if Sally were cheating on you? Yeah. <laughs> Just so I can announce a medical. <laughs> Sally's as knackered as I am. That baby never sleeps. I'll tell you, I'd want to know if Jenny were cheating on me so I could break a flaming neck. See what I mean? Now, do you want to be responsible for Des having a go to Steph, eh? You don't know the ins and outs of it, Mark. If I was you, I'd stick well out of it. Otherwise, you're a bigger mug than I first took you for. Look, I've made my mind up. But you can change your mind, can't you? It's a woman's prerogative to change your mind. You don't change yours much. You're the most stubborn woman I know. Yes, cos I've learnt the hard way, I'm By making too many mistakes. That's why I can give you the benefit of my experience. So you don't end up out there stacking shows like me at my age. And you wouldn't have to do if you married somebody like Curly. Why not? Oh, because he's got prospects, hasn't he? He's got a good job, he works hard, he's reliable. He'll go far, him, you know, and you could go with him. I'm shy about sense to meet a nice lad like him when I were your age. Be at home now, a nice bungalow with my feet up, having coffee and biscuits on a silver tray, watching a game show on telly. But I had to go for glamour, didn't I? Glamour, Jack? Oh, aye, you should have seen him when he were young. I like Clark Gable. You are. Dashing and handsome, life and soul at party. What happened? Well, it were all sure, wasn't it? All that glitters ain't gold. The right who said that, I'll tell you. But that girl is, he's 24 carat. <sighs> Kimberly, what's all this about transfer? I don't want to discuss it. Kimberly, you've got to Just leave me alone. Right, Mr. Watts, my room now. She can't be serious about this transfer. On the contrary, she was very serious when I saw her. She's a very distressed young woman, and I'm not having you harassing my staff and hanging about them toilets. Well, couldn't you refuse? Just give me time, you know, to, to dissuade her. I've given her my word, Norman. And the whole sus word is his bond. Well, couldn't you just sit on it a bit? No, because this might be the best thing for both of you. It'll give you time to think. Think? I've been up all night thinking. There's got to be an explanation. I mean, she's never this decisive. No, man. Let her go. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I mean, look at my trousers. They're falling off me. I love her. Yes, but Norman, Norman, lad. Is that really love? Or might it, might it not just be a deeply wounded ego, eh? Now, take a tip from an old hand. Get yourself out a bit. Get to nightclubs. Get disco in. Hey, spread your net a bit and play the field. Now, come on. Get back to work. We've got a store to run here, you know. Well, couldn't we lose it in internal post? Lose what? The transfer. No, Norman, get back to work. Never mix business with pleasure. Pleasure? <laughs> pleasure? Hello, Rita. And how are you this bright morning? Not as chirpy as you, bit sound of it. Up to what do I owe the pleasure? There we go, that'll do me. Oh, you're very partial to this one, aren't you? Oh, yes, I like a bit of scandal to go with my elevenses. Oh. Well, I'm just the opposite. I prefer something more uplifting. Sure, there was a lovely article about the Queen Mother in last week's Lady. A bit tame for me. Perhaps that's because I lead such a humdrum life. I need a regular fix of willful women and wicked men. Oh. Get enough of that in real life, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh, well, all right then. Seven o'clock. <laughs> okay. Bye. How's Bet? Better than Mavis, apparently. Oh, not again. Do you know, I think Jackie Collins should come here to research your books. What am I missing? Scandal under my very nose? No, Mavis objects to my friendship with Red Holesworth. I don't object. I just wonder if you know what you're getting yourself into. That's... I'm not getting into anything, Mavis. Now, can we drop it, please? <sighs> That's all I'm getting. I'm going. Get a much better class of row at home. Mm. Sorry for snapping, love. 
I'm just concerned for your welfare, Rita. Oh, I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. <sighs> but he's a married man. Separated. And anyway, he knows exactly where he stands with me. I've told him. I make the rules. Mm, well, his wife may not see it that way. Well, she'd need a telescope to see anything. She's in New Zealand. <sighs> I wish Angela was. <laughs> Come on, just for one pint. No chance I'm having nothing to do with it. I'm not going to say anything. I know you, you're all gob. You might not even be in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Hello. Sorry. Have a bacon butter and a cup of tea, Martin, please. Take out when you're ready. There you go. Shouldn't you be at home, young man? Yeah, right? uh, Sally's gone to the clinic, you know what I mean? Oh, eh? oh that's no problem with Brian, that's oh, Nothing a gag wouldn't fix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I think she's fine. She's got through the check-up, that's all. What, champagne to fall? Only if it's moving 67. Got your first school dinners? No, no, actually, they're not too bad, but I sometimes wonder if it's worth suffering 150 screaming kids just to get a cheap meal. Oh, Joe, sometimes I'd be glad if the company got fed up with eating a meal. Don't tell me. Microwave. Oh. Yes, dinner for one on silver tray, except his tin foil. <laughs> Heavily into convenience food myself. Mm. Never thought I'd see the day. Well, have you ever thought about cookery classes? Oh, I can cook. Uh, I learned with the Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts? <laughs> <laughs> Scoff ye not. They were actually very adventurous. Oh, I did. I can just see with your little boggle and your shorts. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, kid. Cheers, man. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, soon. See you, fella. Yeah. Sit down, now. Well, it's the meeting of the walking wounded, isn't it? Yes, but it would be rather nice if they could get together. Oh, no, no, what, the rebound? It never works, Phyllis. It never works. It never works. Oh. <laughs> Black man's donkey. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Mark. Another one in there? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. So, how goes it with the two-stroke tycoon there? It's about as quiet as it is in here, Jack. That's cos Alex away, licking his wounds at the dog and whistle. Hey? Words of past. Oh, I see. Thought you'd appreciate a bit of quiet, you know, with bike engines going all day. And babies crying all night. Next door. Cool, mm. I don't but talk, and you can hear right through the walls. She never sleeps up once she's hyperactive. That were me, you know, when I was a kid, but they didn't have a word for it then. Hyperactive, that were me, no. So what happened to you then, Jacko? He had a charisma bypass. <laughs> there you go. Cheers. So, what was it like at this promo last night? I reckon half these beds just turn up to chat up the fellas. It's ideal, isn't it? Bit of glamour, attention, in the spotlight. There's a bit of that going on, yeah? Oh, tell me more. Grizzly details, please. What's up? Hot pot off. I suppose you're gonna find out sooner or later. Find out what? Well, there's a fella knocking around with your missus all last night. Knocking around, what do you mean? I was just with him all last night, laughing and joking. Thought you ought to know. Know what exactly? Well, I can't put it any plainer, can I? I think your missus has got a fella. You lying sod! It's true! It like hell it is! Look, Jez, I saw it with my own eyes! You and Jenny said it's Steph's fella. Oh, you've both been spreading it around oh, now, have you? Look. Yeah, well, just put in your mouth, sonny, right? I'm only trying to tell you what I saw. So what's going on? Jacko! Oh, it's him, innit? I'm only trying to put him straight, but he won't even listen. It's not my problem if his missus has got a fella. I told you, come on, didn't I? Come, come on, on, I settled down to parry you. You'll have me to answer to. Look, if you don't believe me, go and ask your Steph, eh? Come Look, I'm only trying to help. Well, don't join the Samaritans, Sonny. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want something to eat, Mavis? Oh, no, really, thank you. I, I couldn't. But that's all right. No, you suit yourself. Putting a brave face on it, isn't she? Mm. I wonder though what's going on inside. Of course, Derek thinks it's Victor, but I'm convinced it's all her doing. What is it? Well, having Derek run around after her like a little skivvy. I mean, lunches here, meetings there. I'm sure it's not all really necessary. But what would be her motive? Oh, well, it's quite obvious to ruin our marriage. She wants him back. That's the top and bottom of it. You talk to Derek about oh, it. Constantly. What did she say? Well, will you tell me truthfully, Emily, like a dear and trusted friend, do you think it's possible that my Derek could be deceiving me? Well, anything's possible, Mavis. I mean, we never completely know anyone, do we? But no, 
I wouldn't believe it for a single minute. Oh, really? Do you really think so? Oh, I know so. Derek isn't like that. He's a fine and decent man. Well, I've always thought so, till just recently. Oh, Derek works in a, a tough and ruthless world. Very difficult for the likes of us to comprehend all the ramifications and wheels and deals. I'm certain that his only motive for seeing Angela is to help his business succeed and, and build a secure and happy future for both of you. And Harry. I'm not saying that Angela doesn't have ulterior motives, but I'm sure that Derek keeps everything firmly on a business footing. Despite all the meetings and such, Derek is not Mike Baldwin. Did you want something? Well, yes. I, I think I could try a, a boiled egg, if it's no trouble. A boiled egg? A, and a plate of bread and butter, please. For me lunch. Oh, yeah, with your fella. What <laughs> fella? From last night. Mark told me. Aww. In full ear shot of the Rovers, and it wasn't funny. Calm down, Des. Well, outside, unless you want the whole store to hear. Come here. Jenny, you've got some explaining to do. Mark's been talking. Oh. He's not Steph's bloke. He's mine. He's called Robert. I arranged a meeting last night and Mark just turned up out of the blue. So Auntie Steph steered Randy Robert to the bar. But Mark thought he was Steph's fella. And Muggins here didn't set him straight. Is this kosher? You're not just covering for her. Oh, yeah, and get myself in stock with Mark. You idiot. Well, I'm sorry. Well, story's no good. You made me look a right pillock in front of half the Rovers. Well, you better put the record straight. How? By telling Mark the truth. Preferably in the Rovers when it's packed. Tea out. Mavis. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. Thank you. You're not still brooding about that little tiff we had this morning over Red Holesworth, are you? No, not at all. It's gone clean out of my mind. Not sickening for summer, are you? No, I don't think so. Why do you ask? Well, since you come back from your dinner, you've hardly said two words. I was beginning to think your boiled egg hadn't agreed with you. No, it was very nice. Did you make little bread and butter soldiers oh. and dip them in? No, I didn't. I don't do that at home either. I always thought it was a bit common. Oh. Derek does it sometimes just to tease me. Do you know, that's the first time you've mentioned Derek's name in the last few days without your bottom lip trembling. Yes, well, I've been thinking. Hmm. Well, I think perhaps I've been a bit hard on Derek over this business with Angela. I mean, it's not as if he's another Mike Baldwin, is it? No, he's Definitely not no, that. No, but I mean, he is a businessman, and as such, he does have to work with her. Though I know he sees as little of her as he possibly can. Now you're talking sense. Anyway, I think I might have made his life a bit of a misery recently. You? I mean, he hasn't said anything, but... Anyway, I've decided I'm going to try to make amends, so I'm going to give him a really lovely welcome home tonight. Mm. So, I think I'll ring him now. I'll ask him to pop into the off-licence on his way home, get a nice bottle of wine. I mean, I would go myself, but Derek's a bit of a wine connoisseur. Ah, just the man I want to see. What have I done now? Now, as far as I know. No, you're a racing man, aren't you? Oh, the occasional flutter. Yeah. Well, I'm going to races on Friday. Hi, we're Red Jolder, Oh, word done half, get round. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. There is no secret. <laughs> but that's impossible. I mean, they can't be having lunch with Mrs Wilton and Mrs Wilton. I'm certainly not having lunch with my husband. Oh. No, thank you. There's... No message. Goodbye. We're in a parallel universe. Pardon? Parallel universe. This bloke dreamt up this theory there's another world running alongside ours, you see. It, it, identical in every way, but different. I still don't understand. Well, sometimes we can drop in and out of this world and not even know it, you see. Now, that could explain the two Mrs Wilkins. You could be having lunch with your Derek at this very moment. Well, I'm not. Angela is. She's Mrs Wilton as well, you know. Derek's not back from lunch with Angela, and it's almost half past three. Hey, have you seen my airbrush? On my bed. Oh, Angela, darling, when are you going to buy one of your own? When them idle devils send me a grand, and I want it to live on. Got it! Hello. Hiya. Jenny in? Yeah. Jenny! Come in. Uh. It's you. 
You told Mark, yep? Yeah? What? Give me a chance. Tonight. I'll tell him when I can. Yeah, well, hurry up about it. I don't want half the street thinking Steph's having it off with some bloke. I'll tell him, all right. But not that he's your bloke instead. That's my business. When he finds out, I hope he gives you a damn good hiding. Oh, and I suppose he'll find it off you, will he? He might, yeah. Why don't you just tell Mark? Leave the field clear for Robert. Because the field's not clear for him, is it? He's married. Oh, Jenny, you're mad! I know, I know. But I think it's serious. You think? Well, it is. For me. So you're keeping Mark dangling on a string just in case Robert's wife finds out and stops him coming out to play? You're looking to get your face rearranged, either by Mark or your fella's wife. Why me? Because you're his mate. Somebody ought to tell him. Jenny's not going to. Hello? What's wrong with that girl? I've gone very funny lately. Yeah, well, Mark won't be laughing when he finds out. Exactly. Which is why I don't want to be in the firing line. You're doing him a favour, aren't you? He'll thank you for it. Oh, yeah. Like you thanked him, eh? When he tried telling you about Steph by trying to take his head off. Yes, you tell him. He won't believe me. He'll think I'm winding him up just to get back at him. Mm, there you go. She's always going to put a two penny towards me. Look, somebody's got to tell him to stop him rubbishing Steph all over the shop. <laughs> Well, I'll leave it to you. Where are you going off to see Mark? Oh, my echo's like leaving now up to Jenny. I'm off to do a swift bottom and at the garage. Kevin, you're pushing your luck, aren't you? We need the money. Keep our little treasured and the lifestyle she's become accustomed to. Yeah, but to. you're tired. You need to sleep. Oh, I won't be late. I can always get a job, you know, and give it to a baby minder. Look, your place is with her. Besides, where would we find anyone to put up with all your balling, eh? <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. He doesn't mean it worthy. First she drops me, and then she asks for a transfer. Make a good football manager. Jack, what have I done wrong? I'll tell you. You have not recognised you've had a very narrow escape. I don't care what you say, I want her back. Don't say you haven't been warned. Looking forward to the races, then. Have they announced it in local press? Mavis told me. Sorry, didn't know it was a secret. Well, it's not actually a secret, because Rita and I have nothing to hide, have we? I doubt that we could if we had. <laughs> Before you start, any action replay of this dinner time's little rumpus and you're both out. It's all right, it's all right. I'm going quite a bit of police. Look, I just want to apologise. I'm sorry if you upset, yeah? I'm just trying to be a mate. Don't worry about it. Forgotten. You seen Jenny? She's with your staff at a promo. Uh, Kev's not had a word then. With me? What about? Something to tell you, I believe. Uh, something to your advantage, so to speak. What are you on about, Des? Best off having a word with him, aren't you? Hey. It's a grand job that boss of yours did on my motor. Your motor? Yeah, your boss, Kevin. Fix my car off a tree. If you want to stick with him, you know, you could learn something. What to drink? You're after share that one? John Harry's cage. It's all ship shaped now in his clean little home. Huh. Maybe, how long is this ordeal by silence to go on? Don't start again, Derek, please. Me start? Look, you've explained it all perfectly clearly. I quite understand why three hour long business lunches are all the rage. But I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, I was with Angela for half an hour, three quarters at most. The rest of the time I was engaged in other business. Going through your accounts in your car on your own? Yes, because it was quicker than going back to the office. I was not secreted in some sleazy hotel bedroom canoodling with Angela. Well, I'm sure I never said you were. No, but the implication behind your cross-questioning was clear enough. I never mentioned sleazy hotels or oh. bedrooms. This is the first I've heard of either of them. Because there weren't any. I've not been to a hotel, sleazy or otherwise, with Angela or with anybody else. Then why bring it up? Why all the vigorous denials? Why mention hotels at all? Unless you've got a guilty conscience. Oh, for pity's sake! Mavis. I've always thought our marriage was founded on a bedrock of honesty and trust. It seems I've been labouring under some grand delusion. Where are you going? Out. Where 
are you going out at this time of night? There you go again. The worm of suspicion rising at the slightest footfall. I'm going for a walk. Oh, but Derek, it's dark and cold outside. No colder, no more dark than the home where mistrust lurks in every corner. Derek! Remember this job being booked in? Okay, it's a fair cut. Not the first time either, is it, eh? I bet Jolzwa thinks you're a little marvel. Thinks I can learn a lot from you. Look, I've done one or two. I can learn a lot from you, eh? How to cheat and rob the firm I work for. I needed the money. You did right calling me a mug, Kev. I mean, you should know. You're taking me for one. Mr. High and Mighty, but I won't melt. Listen, I've apologised. It won't happen again. You're dead right it won't, because I'm not going to let you, Kev. From now on, mate, I'm watching you like a hawk. And if you dare step out of line. Yeah. Well, it's not me you should be watching, is it? What's that supposed to mean, eh? Hey! Ask your girlfriend. You what? Kev! No! Kev! Kev! Ignore him, Jen. His cornflakes were cold. Oh, come on! What have you been doing in there? Calm down, Des. You won't be late. Yeah, no thanks to you. Who's she been phoning, Jenny? Oh, it was uh, Tom something he said. Was it Crewster? Oh, yeah. very funny. You reversed the charges, did you? Come on, get in. Morning. Taxi. Oh, indeed. Come on, Jen, I'll give you a lift. I've got a lift. I want to talk to you. Well, I've got to talk to Steph, Mark. I mean, this is the only chance I'll get. I've just come round specially. Well, I'm sorry. Well, tonight, then? Yeah, if I'm back. Right, we'll be in the Rovers last hour. You look forward to that, won't oh. you, Jen? God, what am I going to do about him? Simple. You tell him. How can I? I'll tell you again, Jenny, what you don't do. What? You don't crack on the bloke you're going out with actually having an affair with my wife. You don't do that. Now, that's not nice. Look, he's got a case for me, like, using the garage tools, using the heat, the light, I mean, he's even got a case for depriving the company of work. I mean, that guy might have gone to the garage had he not come to me. Well, I don't think he would have done. No, it. nor do I. But you couldn't blame Mark if he said it, could you, eh? I mean, let's face it, I've been caught with my pants down. But it's hardly a great crime. There's no point punishing yourself about it, Look, is there? I was in the wrong. He's every right to blow me out. Keep your voice down. Anyway, Mark should understand. We need the money at the moment. Look, it's a business he's running, not a tool lending service. That's not the worst of it, anyway. He was having a go at me and I got angry back. Yeah, well, I would have got flipping angry back. Yeah, well, said it's not me you should be spying on. You should keep a closer eye on Jenny. Kevin. Oh. Have you got a stiff neck? I have, as a matter of fact. Not that I suppose you'd care. Well, you were the one who chose to sleep on the sofa. Didn't seem like choice to me. Oh, that's right. I get the blame. Our bedroom is as much yours as mine, Derek. If you choose to sleep on the sofa, don't blame stiff necks on me. For all the warmth you were showing me last night, I might as well have slept in the fridge. Three hours for lunch. Oh, not again, for heaven's sake. Well, I'll say this for Angela. Once she gets her hooks into somebody, they certainly know about it. This is just what he wants, you know. Who? Victor. This is a Shakespearean situation, maybe. Shakespearean passions we're prey to. Victor's an Iago manipulating us through jealousy. He, he thrusts Angela and me together at the slightest opportunity so that you will get jealous. Rubbish. Why would he do that? Because I won. He can't bear it that in the contest for your hand, I won. He's married himself now, Derek. Yes, to someone who's a replica of you. He's racked with jealousy, seething. He... He can't bear it. He's trying to break us up. That was one of the most hurtful things you've ever said to me, Derek. But it's true. It's true. We're Othello and Desdemona. He's determined to destroy us. How can you say that Yvonne is a replica of me? The woman's a nightmare. <laughs> a positive nightmare. Oh, mate. Oh. Don't just... Stand there, Curly. Go talk to her. You know you want her. Do you mind, Mrs. Duckworth? We're missing a whole section of bite-sized battered haddock balls. There's a freezer full in the storeroom. I think there'll be more use in the shop, don't you? Mr. Watts. 
Still not right between you and Kurt. Can't you understand? I'm finished with him. All right, then. I don't want to transfer. Well, don't you think you've been a bit easy? No, no. Why won't anyone listen? I shouldn't even have to work in the same building as him. All right, love. I understand. You don't want any more to do with him. Right. Right. Well, come for your tea tonight, love, and then you can talk it out with him. Yes? Oh, come in. Come in, on. Take a seat, will you? Thank you. Right, so what seems to be the trouble? Pardon? Listlessness? Can't sleep at night? No appetite? Or is it trouble with your water? Is this a joke? No, not at all. The modern-day supermarket manager needs to be all things to all men. Hold out your tongue. I'm not ill, Mr Holdsworth. Oh, you're not ill? No. Then why are you walking around like a leaf of dead lettuce? I'm not. No one. I have observed three minutes by my watch, stood by the pilchards, gazing at the air conditioning vent. Hmm? Four and a half minutes amongst the cereals, focused on a carton of granary crunch, and at least seven minutes contemplating an aubergine. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, this is slightness, not. Hmm? I'm sorry. Slightness? And what is Dr. Reg's diagnosis for slightness? I don't know. This. What is it? Kimberly Taylor's transfer request. Oh. Oh, it says. Oh. Well, it's a sad day for me when my deputy manager, a man on whom I thought I could lean like a rock, turns to straw, blown on the whims of a shelf stacker. It's not just a shelf stacker. Norman, I have been young myself. I have loved, and this has gone on long enough. I just can't help it. Yes, I know that. And what is Dr. Reggie's diagnosis? I don't know. Get your mind onto something else. Something important, something exciting. Something bigger than all this. Such as? A trolley race. Eh? We haven't had one for a long time. Now, you know the form. Raffle tickets, Miss Better Buy. Tell her to get her frock washed. Tanner announcements. Uh, draw next Friday. So it's over to you, over to you. That will pep you up and mark my words, eh? And if it doesn't, then we will try you on Sanatigen. Right, come on. Come on. It's the easiest thing in the world, love. you just got to find yourself a bootmaker, haven't you? But you can't miss them. They're all stood there in a pile, aren't they? They've all, all got the signs up. Sid Magson Scunthorpe, Freddie Wilkes of Pontefract. Just find one with honest face. It's just like putting a bet on down the high street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Emulator, 2.30, three quid to win. Oh, Jack, I'll have enough to do for my own bets, and I can't cope with any more than that. Oh, of course you can. Get older to put it on. No, I don't want to get involved in putting other people's bets on in any way. I'm not sure it's not illegal. Look, I can't put it on, can I? I'm going to be stuck behind that flaming bar till closing time. Good. Save your brass instead of giving it to Sid Watts it Scunthorpe. Emulator 8 to 1. He says it in all the flaming papers. Done it nearest thing to a dead cert you'll ever find. <laughs> I thought you was never going. I didn't want to bring these in or he'd have been stood talking yet. Well, you did right. I'm not putting bets on for Jack Duckworth. The thing will lose and I'll get blamed. You can count on it. Uh, I wish I was going off for the afternoon. Not necessarily to the races, but I don't altogether approve of horse racing, but just to get out of all this. All what? Oh, this Shakespearean situation. See, Derek thinks Victor is deliberately using Angela to make me jealous. Eh? Well, he thinks Victor's still carrying a torch. I mean, I'm sure he isn't, but you can't tell, Derek. He says we're like Desdemona and Othello, and Victor's Iago. And who's jealous of who? Well, I'm not really jealous. I mean, I don't like Derek seeing Angela. Why should he have to? What's the point of getting divorced if you then spend three hours over lunch on the pretext of it being a business meeting? To be quite honest, I could sympathise with Othello. Does Derek feel like Desdemona? So how 
How long are you going to be then? Tell her not to expect it back today. Why is that because you're knackered? You just fancy a bit of overtime. Look, I've apologised. I was out of order, well out of order, and I shouldn't have done it. But I'll make it up to you, and I'll make it up to the garage. So what more do you want, eh? I just don't think you're a very nice bloke, mate. Look, I'm not the first person to do a bit of moonlighting, mate. I'm not talking about that. But what then? I'm talking about last night. We had a row. I was angry, but I was in the right. And what did you go and do, eh? I bet you can't even remember. We're arguing about moonlighting, and you get snared about me and Jenny, cracking on that she's playing away. Well, that's just sour grapes, mate. And I don't think you're a very nice bloke. And if you ever call my girlfriend a tart again, you'll know about it. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, very nice. Just swank that. <laughs> Listen, just pray it keeps fine. If it rains, I'm going to be cutting off. Where are you going? Racing. Who with? Oh, Angie, just in time. What are you having, love? Nothing. Have you seen Jenny? Oh, well, she'll be at work, won't she? No, I thought they said she was coming over dinner, but she's not there, so I thought she might be in here. Well, has she gone to see Mark? Oh, I doubt it, from what I've heard. Oh, never mind. Have a drink while you're no, waiting. No, I can't stop. Just tell her not to use the washing machine. We've had a flood this morning. It's not serious. I mopped it up. I'll see you later. <clears throat> Visions of the place under six inches of water. You will be a landlord. Is it worth it? Hey, no, our can's got somebody to send something to the landlords, have Oh, you? I've got nothing against landlords. Well, unless they happen to be your landlord. Well, I was going to say, unless they happen to be Alf Roberts, but yeah, that'll do. <laughs> oh, oh Reggie. My word. Anything less like Cinderella, I have. Yet to see. Who's this prince of fairy godmother? You never know, it could be buttons. <laughs> have we time for a drink? No, we haven't, because your carriages are waiting you, parked on double yellow lines. So shall we make discussions the better part? Uh, but first, a drink for the locals, if you would, kind landlady. Oh, here, fairy godmother, eh? Think nothing of it, boys. And now, would you accompany me to my limousine? Do you mean your mini, or have you pinched a shopping trolley? Listen, if I'm up back by midnight, look out for a big pumpkin. <laughs> See you, Bye. 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 Oh, well, well, there we go. What are you having? Hi. Hiya. Uh, sit down. Do you want a brew? Um, go on then. I can't stop long ago, Mark. I'm on the dinner. Do you want chip? No, thanks. What have you eaten? Oh, I'll be all right. I'll get something from home later. And now is me cursing you. Why? Well, I was shooting off this morning. I wanted to talk to you. What about? Well, nothing special, just something Kev said. Stupid Burke. About what? Uh, I'll tell you later. Anyway, nice to see you. You going out tonight? Yeah, afraid so. Where are you going? I might come. Look, Mark. Mark, things have changed. Like what? Well, I want to finish it. I mean, I, I want us to be friends, but that's all. Why? Well, I just think, well, I don't think that we've got much in common. Well, we have a good time, don't we? Well, don't we? It's been OK. What are you saying we don't? It's been OK, Mark, but the earth hasn't moved, if that's what you're asking. Anyway, I've had enough. Yeah, that's it. Someone else, isn't there? Kev knows, doesn't he? Probably, yeah. Mark, it's, it's all happened very quickly. So who is it? Well, does it matter? Oh, don't worry. I just felt like smashing a mug. Look, Mark, I think I'd better go. Yeah, you go. I'm sorry. My job. No, yeah, well, she's been on the phone pestering. Well, you don't have to work through your dinner hour for anyone. I felt like it, okay. <sighs> Sorry I spoke. You knew, didn't you? Knew what? About Jenny. Listen, Mark. Don't lecture me, Kev, eh? Just get on with the no, car. No, listen, Mark. 
You're wrong about Steph. I caused her an action. No, that was Jenny's bloke. What? You caught Jenny at it, Mark. She said the first thing that came into her head said it was Steph's fella. It wasn't. That was the fella Jenny's been seeing. Look, I hate to tell you, mate, but it's true. Mr. Taylor. Arctic roll, have we got enough? I don't know, Mr. Watts. Well, using your experience and bearing in mind we're open to 8 o'clock, will half a dozen see us through? Depends. Well, add that to your list if you wouldn't mind. Why should I? Why should you what? Mind. Um, well, no, no reason. Oh, and spinach. I've noticed we're running low on the spinach. Right. Frozen. Okay. Are you uh, feeling all right, Miss Taylor? I'm fine. Ah, I, I, uh, I love the. Oh, and sprouts. I see we need more sprouts. Uh, it's just that you're looking a, a bit, a bit glum. Oh, we need some more of those ready-cut stir-fry vegetables in five Chinese sauces. Now, have you got all that? Yes. Good, good. I'll be happy to give Mr. Holdsworth a, a good report when he gets back tomorrow. It's, um, important meeting head office. Well, come off it, Curly. He's gone to races with Rita. He's gone for some brake pads. What's wrong? Oh, you've had this bloke on. He wants you to fix his car. Oh, good. Take his number. Yeah, I did. It's um, Mr. Seymour, back of the wreck, I think. Oh, look, thank you very much. Do you think we should be doing this, Kev? Well, why not? Well, after last night? After last night, I might not have. After today, I'm sick of the guy. Besides, we need the money. Hey, Jenny's chucked man. Has she? Yeah, so we don't have to pretend about that anymore, thank God. She told him about this new bloke? Yeah, he's sick. Poor Mark. Hey, I tell you, my sympathy's in short supply for that guy at the moment, I'm telling you. How do you get on at the clinic? Well, she's mm. doing as she should. She's put some weight on. Some babies are just like that, Kev. They just don't sleep. Mm. Did they give her anything for it? No, there's nothing wrong with her. Oh, did they give me anything for it? <laughs> Such as? Oh, a case of brandy, box of mogadons, anything. You know, I mean, she's a little devil. She's turning her dad into an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, but you're lovely, aren't you? Yeah, of course she is. Wouldn't hear a word against her. Well, not unless it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Yeah, carry on laughing, feel free. I'm the mug that's been ditched, aren't I? So, do we get a plumber in or what? Well, he's done it before. It just seems to cure itself, so... See if it happens next time and just keep your fingers crossed. Does his wife know about you? What? Robert's wife, about you. Angie, please. No, just tell me, what's the attraction? I don't want to talk about him. You do, of course you do. Go on. What's so good about him? OK, then. Everything, if you must know. Everything. Subject closed. Thank you. you. No Rita, then? No, she gone to the races. Yeah, I know she went to the races. Um, where is she now? Well, I don't know. She could be anywhere. Mm. She's not used to gambling, is she? No. Apart from the Grand National, I, I don't think she's had anything to do with horses. She was a bit apprehensive about putting her bets on, as a matter of fact. Yeah, they're usually the ones. Pardon? They're the ones that get carried away. Novice punters. Quite often, they just don't know when to stop. Really? Yeah. In case the other day, this fella, first time at the races, Ended up gambling his whole shop, his whole livelihood straight down the sink. No. I'm not saying I'm not saying that Rita will be like that. I'm just saying it happens. Yeah, he was a news agent as well, this fella. He's dead witty, this bloke, isn't he? Sorry. He's a real joker. I bet you find him dead funny, don't you, Mavis? No. Oh, what's your problem? Oh, no problem at all, mate. I mean, I like being made a mug of. I like finding out my girlfriend's playing away, and you and your missus know about it. But it's no problem. I can take a joke. Yeah, you're getting flaming boring, Mark. Yeah. Well, forget it, cos you're nothing. Domestic problems. Yes, poor Mark. Mm. You know, I don't think Rita would gamble the shop away, Desmond. I don't think she's the type. Hey, have uh, come about your car. Oh, right. Well, here it is. Now, the lights are bright at first, but as soon as you're underway, they start to dim. Miss fires when it's running and it's difficult to start. See, the thing is, I don't want to take it to a garage. Have them wipe a rag over it, charge me 100 quid and tell me there's nothing wrong with it. You get me meaning? Uh, sounds to me like you've had a bad experience with the garage. Oh, hasn't everyone? Well, you're talking to the wrong bloke here. A working one. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you up? Yeah, I'm sorry. Just had a three-week-old baby girl. Oh, sympathiser. 
Just make sure you don't charge garage prices, all right? Yeah, I'll do my best. Good. So, what do you think? It sounds like you're alternator, but just take it round the block first, if you don't mind. Okay. You should be able to tell what it is. All right. This woman, lady, was born under lucky star. You want to go racing, go with her because she can do no wrong. I'll get on. Now listen, I'm getting these, ill gotten James, and get one for you and Jeff. Oh, thank you. Jeff, there's a drink here for you. What are you having? Hi. Uh, <laughs> He's been cursing you all day at Jeff. So now you wouldn't put his bet on for him. Jack, what was that horse you were asking about? Emulator. That in the 3.30? 2.30. Oh, aye, of course it was. Must have been you mentioning it that rang a bell with me. I put five pounds on. Good luck to you. So what's up? Went in six to one. Oh, Jack, I am sorry. Story of my life, love, isn't it? Hey, but it's so exciting, this. You can't tell from the telly. I mean, they just go so fast. Exploit your instincts. In a year or two from now, you're going to be a millionaire. Now, beginners, look, I'm stopping while I'm ahead. You wouldn't believe it. Three in a row. 2.30, emulator, 3 o'clock, watch Watson, and half past three, allegiance. One after the other. It's like picking sweeties. Oh. Strange, isn't it, this morning? She couldn't make a bet out, sir. Anyway, thanks for the pint, love. <laughs> you know, it must be good for you to, you know, to get out of the house. I mean, being cooped up with a new baby all day. I mean, you need new stimulus, don't you? You know, fresh faces, cheer yourself up a bit. Mm. I mean, I find that. You know, I mean, you can get tired of your own company. I mean, I'm, I'm fed up being on my own. Well, that does amaze me, Curly, yeah. Well, no, no, it's true. I mean, I don't blame Kimball for wanting to change. I mean, this transfer could be a good thing, you know, but we're not being thrown together. But why won't she talk to me about it? She finished with you. Well, yeah, she has, but that's not a good enough reason, it just to say I finished with you. Well, what else is she gonna say? Well, I want a reason, don't I? I'm entitled to a reason. Uh, it wouldn't have you anything to do with your boring her, would it, Curly? Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, that was one of our great strengths that we did find each other mutually excited. So why does she want a transfer then? Ah, well, that's it. I don't think she does. Deep down, I think she wants something to prevent it. And actually, she's uh, she's got her wish. How do you mean? Well, um, this is Kimberly's transfer request form. Mysteriously, it, uh, it didn't find its way to head office. I mean, uh, somehow, I don't think it's going to. Oh, I've to come to Oh, God help us. Hey, some night out, this is to turn out of me. Come on, let's leg it while nope. we're in the gents. We're going to sit here and die a terminal boredom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark! Mark, yeah, just come and rescue us, will you? We're suffering from death by Curly. Just come and sit down, will you? Why, she can sit and laugh at me as well? Oh, great. You fancy joining me in a dive off the viaduct just to round it off? care about is that you're all right yeah well that's all that matters isn't it that daddy was all right well it matters yes. to the fella whose car it was and if you don't think so you should have heard what he had to say last night well why don't you just tell him what you're always telling me that's what he's got his insurance out for isn't it because it doesn't come off his insurance does it he wasn't driving what you mean it comes off yours well no it's not as simple as that either <gasps> that dummy doesn't look very nice does See, it my insurance doesn't cover his car well, why not if you were driving it? It covers my car and anybody else for third party. I mean, that's normal. Yeah, but you're always driving other people's cars. You do that every day, don't you? And that's when I'm working for the garage. Yeah. Only last night I wasn't working for the garage, was I? Oh, no. Which means I wasn't covered by the garage insurance. Oh, Kevin. Yeah, well, not to worry. We'll sort something out. Well, what are you going to do? Something that isn't strictly legal. So, we don't want you hearing this, do we, eh? No, we don't want you hearing this. But what? 
Never you mind. I'll sort it out, OK? Don't worry. But I've got to worry. What do you mean? It's not strictly legal. Look, don't you worry yourself. It's not your problem. I'll sort it out. The only problem you've got is to try and get some sleep. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll see you this afternoon. All right, I'll see, see you ya. later. Now he's gone to work. Let's sort you out, eh? Come on. You don't fancy a job, do you, Phyllis? What sort of a job? Boring, long hours, low pay sort of job. I'll tell you the trouble with you, Sean. Oh, aye, and the boss is terrible enough. Your trouble is you don't get yourself involved in it. Oh, I beg your pardon. If you just took a bit more interest, you'd see how satisfying running a shop like this can be. It's what a challenge it is. <sighs> challenge to stop a week. Being a good shopkeeper involves as much judgment and strategy as, as a general at the end of his army oh. or a captain on the bridge of his ship. He's got to be constantly monitoring what's coming in and going out. It's an art running a shop like this, as you'd find out if you just took a bit more interest. Oh, you might just as well try and interest a prisoner in his cell as try and interest me in this shop. Yeah, well, that's your attitude, isn't it? Mm. Do you think I could have me change, love? Oh, fella, what did you oh, give me? Right. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, I uh, just thought I'd let you know water heater's on the blink again. Oh, heck, it's not, is it? I uh, must have relit it seven times trying to have a shave. Ah, well, it's always been a bit temperamental, you know. Are you sure you've not got a window open or something? Because least draft, you know. No. Doors closed, windows closed, I don't even breathe. Anyway, I must go. Just thought I'd mention it. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, let me know if it gets any worse. <sighs> yeah. Oh. After you, Phyllis. You're a gentleman. Sit down, Sit down. Hey, do you know, I used to complain about that water heater when we lived up there. He'll be exaggerated. Anyway, if I get it fixed, it'll only encourage him to use more hot water. I wish you wouldn't keep looking at me like that. Well, lads, I have broken in, Yeah, well, I'll be glad when I get my transfer. I will, honestly, I can't wait. Posters? Pardon? Telling the world about the Better Buy Grand Trolley race? When it's on, out to get tickets, the world wants to know, Mr. Watts, but the world is not being told. Ah, no. I mean, we've got them, yeah, but I haven't had a chance to bubble them yet. Oh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would have thought with posters, unless they are put up, they don't serve a great deal of purpose. Excuse me. Yes, Miss Turner? Well, I wondered if you'd heard about my transfer yet. Mr. Watts? What? Have we had a response to Miss Taylor's request for a transfer? Uh, no, no, we haven't. Apparently not. I mean, I would like to know as soon as possible. Um, well, I'm sure Mr. Watts has noted that, yes. Yes, yes. All right for you? Thank you. No. No? Posters, Mr. Watts. The world is waiting. Right. Right. Yes. has. You sure there's a flunky midfield in? And she thinks it's going to their head office, but actually it's going no further than Curly's top pocket. Well, she's bound to find out sooner or later. Well, he don't care, does he? He's obsessed. Oh, and then Mark turns up. Now he's obsessed why no one told him what Jenny was up to. Hey, these young men won't believe what a terrible time they have. Well, you better warn them it doesn't get any easier as you get older. No, no. Unless, of course, you're one of the might bolder to this world with no human feelings in the first place. Hey, I was adopted a job this morning. Really? Taken over from Order Roberts in their shop. But I'm not gonna go. No? Well, they'd just be me and Alf Roberts, wouldn't they? <laughs> and I mean to say, when you're working, a man and woman alongside each other, day in and day out, there's always tensions, you know what I mean? Well, I've got a fair idea. And she could be jealous, that one. No, I think I've had a near escape this morning. Very near. Do you know, Phyllis, you are an inspiration to us all. Am I? Oh, cheers. Sounds a little rosy, then. Great. Where's she at? She's great. She must sleep sometime. Yeah, I think she's saving it all till she's about 17. Look, I, uh, wondered if you'd do us a favour. Yeah? Yeah, I, uh, had a bit of an accident last night. I crashed a motor. What, yours? No, no, the one I was working on. And I know I said I wouldn't do it again, but this guy asked us and, well, we needed the money. I didn't even use the garage. It was all my own time, all my own gear. Well, I can't stop you then, can I? It won't happen again, I promise you. Especially after last night. Look, this idiot pulled straight across us and I ended up in a load of roadworks. It's gonna cost a bob or two to put it right. So I was thinking if I could put it through on the garage insurance. Oh, come on, Kev. Look, they won't know. Just say who's working over. Put the job through the book, no problem. You don't make it easy, do you? Look, it won't even involve you, I promise you. I'll do all the paperwork. They won't even question it. Look, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. What's there to think about? 
I would have done the same for you. Well, it's easy to say that now, isn't yeah, it? I would. I'll think about it. Take stuffed olives, for example. Now, there's not a lot of course from around here, but you do get the odd customer that needs them. So, I don't order them in regular, I just get them in as they needed. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, whereas baked beans have a regular order for because there's a constant turnover. Oh, hi, Liz. Hi. I'm just getting some salt and some coffee for the Rovers. I bet said, can you put them on a bit? Yes, of course we can. So, straight away, you're breaking down your stock into categories. Mm. The stuff that will be delivered every day, like bread and milk, stuff that's delivered every week, and other stuff that might not be delivered once or twice a year. Oh. Of course, it's all seasoned as well, so you've all that to think about. Oh, fancy. Right, I think that should do it. Hey, I've been meaning to ask you, how's Deirdre? I haven't seen her around for a bit. Oh, she's all right, I think. No, I mean, uh, with Ken, you know, is he still pestering her? Oh, no, she's much happier now. He seems to have learned to keep his distance. Yeah, that's because he's pestering me now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got to get back. I might see you later, actually. <laughs> OK, bye. bye. So, you've got all different timescales for your ordering, you see. And you've got to keep it under constant review because fashions change, people's tastes change. Oh, please, now no more! Eh? One more word about running this shop, that this empire, and I shall get me caught and I shall walk out. You'll never set eyes on me again. Now, I mean that. Yeah, well, it is a lot to be taken in at one time, yeah. Look, we'll have a break, and we'll start again when your head's had time to take it all in. i tell you what, Jacko. Good enough, do with some more heat in that place of mine. Ah, this is where you want to be, son, this kind of weather. Do you know, when I think back, and I used to do the window cleaning, eh? You know how I stuck it, I'll never know. 95, Jim. Ah, what, you were on the clear? Oh, I, I used to be out there. Wind and the rain stuck up a ladder with water running down the inside of your sleeves. Looking at that weather out there, I thank my lucky stars for this job. <laughs> I'd forgotten you were a man of such varied talents, Jim. Oh, there's nobody better with the chamois than me. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'll have a vodka and tonic and a hot pot, please. Right here. Hey, hello, Mark. How's Jenny these days? You know, I don't seem to see much of her. Well, how should I know? Well, I thought you two were seeing quite a bit of one another. You better ask her about that, aren't you? Well, uh, excuse me, Lo. I don't want to interrupt her anything. It's okay, sit down. No, no, only I've, um, I've just asked Mark how Jenny was. He's nearly bit me head off. Oh, well, that'll be because Jenny's given him the push. He's not too happy about it. Ah. Um, and what about Jenny? How does she feel about it? Oh, she's fine. She was never as keen on him as he was on her. I see. Well, thanks for putting me in the picture. Okay. Well, I don't believe this place. Why? Everybody's got an angle on everybody else. It's like Eastern Europe before Glasnost. Oh, sure. Mm. In fact, people say, whatever happened to the secret police? The Stasi. <laughs> Where have they all gone? Well, I think if you have a look round here... <laughs> Is there some joke I should know about? Eh? We seem to be finding something funny. Something to do with me, yeah? We weren't talking about you, Mark. Honestly, we weren't. No. Yeah. Good. Why, are you? Oh, he's genuine Stasi, is that one? Now, I've asked him if he'll let me put it through on the garage insurance. You know, make out it was a garage job I was doing. And will he? Well, he says he's got to think about it. He'll probably say yeah, just wants to give me an hard time for. Well, suppose he says no. No, he won't do that. He's a mate. We've always got on. Yeah, up to now you've always got on. Well, just wants to make me sweat a bit first, doesn't he? Eh? Then he'll say yeah, you know, make out he's doing me some sort of big favour. <laughs> Sorry to trouble you. Only I thought it best to get this thing settled. So I took the car into the main dealers this morning, got them to give me an estimate. I could have sorted that out for you. Yeah, well, it's done now. So I thought I'd let you have a copy. Yes. Look, I won't keep you. I can see I've called it a bad time. But perhaps you could give me a ring, let me know how you're going to deal with it. Yeah, sure. Very good. I'll wait to hear from you then. Bye now. That the money's kind? Yes. And? 1,250 quid. <gasps> Kevin! Yeah, well, garage insurance will cover that. It's not going to cost us a penny. <laughs> going out with now? No, happen you best not tell me. I don't want her getting the impression that I'm spying. Well, I don't really know that there is anybody. And if there is, she'll told me. 
Will she be in tonight, do you know? Well, she generally gets back about six, but more often than not, she's straight out again. Yeah, I don't know. She might as well be living to the side at Pennine instead of to the side at Street for all I see of her. Well, thanks, love. I won't bother you again. Sure. Okay. Bye. Who is she going out with then? I don't know. I just said I don't know. And you meant it? Of course I meant it. Did you think I was lying? Well, I thought two girls sharing a house, you'd spend all your time comparing notes about your boyfriends. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Yeah, well, I suppose it just shows how little I know about women. You can say that again. Well, Jenny is very secretive, really. I'm not surprised Mrs. Fairclough feels left out. I mean, I see her every day and I feel like that sometimes myself. Well, lots of small businesses are closing down these days. Ah, not my love. So it's going all right, is it? It's going grand, thanks, love. And you would tell me if it wasn't? I don't think I'd have to tell you, Liz Louie. I think you'd spotted by the look I was wearing. Anyway, if all else fails, sure can always turn to Jacko's old trade, eh? What? Cleaning windows? Uh -huh. Yeah, and he's told us how terrible it was. No, 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 let's be honest. I mean, it did have uh, a few advantages. I mean, getting out there in the summer months, cleaning them bedroom windows. There's a uh, few uh, nice views, Jim. Oh, I'll bet. And uh, these young housewives, you know, they don't mind a little bit of company to brighten their lives on the long afternoons their husbands are away. <clears throat> Hey, and all you need's a ladder and a bucket. That's all you need. Right. Forget it. You stick to motorbikes. Anyway, you're tired enough when you come home as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can I pie take out, please? What's you got, I'll get it. Hey, that's a bit of a bad do, isn't it? A young fella like yourself having a pie to take out. Thought you'd thought of something more exciting than that. Certainly would when I was your age. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, not much, really. No, like most of the things you say. God, you try to be pleasant. He's been ready to lash out at somebody since the minute he walked in. Ah, that's more like it. Have you notified the local press, have you? Yeah. Good. I know I could leave these things in your hands. Speaking of which, I should be slipping away for an hour or two this afternoon, because I have an invite to tea, which I shall be doing. Mr. Watts? Hmm? Norman, you're going to have to pull yourself together. I know things haven't run smoothly between you and Miss Taylor, but life has to go on, you know. And I speak as one who's no stranger to affairs of the heart. The torments of unrequited love. Hey, have you ever played badminton? Uh, no, not really. Well, I think you should, because that's what you need, some vigorous exercise to help you work out your frustrations. Personally, I find it's as good as anything. <laughs> hey, half an hour knocking a shuttlecock about, and Miss Taylor will be no more than a fond memory. Let me know if you want to have a game. thought about it yet? What? Well, I was asking you before about putting a car through on the garage insurance. Look, will you stop nagging me, Kev, OK? Oh, nagging you, am I? Oh, I am sorry. I don't want to nag you. But if you can just find time to think about it, I'd be very grateful. Cos right now, it's all I can think about. Aren't you lovely? <laughs> yeah, we have one at home, you know. Only our sleeps. <laughs> Kill you, Martin. <laughs> hey, the only sound. Sometimes you can hear this snoring. Oh. Then just you be quiet and get Sally a cup of tea while this young lady gets to know her Auntie Alma. Oh, oh. Auntie Alma. Yeah, of course, if it were my own flat, there are all sorts of things I'd want to put right. But it's not. It's Alf, so... Uh... So we should put them right? Well, in an ideal world, it should, yeah. But uh, I don't think it's all that keen. Keep dropping hints, which he manages to ignore. Well, give him a list. He can't ignore that, can he? Well, that'd be quite a long list. Water heater needs fixing, and damp patch in the kitchen, and rotten window frame, the uh, broken stair riser. Oh, and the doorknob on the bathroom comes off in your hand. I'm going to be stuck in there one day, shall I? Say all that again? You're not joking. No, I'm not. What was the first one? Water well, heater. Yeah, broken water heater. So we don't know what we're going to do if Mark says no. Oh, we won't. All the favours he owes Kev. You remember what it was like when he first started working there. No one else had put up with him, would they? Yeah, well, I just hope he remembers. Yeah, well, if he doesn't, someone will just have to remind him, won't they? Right, I think she's had enough of Ranter Alma now. She wants to go back to her mummy. Oh, come on, oh, oh, Alma, you've only had her two minutes. Martin, am I? The last thing I want to be called is maternal. So your uh, trusty deputy is minding the shop, is she? My trusty deputy is. And I doubt if I could find a more trustier deputy than Mavis. Mm -hmm. And who's minding your shop? Because it's a lot bigger shop to mind, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Well, 
I, too, am fortunate in having somebody I can rely on. Curly. Yes, Mr. Watts, who is at this very moment organising our grand trolley race. In fact, I've got A some... grand trolley race? Well, what's the difference between that and an ordinary trolley race? Well, not a lot, now you come to mention it, but still well worth the winning. So let me give you these. No. Oh, yes. It's the least I can do to repay all this hospitality. Well, just one. Oh, you can't have one. Any more than one and I'll tear them up. Oh, well, all right, just the one, then. So, Curly's one of Better Buy's rising stars, is he? Oh, yes. Yes, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have every confidence in him. Every confidence. Look, he's here again. Well, he works here, don't he? Uh, Miss Taylor. What? I'd just like to congratulate you on your dog food display. It was, uh, it was very eye-catching. There you see. Well, I'd rather not be doing any display here. I have requested a transfer, you know. <clears throat> yes, I'm aware of that. Why is it taking so long, then? Well, these things take time, don't they? Or is it that's already come through and you're just not letting me know you're keeping it a secret? Well, why would he do that? To keep me here, that's why. No, no, it hasn't come through. No? No. Well, then you wouldn't mind if I rang head office then to find out what's happening. I can only repeat, it hasn't come through. Yeah, well, you can repeat all you like, but I don't know that, do I? Oh, but you do know. You know why you know? Because your application's here. The only reason it's not come back from head office is because it's never been to head office. And what's more, it's never going to get to head office. You can't say that! Oh, can't I? You think you're the only person who can say no. Well, I can say no as well. And I'm saying no to your transfer application form. No, no, no! OK. You made me wait. You're going to tell me now or not? Do you know what gets me, Kev? What gets me, it's all one-sided, this. Eh? I mean, you want me to do you a favour? Yeah. Well, where was the favours from you over, Jenny, eh? Jenny? Yeah, you was with them all, laughing behind me back. You would just forget about Jenny. I ain't talking about the car. I found out who were mates with then, didn't I? Are you going to let me put it through on the garage insurance or not? Look, it's illegal, isn't it? What you're asking me to do, it's illegal. Meaning no. You shouldn't be talking to me, Kev. You should be talking to the fellow whose car it is. Yeah. Well, I've already done that. And you know what he tells me? He tells me I owe him 1,250 quid. 1,250 quid I just haven't got. All I've got's a wife, a baby and a mortgage. Oh, come on, don't put that on me. Well, I'm not putting it on you. I'm just telling you I can't afford it. And I thought you was a mate who'd help me out. But it looks like I'm wrong, doesn't it? Look, I'm sorry, Kev. <laughs> sorry? You're not flaming sorry. You're enjoying it. Look, if there's anything else I can do, or if you want to use the garage to do... I think it's in the back, actually. Alfie! Oh, well, well, look, there's no need to disturb him. It's just that my, uh, my secretary here has drawn up a list of one or two repairs needed upstairs, so if you wouldn't mind having no, a look at it. No, no, I'm sure I'd be very grateful. Thank you. And if he doesn't sort them out, then he does go in on rent strike. Hey, <laughs> you'll get me to bother you, Will. Come on, bye. Then. Bye, Lord. Yes, yeah. yeah, see you. What? A communication from Mr. Barlow. Only that's his daughter's handwriting, not his. We'll treat it. Damp patch. Repairs he wants doing. He does what? He's a cheeky beggar. These are the repairs he wants. Well, he can whistle for them. That's right. what he can do. I'll pop round and tell him that then, shall I? Eh? Oh, no, no, it might be just a try on. No. Uh, no, say nothing. That's the best thing to do. Keep him guessing. Sorry, we're... Oh! I didn't want serving, actually. Well, then, what did you want? How are you? Fine! Never better. Now, what did you want? I've, um... I've got the removal men coming tomorrow. Take my stuff around the jackets. There's still a bit of your gear hanging about. You know, I'm closing that. I did tell you about it. Just I'm... burn them, throw them away. I don't care. Oh, come on, Alma. You don't mean that. Oh, don't I? You've still got a key, right? If you want to come round and sort out the rest of your gear, do so. Is there anything else? No. Then I'd like to close, please. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll see you then.
I've got this book as home, the A to Z of shopkeeping. I'll dig it out for you, let you have a look at it. Yes, Alf. A uh, pint of bitter and a bit of tonic, please. I don't want to have a look at it. Look, would you get it into your stupid head? I am not interested. Ah, well, you think so now. I will never think so, right? Not if I'm stuck behind that counter till I'm 90. And it just stood there and tore it up right in front of her. Oh, yeah? And what made you do that then, Curly? Because he would upset, were Then he oh, talked for himself. You can't have to talk for him, you know. Miss Taylor is a good worker. She's honest, reliable and punctual. And it's my duty as assistant manager to keep her at that branch. Sounds reasonable, that. Yeah, well, then psychopaths always do, don't they, Jack? Hey? Well, nobody's going to believe it, you know. <laughs> they all think you want to keep her because you potty about her. I don't care what they think. She's a good worker and I'd be failing in my duty if I didn't try to stop her leaving. £2.10. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you haven't got another list for us, have uh, you? No, no, I think there's enough on that one to be going on with. It's the water heat I'm concerned about. I think that's a real danger. Oh, you think you might be blown up? Well, I don't want to dramatise it. Yes, Ken. Fine, please. Well, I'm sure Alfie wouldn't want you to blow up, would you? No. Do you know out about water heaters, Jack? Not a great deal, love, no. It's just that uh, Ken thinks ours is liable to blow up. Well, you only want to check your insurance then, don't you? Uh, look, I'll come round and have a look at it tomorrow, first thing. Now, that, you can manage it until then, I hope. Uh, sure I can. Oh, yeah, and while you're there, you can look at everything else on the list, can't you? Hey, up. What's happening with you, then? Not a lot. Oh, hey. I gather Kev's pranked his car. Well, it's not to do with me, is it? No. Uh, you're not going to help him, then? No, I'm not. I'll tell you why, shall I? Because I'm sick of folk round here thinking he can walk all over me. From now on, they can use somebody else as their doormat. All oh, right. Ah, man. Right. Twelve hundred and fifty quid. Oh. Well, all I can think of is I'm going to have to get a job, aren't I? Don't be stupid. Well, what then? Because you're not doing any more of these foreigners, as you call them. That's what got us into this mess in the first place. I don't know what, do I? <laughs> That's what I feel like doing, having a damn good crap. <laughs> Come here, let me have a go. No, you finish your breakfast. Look, I've had enough to eat. Besides, she who needs the grub. <laughs> Rotten man, Casey, after all you've done for him. Yeah, well, we'll sort something out, don't worry. Where are we going to get 1,250 quid from? I don't know, but don't worry. I told you, I've got us into this mess. I'll get us out. You worry about couples like us, don't you? They get into debt and the next thing they know, they're living out of a suitcase in a hostel somewhere. We're not going to end up in a hostel. That's all a bluff. That estimate's no bluff. I know, but where's he got it from? A main dealer's right, which is why it's an arm and a leg. Plus, he's put all the jobs on he can, you know. New subframe, new exhaust, new door, new bonnet. Are you saying he's cheating us? I'm not saying that. He's doing what anyone does when somebody else is paying. He's getting all the jobs done, what's needed, doing for ages. But what about the garage? Well, it's in their interest to find as much as they can, isn't it? And in the meantime, we go into debt then, do we? Well, not if I do the work, no. You? Yeah. Do everything what's on the estimate, except we save ourselves £600 labour, £200 VAT. Do you think he'll want you to do it? Well, why should he be bothered as long as he gets the job done? Yeah, cos he knows you're a good mechanic, or else he wouldn't have took the car to you in the first place, would he? Exactly. <laughs> Dangerous, Alf. There's no two ways about it. Red George was never complained. Well, maybe it was working when he was here. I'm over it wasn't broken before he left. Look, Alf, he's worn out. He's been in there donkey's years. Look, I never said this was a luxury flat, Ken. In fact, as I remember it, I'm doing you a favour letting you have the plate in the first place. All right, well, if it's too much trouble, I'll go and get the estimate myself. Oh, no, no, no. If there's any estimates to be got, I'll get them myself. Oh, is this all right if I come oh, in? Hello. Hi, Ken. There's a delivery man wants paying down there. Yeah, well, he can wait, can't he? Oh, Ken, you know, you have got this really comfy. It's a right little bachelor pad. Well, it'll be even better when there's no damp patch, the water heater's working. Look, I right said is... I will look at it. Does that mean you accept in principle to do the work? I never said that. I'm sure if there's anything wrong, he won't hesitate to fix it, Ken. Great, great. Well, there's no problem then, is there, Al? Audrey. Don't you think you'll be better off down in the shop? Look, it's you the fella wants, not me. Is it the water heater in the yes, kitchen? Yes, yes, help yourself. Audrey, I'm sure Ken doesn't want you prodding about in his I'm kitchen. Delighted she's taking such a keen interest. Yeah, well, just as long as you realise that all these improvements you're pressing for are going to radically change the basis of our agreement. Fine by me, Al. Yeah, and as long as you know that it's going to put the price of your rent up considerably as well. You just go ahead and do the repairs. I'm quite prepared to abide by the decision of a rent tribunal. Yeah. So you won a fortune, then? Enough to pay for a day out. 
My dad used to take us to races when we were kids. He used to put two bob bets on for us. Two pound minimum now. Oh, showing me age then, I <laughs> But the big question is, where to next? You never know with Reg. I bet he's right good company, isn't he? Well, he's a bit of a laugh. And it's better than sitting looking at four walls on your own. And he's after a bit of company himself since his wife left him. She's in New Zealand, I believe. She certainly didn't mess about when she's made her mind up, does she? I mean, you couldn't go much farther than New Zealand if you wanted to. <laughs> I'll see you. Ta-ra, love. One twenty-five, love. All right. There you go. Anything else? Um, no. Ta-ra. All right. Want to see you. Oh, yeah. Mr. Webster, your wife said I'd find you here. Look, you shouldn't have come to the garage. I'm only here to find out if you intend to keep your obligations. Yeah, well, you could have chose somewhere a bit better. But, uh, now you are here. Eh? There is something I wanted to talk to you about. I hope you're not trying to wriggle out with this. No, I just think there might be another way around it, that's all. <laughs> no, look, it's really very simple. You crash my car, the car gets repaired, you pay for this. Yeah, but the bills are a little bit over the top, innit? Well, you're saying the garage is cheating me? I'm not saying that, but you've got labour, VAT. I wondered if you'd, if you'd let me take the car. I'd do the work. Everything on the estimate, no quibbles. <sighs> and you get a first-class job, Mr Seymour. I'm a good mechanic. No, I'm sorry, you've already had your chance. Yeah, but the crash had nothing to do with my workmanship. I'm sorry, I prefer to take it to somewhere else. Look, we can't afford it. I've got a wife and a new baby. It's not my problem. Yeah, but if you'd only let me do the work on the motor... Look, you're a young man. I don't blame you for making me an offer that's acceptable practice, but when you took my car, you accepted liability for safekeeping. Now, you must learn for your own sake, as well as everybody else's, that liability is a serious matter. So the answer's no. £1,250, Mr Webster. If you haven't got it, I recommend you borrow it. The bank is probably the best place. Now, do I give the garage the go-ahead? You'll get your money. Don't worry. Thank you. That's all I require. Didn't sound too happy, did it? No. It's a lot of money, 1,250 quid. Look, it's my business, OK? So keep your nose out. No, Kev, it's my business, right? I don't want stoppy customers coming in here shouting the odds. Especially when it's not my stoppy customers. Ah, Norman. Um, <clears throat> you studied personnel technique as part of your Better Buy training course, haven't you? Yes, Mr. Holdsworth. Yes. Uh, would I be correct in thinking that you can never achieve uh, satisfactory revolutions from face-to-face -face confrontations between senior management and junior members of staff? If we're referring to Miss Taylor, Mr. Holdsworth... No, we are not referring to Miss Taylor, Mr. What? Although at some later stage I would value an explanation as to her disappearance in tears yesterday and her subsequent absence today, we are referring to uh, Mardi Raquel from the meat counter. You mean Miss Betterby? The very same, eh? I realise from your departing finances, tears that you're not winning any prizes for tact at the moment, but I think your youthful approach and natural charm will have a better effect on her than my approach has. Well, what's the problem? She won't strip off, Norman. Eh? Nope. She categorically refuses to wear her bathing costume to pick the winning ticket in tomorrow's Grand Trolley Dash. Well, it's a bit nippy in here with the air conditioning. Nippy? I'm not asking her to roll around in the Antarctic, you know. All I want is a few decent photographs for the Staff magazine and uh, the local newspaper. Uh, Mr. Holdsworth, I'd like a word with you. Yes, well, not now, Mrs. Duckworth. I've got problems with the trolley race. Yeah, too true, you have. Do you know I spend a fortune in this store every week, same as that lot over there? So I reckon I should have the same chance as them as entering. Well, Mrs. Duckworth, I don't have the time at the moment, but Mr. Watts will answer your questions, won't you, Mr. Watts? Don't forget that other matter, by the way. <clears throat> well... I hope you don't mind, but I didn't find them till out in the back this oh, morning. No problem, love. I'll get you a couple of new ones. New what? Apple's out. This has got a couple of old ones. Oh, not from here, she didn't. I served her myself yesterday. Look, if it's any trouble. No trouble. And I'm just sorry about that. Thanks, Audrey. Bye, love. Bye. 
You really know how to put profits up, don't you? Well, if you weren't so mean and threw the old ones away, I wouldn't have folks bringing them back and embarrassing them. Display rotation is a perfectly acceptable practice. Only if the new ones come to the top of the pile occasionally. You're determined to show me up, aren't you? First of all, Ken Barlow, now her. Oh, for heaven's sake, Alf, they were rotten and you know it. And Ken Barlow's got a point and all oh, that water heater looks like it came out the arm. That was a first-class water heater in its day. And people used to sew themselves into their clothes to keep warm and all. But give me a radiator any day. Do you know how much it'll cost to replace that water heater? No, and neither do you. But it's bound to be a darn sight cheaper than a new shop or a funeral. Funeral? Yes, if it's in there when it explodes or leaks. Oh, for heaven's sake, Alf, just look upon it as an investment. All right, all right, I'll see if I can fix it. No, not you, Alf, a qualified plumber. <sighs> And while he's there, ask him if he's got a chum who can fix a couple of slates and replace the new window frame. It's oh, look at him, not a care in the world. Nope. Looks to think we were all like that once upon a time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we were too young to realise it. Oh, I'm doing for that. So how did it feel? Not a twinge. At least that's what I keep telling myself. I'm surprised it's selling. Oh, well, he's moving on to bigger and better things, isn't he, now, since he traded me in for a classier model. Listen, kid, they don't come much classier than you. <laughs> hey, I should have grabbed your locking bar there before you got your talents into it. Well, you had plenty of opportunity while I was indisposed. Oh, not a chance. He wouldn't look at another woman while you are around. I should hope not. No, it's only me that picks the wrong guns. I always did. <laughs> Hello. Hello, ma'am. Oh. oh. <laughs> How's my favourite little fella? He's asleep, oh. ma'am. <laughs> Do you know, I never have a baby sleep as much as usual. Well, I'm not complaining. Oh, well, that's so contented. It's a pity he's got to grow up to be a man. Here, here. <sighs> Sounds like trouble. Yes, and it wears a white overall and it answers to the name of Al. What have you been up to? Not me, love. Ken Barlow. I'm just standing about getting the flack. Really? Have you got, uh, got the right prices on them for? Stuff them to the back, right? Put them right to the back, can't see. Call yourself a leader of men. Ah, Miss Taylor. I wouldn't leave you in charge of melting ice. Could I be of some assistance? Oh, it's a bit late to be offering assistance. Sorry? Now, Mr Holdsworth's phone for me. He's the manager, isn't he? Well, I'm sorry, I don't wish to be rude, but what exactly is it I'm supposed to have done? That is just it. You have done nothing. It's typical of men. Thick as thieves, the lot of you. You see this girl? Yes, I did see her, Mr. Taylor. In fact, I'm very pleased to see her. I had took it that she was uh, indisposed, that she didn't come in this morning. And now you're here, will you be staying with us, Miss Taylor? Well, she hasn't got a lot of choice, has she, Mr. Holdsworth? Not since your assistant manager tore up her transfer request into little pieces in front of her very eyes. Mr. Watts ripped your transfer request up? Yes. Well, let me say right away that I knew nothing about this event, Mrs. Taylor. If I had, I would have taken a very dim view indeed. I find that very difficult to believe. Surely you don't think I'm the sort of man who would turn a blind eye to the iniquities of petty tyranny? I think you're just the sort of man. Mrs. Taylor, that remark is tantamount to slander. I can personally guarantee that if this is true, the guilty party will receive a very severe reprimand. And I will take charge of your daughter's case personally. Well, you'd better. Otherwise, I shall be on to your superiors. Well, if by way of apology I could offer you a couple of free tickets to our batter by Grand Drawn trolley dash. You may not. But I will offer you some advice, Mr. Holdsworth. If you paid half as much attention to the welfare of your staff as you do to the, the mindless pursuit of profit, then this store, and indeed the world, would be in a much better state. Kimberly? Nineteen eighty-two. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise there'd be anybody here. I was just going through some of these papers, you know, bank statements and that. Years old, some of these. Well, I'll just get what I came for and uh, go. Right. Oh, yeah. Musical box. Yeah. 
That all. Mike, you know, I don't think you should have moved all this furniture out before you put it on. Alma's just popped in to uh, pick up some of her things. Oh, yes, right. Uh, hello, Alma. Well, I've got what I wanted. I'll uh, leave your keys and go. Then. No, you have a good route round. There might be something you missed. We were just about to leave anyway. Got to get back to the office. You take as long as you like. You can put the keys through the letterbox when you leave, all right? It was wrong. I admit it was wrong. Wrong? It was absolutely infantile. The behaviour becoming a madman. Never mind a, a tried and trusted young executive. Have you any idea the amount of abuse that appalling woman's poured on my head because of his stupidity? Yes, I can imagine, but I'm sorry. I just didn't think we could afford to lose a worker like Miss Taylor. Well, even so, we don't go around ripping up transfer requests. Even though we are involved in a more than purely business sense. Are you suggesting that I allowed my personal feelings to interfere with my job? Norman, Norman, I know that you are upset. But you must learn to detach yourself from these things, otherwise your climb up the better by ladder is going to be a short one, eh? Now, Miss Taylor must go, of course. I shall see to a transfer request person. No! Yes, Norman! I don't care how good a work person she is. It is not worth the aggravation. It's nothing to the aggravation you'll get if Rita Fairclough knew the truth about your wife. My wife? Yes, Reg, your wife, the one that's supposed to be in New Zealand. My wife is in New Zealand. Yes, but she hasn't left you, has she? She's only gone on holiday. Now, what would Rita think if she knew that, eh? <sighs> Looking for Kev, he's not here. Yeah, I know. It's you I've come to see, Mark. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've come to ask you for a favour. Well, before you do, Sal, the answer's no. But it's not for me. Still no, Sal. Mark, do you not care what this is doing to him? Did he care what he was doing to me when he was doing a bit of moonlighting? Look, if you don't mind, I've got a business to run. I'm not talking about the money. What's happened to you both? You were such good mates. Things change, don't they? Time moves on. I mean, I used to be his gopher and now he's mine. It's the way the world is. Is that how you look on him, then, as your gopher? Look, I know he's had a bit of bad luck, but that's the risk you take, isn't it, if you sail too close to the wind? All he was doing was trying to get some money together for his family. Well, then he should have come and asked me for some overtime. I'm sorry, Sal, that's the way it is. Don't ask me to bail him out. Norman, have you... Sorry, I'm busy. Sorry about that. There you go. Yeah. Now, was there something? Yes. I just wanted to say that things have come to a pretty pass when a colleague of mine that I have personally taken under my wing, nurtured, nay, treated like a son, can turn on me in such an underhanded manner. I'm sorry, that won't work. You won't make me feel bad. You've put me in an invidious position with this, you know. I'm afraid your insistence on transferring the most important thing in my life out of my life left me with very little choice. Norman, I can't refuse a transfer request. Not with Mrs Taylor breathing down my neck. I can't lose her. I won't lose her. <laughs> I have to send that transfer up to head office. So send it, but not today. Give me a week. <sighs> and will that uh, guarantee your discretion on the delicate matter of my wife and Mrs. Furcliffe? Who? Mrs. Furcliffe. You have my word. Done. Well, I haven't seen a water heater like that for years. Yeah, well, they said it was very good quality when they first put it in. Oh, I do not make them like that nowadays. I've repaired many one of them in my time. Oh, so it can be repaired, then? Yeah, if you can get the parts, Mr Roberts. But the bad news is you can't. So, I'm afraid it's a new one. Well, sure, there's something you can do to fix it. The only safe thing to do is to replace it. Well, how much is that going to cost me? Hmm. Ten pence short of 300 quid. Oh, well, that's... 300 quid? Ah, and that's on special offer. So, do you want one, or don't you? Took you so long. Didn't know we'd be in time. Yeah, well, I want to know where you've been. They didn't have what I wanted in Berry, so we have to go across to Hayward, okay? Another little visitor while he was out. Hey? Sally. Sally? Yeah, touching little scene. Pleading poverty with a baby. Brotherly love. Well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about you, mate. You must be desperate to get her to come in and beg. I didn't send anybody anywhere. Right, well, I'm not arguing a toss now. You spent half the afternoon getting them spares. 
So how about spending what little time is left putting spares on the car and making this guy some money? There you are. I've been chasing you all afternoon. Yeah, well, things got a bit involved this afternoon, Vera. Yeah, well, if you were going to tell me somebody's been fiddling, I'd agree with you. Fiddling? Yeah, that Mr Oldsworth. He went and offered Mrs Toffinos two free tickets for the trolley dash draw, didn't he? Who told you that? Kimberly. And you told me how Jack couldn't enter on account he was related to me and I weren't there. Now, that's not fair, is it, Curly? Well, did she say anything else? Did she mention me? Never mind you. What about Mrs Acid Drop? Did he give her two free tickets or did he not? Because if he did, it's just not fair, Curly. Because if I'd have known all I had to do was stand there and give him a bad time, I could have done that myself. Our Vera has always been very good at giving folk a bad time. Oh, shut up, you. Vera, Vera, Mrs Taylor is not entered for the trolley dash. Only because she told him where to stick his tickets, didn't she? No, I haven't got time to argue with you. I've got more important things on my mind. Hey, hang on, what about your tea? Jack. Now you've upset him. Oh, don't be daft. Well, why is he off his grub, then? Because Kimball is putting for a transfer, aren't she? Well, he should be cheering, escaping from the clutches of that flaming family. Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Love, it's a funny thing, isn't it, Jack? Must be. Look where he's got me. Tea won't be long, love. I've only just got her down. She's been playing me up all afternoon. Should have took her for a walk, then, shouldn't you? Yeah, well, I did earlier. Yeah. To the garage, by any chance? Now, let me just explain to you about Here's that. some explaining, hey. doesn't it, eh? When my wife and baby goes begging for favours... It wasn't like that. I only went to him for some help. Yeah, and you humiliate a lot of us. Look, don't you think that bloke's got enough on me already, eh? Without having the satisfaction of my wife and kid going cap in hand. I'm sorry. You're sorry? It's me who's been made to look a mug. I don't want to see or hear of you going anywhere near that place again. Do you understand me? <laughs> 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 Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't take it out on you. <laughs> I'm just so worried, Ken. <sighs> We've got no money. And we've got all this trouble, and Rosie just seems to cry and cry all the time, and I never get a minute. I know. <laughs> well, let's just forget about it, eh? <laughs> hey? Just forget about it. <laughs> I'll look after you. <laughs> I will. I'll look after you. You know, I thought you teachers knocked off at 3.30. The ones with any sense do. You know, I somehow can't see you as a table tennis man. Well, I don't know. I've got a dab hand in my youth. Anyway, it's a lot less energetic than taking football. No, I'd have thought chess was more your style. Yeah, well, I've uh, played enough real-life chess just lately to want to indulge in my spare time. Mm -hmm. You and me both. Right, come on, drink up. I'm closing. Oh, sorry. I didn't realise I was holding it. No, well, I've got my free time to think of and all, you know. And what do you do with it now, if it's not a rude question? Well, right this minute, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to pour myself a large gin and tonic. I'm going to start to cook a meal. You're welcome to share it, if you like. Oh, um... Oh, well, that's a bit difficult, Alma. I've got a pile of marking about a mile high. Thanks all the same. Oh, no, fine, fine. It was just an off the cuff. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. No, no, don't be silly. I'd have jumped at the chance if I hadn't been snowed under with work. <laughs> no, well, that's it now. That's me off. I shall not be offering again. <clears throat> Another time, maybe. Yes, fine. You go and get on with your marking. Bye. Right, bye. Hey, cheers, check well, up. Lad. Sir. Oh, go on, then. Make it two pints. Just the frantic <laughs> fathers just keep committing. Yep, something like that. Yeah, make that down here. Cheers, Martin. It's all right. And uh, pass us the darts, will you, please, Jack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, I do you good. Come on, then. All right. Cheers. Did you, uh, did you ever see Five Days of the Condorita? Oh, can't say that I did, Jack. Uh, well, it's about this bloke who works in this dull office in New York and does this dull job every day. Anyway, one day he's, uh, he's returning from picking up everybody's lunch from this delicatessen. He opens the door and fires everybody in the office slaughtered. Hmm. And from then on, he's the only one they can't get. Every corner he turns, every door he opens, there's somebody waiting to do him in. And you feel like this, fella? I do. At every turning, there's a Mrs. Taylor to bash me over the head or a Miss Betterby to give me a hard time. And who played the bloke in the film, just out of interest? Well, a bloke who had an uncanny resemblance to myself, as a matter of fact. Charlie Drake. 
Robert Redford. <laughs> no, hang on, hang on. Wait till they take my glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt such a bum. Yeah, well, we've all done it, haven't we? Well, she only went round there for my sake. Yeah, well, if a certain so-called person had done the right thing in the first place, there'd have been no need, would there? Yeah, well, that's out the question now, isn't it? Hey, what's this? Time off for good behaviour, then? Yeah, well, some of us do nice to behave ourselves. Meaning what? Meaning exactly what you want it to mean, mate. Oh, right. Been bending a few ears again, have you, Kev? No, just having a nice, quiet game of darts. Thank you very much. All right, well, I'll play the winner, then. Do you want a drink? Not for me, no. Oh, what's up, Kev? You don't want to play darts with me? Well, not especially, no. You don't mind working for me, no, do you? Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I do. Right, well, that's easily solved. You can pick up your cards tomorrow. Hey, Matt, No, on. I'm sick of him moaning on about how hard life is and what a pig I am. Consider yourself finished. Pick up your tools and you pick up your cards. Well, I think you should just go back to work the same as usual. Look, I keep telling you, I haven't got a job. He's fired me. I don't think he meant it, Kevin. Oh, no, he meant it all right. And what's more, he wanted everyone to know about it. There was nothing quiet about it. It was in the pub, loud and clear. Matt's not like that. Oh, he is. That's the way he is these days. The big I am. Well, I bet if you went to the garage, the same as usual. I'm sure nothing had Look, happened. if we go anywhere near that garage, it's a thump that jumped up little twit. Kevin, this is your job. So? I'll get another one, don't you worry. Yeah, and what about the money Mr Seymour wants for having his car repaired? Where are you going to get that from, eh? <laughs> Look, the baby's crying. Yes, I know. I know this is your pride, and I know this is very important to you. But you've got other things that are important now as well. Well, it's a smooth operation this afternoon. Popular winner, enthralling trolley dash, smiling customers, each one thinking I too am a winner, even though only a humble uh, customer at Better Buys, because I have the good fortune to shop in the best of all possible supermarkets. I'm having a lot of trouble with this Raquel Wollstonehome. Trouble, Mr. Watts? Why, what, uh, you're not involved in another romantic entanglement with me staff, are you? No, Mr. Holden. I'm not even... <laughs> No, no, I'm only jesting, Norman, jesting. So what's Rackle's problem, then? Well, ever since she's become Miss Betterby, she's got more and more temperamental. Well, of course she has. They all do it. It's the glamour of the position, the heady thrill of the title. Well, apparently her mum and dad think there's too much glamour. They're still protesting about that swimsuit. I chose that swimsuit myself. Yes, I know you did. I know you did. But Mr. and Mrs. Wollstonehome think it's... It's far too revealing. Rubbish. Nonsense. I want to see Raquel wearing that costume, Mr. Watson. Make sure she does. Oh, come on, Mr. No, Holzman. no, no. You see, there's only one, uh, there's only one greater executive skill, more elusive than man management. Oh, yes. And that's woman management. Hmm? Right? Right. Ah, Mrs. Duckworth. Oh, hello, Mr. Oldsworth. Mrs. Duckworth, uh, when you were a young woman, a young woman mind, were you ashamed of your body? Ashamed of me about it, wasn't it? <laughs> Quite right, Mrs. Duckworth. It's a sign of a twisted mind when a young girl's ashamed of her body. Personally, I blame my parents. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have said that, Mr. Oldsworth. She's very touchy about her mum and dad. Well, I didn't mean her parents, did I? God, I blame this Norman Watts for this, you know. There's something about that young man. He seems to make women edgy and, and nervous. You can fairly feel the tension leaping out of him when he gets near you. I run this fast trolley draw thing, then. What, do you mean at Better Buys? Mm. Oh, no, I never shop there. Well, I do. Hey, for every ten quid you spend, you get a draw ticket. And I've been stocking up with tin beans and pilchards. So I've got three draw tickets, so I've three chances. Oh, I see. Ten. You fancy yourself, do you, Phyllis? Oh, do you know? I feel it's going to be mine. And then I push the trolley around for two minutes, and I can pick anything I want. Two minutes? Well, you're going to have to be a bit nippy there, Phyllis. Are you sure you can cope? Ooh, I can and all. I'm a fast mix me when I get going. Yes, I've heard Percy Sugden say that. <laughs> there you go, mate. So, is fellow Seymour still chasing you, is he? Oh, of course he is. Wouldn't you be? I told him I'd pay the repair bill. What else could I do? You don't do things by halves, do you, eh? Smashing this guy's car, falling out with my I didn't fall out with him. He fell out with me. Either way, mate, you certainly know how to pick your times, don't you? Yeah, Sally wants me to go crawling back there, beg for me job back. Oh, why? Are you gonna? Yeah, because, like, he can stick his job. If he wants me back, he can ask me. And then I'll think about it. I say! Yeah, Jim Shackle, I'll tell you one thing. I'm awful glad I've got you here to keep a weather eye on my wife. How do you mean, Jim? Well, in case any man come in and start being disrespectful to her, you know, chatting her up and stuff like that. Hey, I don't need Jack to look after me. Whoa. I can look after myself. Do you know, if I found a fella chatting up out of here... Oh, yeah, what would you do, Jack? Well, I'd be in two minds. 
Whether I buy him a drink or smash his white stick over my knee. <laughs> Right, now then, can I get you something similar before I take my leave, Rita? Oh, no, thanks, Red. One's enough at dinner time. Oh, I quite agree, quite agree. Keep a clear head in business. Now, I shall expect you at four o'clock, can't I? Four o'clock? You haven't forgotten, have you? Better buy grand prize draw supreme, the trolley race for the uh, lucky winners. Oh. I'm counting on you being there. I don't know about that, Reg. I mean, I could be getting busy with the evenings. Oh, delegate, delegate. That's what assistants are for, as I'm always telling Mr Watts. Now, I particularly, they want you to be there. Oh, all right, barring accidents. Very good. And don't forget to bring your draw ticket. You never know your luck, do you? Eh? All right, Alf, lad. So how's it going, Alf? Oh, I'm fed up. Oh, come on, then, Alf. Tell your Uncle Jack all about it. Be frank. Look upon me as you would a doctor. You'll find them cheaper as well. Yeah, not much the way the price of ale's going. I'll give over, Alf. You get two and a half pints of our best bitter for the cost of a prescription charge. I'll tell you why I'm fed up. I'm fed up because you do people good turns, you get stabbed in the back for it. That Ken Barlow, he begged me to rent that flat of mine to him, and now he wants me to spend a fortune on it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, I mean, you do people favours, that's what you get for it. Ah, well, there is a simple remedy to that that I can vouch for from my own experience. What? Don't do people favours. You find it's the kindest thing all round, I find. Ah. <sighs> So you're not going to ask me why I'm here then, eh? Why I'm stood here watching you instead of at the cafe up to me knees in chip fat? I can guess. Yeah, well, you're very through, aren't you? I've always said that. So is Kev. That's why you're here, isn't it, Kevin? Well, you see, we were both right in the first place, weren't we? Look, Mark, what is all this between you and Kev? I mean, fair enough, a joke's a joke, but beggar a pants of mine. He knows he was out of order. Oh, yeah? Yeah, straight up. That's why he sent you in it, trying to talk me round. He's not sent me here, and that's the truth. Well, it makes the odds right, because he's well out of order. I mean, he's not only doing cars behind my back, cars that should be coming here, he's using my gear, my power, my eating. Yeah, and he knows he did bad, he knows that. But look at the situation he's in. He's got a kid there, Sal's not working. You're wasting your time, Martin. Yeah, well, look at it this way, Mark. He's red hot with the motors. Here you go, boss. Did you put him on the account? Yeah, no problem. Who's that then? Who do you think? I started him this morning. <laughs> what in Kev's job? Flaming naughty, you don't hang around, do you? I've told you, Martin, right? You're wasting your time. <laughs> All right, so what do I owe you, Alma? Oh, what was it, lasagna? Uh, two for the family. Very nice, by the way. Compliments to the chef. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, suitably fortified, back to the classroom. Oh, um. Incidentally, I, uh, I haven't got a huge pile of work to mark tonight, so uh, I don't know if you're otherwise engaged, but if you're not, you'd like to come to my place for dinner. <laughs> when I say dinner, it won't be quite as grand as that sounds, but uh, nourishing, I guarantee. Well, yes, I would, thank you. Good, good. I'm rather banking on the fact you might like to have something to eat you hadn't actually cooked yourself. Yeah, well, you're dead right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seven o'clock? Yeah, fine. Good, good. See you then. Bye. Bye. Hi, Martin. Hey. All right. Hello. Ask me who's got a social life, then. This is your social life, Alma. Cafe society. Well, no, it isn't. <laughs> well, not quite, anyway. All the tills have stopped. Yes, I know that. I'm not blind. But, but can't we do the draw? No, no, not yet. Let the tension build. Come on, get on with it. Patience, ladies, patience. Must have the draws advertised, four o'clock. Here at Better Buys, we pride ourselves on scrupulous attention to detail. <laughs> I think she fancies Curly, you know. Oh, that Raquel Walson home. Mind you, I wouldn't show me any girl would fancy him. He's a good catch, you know. Well, she's welcome to him. And if she does fancy him, well, she's got rotten taste anyway, hasn't she? I mean, just look at that bathing costume. Mr Holdsworth, Mr. Not Holdsworth. Yet. Mr Watts, I'll tell you when. No, no, it's not that. It's Raquel. She says she feels embarrassed, you know, in a costume. Embarrassed? Well, what does she expect me to do about it? Eh? Well, tell her, uh, tell her she doesn't like it. She can always take it off. She'll keep it quiet for a minute or two. Why are we waiting? Come on, you love it dark! The natives are getting restless, Mr Watts. Oh. Mr. Watts, we're paying some business to keep the customers waiting. Right, let's get the show on the road. What, now? Yes, now, lad, now. Come on, chop, chop. <coughs> uh, good afternoon. 
ladies and gentlemen, uh, if we have any gentlemen, <laughs> oh yes, I can spot one or two at the back there. <laughs> 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 well, I'd like to welcome you to the Better Buys Grand Draw. And the glittering prize, as we all know, is a trolley dash up and down this, this veritable Aladdin's cave that we all know is Better Buys. Oh, did not it talk well? <laughs> How he couldn't talk you into doing you know what, I'll never know. No, he's a really good baby, up to now. Touch wood. <laughs> Not honest, he's dead but lassied most of the time. Well, he knows he's lucky, you see. He's got me for the dad. Hey, it's you that's lucky, Martin. Oh, well, yeah, I know. Oh, no, I do. I thought that when I went down to Kevin Webster's to tell him someone else has got his job. Well, I think it's a lousy trick. It is. And I shall tell Mark Casey when I see him. I bet Kevin's feeling bitter, isn't he? No, he wasn't there. He's probably searching around other garages knowing him. Oh. Anyway, I told Sally there didn't seem any point keeping it from her. It all seems to be bad news today, as mm. Kevin and uh, Alf Roberts moaning about Ken Barlow, <laughs> and my man moaning about Alf moaning. <laughs> well, someone's been having a good little day, haven't they? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, no, it's nothing really. It's just I've been asked out to dinner tonight. Well, into dinner, I should say. Ken Barlow's cooking for two. <laughs> Ken Barlow's lured you to his little flat. Oh, come on, it's not like that. It's nothing like that. It's right, social. Well, I don't know if I'd call that good news. Not with Ken Barlow's reputation. Still, if you're happy. Hey, don't knock it. It's nice to be asked. Now, if the lucky winner of this grand draw is here at this present moment in time, then he or she can make their trolley dash now. But if the lucky winner isn't here at this present moment in time... Oh, get on with it. Sit down and give your brains a rest. The winning ticket number will be displayed around the supermarket, but it must be claimed by closing time by Saturday week. Otherwise, it'll be redrawn. So, without further ado... Hello! I'd like to call upon our popular manager, Mr Reg Holdsworth. Thank you, thank you. Now, I'd just like to say, in all sincerity to your customers assembled here, before I make the grand uh, draw, that you are all, in fact, winners. Because you shop at Better Buys, the name for quality and value. Are we having this draw and not? <clears throat> Mr Watts, roll that drum. <laughs> thank you. Right. Right, I have a ticket, the winning ticket, and I now call upon Miss Raquel Wollstoneholm, Miss Better Buy 1991, to read out the winning numbers on the ticket. The number is... I've got it upside down. The number is 986. Yellow 986. Now, is the winner here, please? Never had a smell. Yellow 986, ladies. I wouldn't care if I were lucky in love. Come on, ladies, check those stubs. Hey. Uh, check that ticket, Mr. Watts, please, if you'd be so kind. 986, Mr. Holdsworth. Our lucky winner, ladies and gentlemen, and known to many of you, I'm sure, popular local tradespersonette, Mrs. Rita Perkloff. Right, come on, Raquel, get the solid. Solid, solid. No, hang on a minute. Now, Raquel here will run through the store with I'm you. I'm not running for anybody, not in this swimming costume. I'll run through the store with you. We've got two minutes to grab what we want for I our goodies. Give come the on. signal to commence now by counting three, two, one. Three, two, one, go! Come on, then, come on. You know, it's always thin, isn't it? Then that as it gets more. Ah, uh, the richest gets the pleasure and the poorest gets the blame. So? Hiya. How's the baby? She's asleep in the cup. Well, I've got the offer of a job on a walkers on Henderson Street. You know, the tire and exhaust place? It's not really a mechanic's job and the money's nowhere near like what I've been getting, but it's the offer of a job. I've got to let them know by Monday night, so I thought, just hang on a bit, see if Mark makes a move. Yeah, well, he won't. How's you know? Cos Martin's been round here looking for you. He went round to the garage to see Mark and... What? He's taking somebody else on, Kev. It's got somebody doing your job. Blimey. Already? That was a bit quick, wasn't it, eh? He must have had it planned. He must have been planning to sack me. Well, it looks that way, doesn't it? Well, he's scheming on. And Mr Seymour, he's been on phone twice. He wants you to phone him back. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's had that. Uh... Yeah, get over Mark Flaming Casey. Tell you what, I'm glad I didn't take your advice this morning and go sidling into the garage 
Would have looked all right, Pratt. I never wanted you to go crawling to him. Honestly, I didn't. Martin told me that's what you'd said to him. But I didn't. I just thought it was some sort of misunderstanding between oh, you and yeah. Mark. Misunderstanding, all right. I had him down for a decent bloke. I want to say something. Oh, uh, Mrs. Furfield wants to say something. All this stuff. Yes. I wanted to go to Weatherfield General. Oh, Mrs. Furfield. I want the hospital to have all this stuff. Oh, that is fantastic, Mrs. Furfield. What a wonderful gesture. No, you think so, Mr. Holsworth? Yes. Smile, please. I'll get that. Mr. Webster, you're not an easy man to find. Told you twice today. Yes, I know. Evening. Well, I'll get straight down to brass tacks. I took the car in for repair this morning. I'll be without it best part of a week. Now, luckily, I've got the wife's runabout to fall back on, otherwise I'd be into iron, and you'd be liable for that as well. Now, like I said, the estimate's for £1,250. Yes, you have told us. Well, I then went round Casey's garage looking for you. Yeah, well, I don't work there anymore. So I was told. That's why I'm here. You're not planning to move out, I hope, as well as jobs. No, we are not! Leave it, Sal. Look, Mr Seymour, you don't have to keep coming round here checking up on us. I've told you, you'll get your money. Right. I'll say goodnight, then. Why do you keep telling him you're going to pay him the money? We haven't got the money. We can't even pay our mortgage. We'll get the money. Where? Look, I don't know, but we'll get it. What if you just tell him to take a running jump because you're not going to pay him? Then what would happen? I don't know. Well, yeah, suppose I do. Suppose he'll take us to court and we'll still end up paying the money, only it would have been done in court. Look, Sal, it's down to me. I've told the bloke I'll get him the money and I will. But how? Look, I don't know. Now, don't keep going on. She looked beautiful today. Oh? Kimberly. I wish I could talk to her. Listen, there's more to it than just... Just talking curly. A woman, well, sometimes she doesn't even want words. She doesn't even want persuasion. She wants action. Not that she's much chance of getting it. Oh, you don't understand, Kimberly Vera. Oh, I don't, I. Well, I'll tell you what I don't understand. That drawer, that trolley dash thing, it was a right fiddle. What do you expect, woman? They're all fiddles. Anyway, you haven't got a ticket, so what do you care? Look, I do care. It would have fiddled that Holdsworth fiddled it. It's wicked. No, 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 no. Mr Holdsworth wouldn't do that. It's more than his job's worth. And you mustn't go around saying things like that. Otherwise, there could be serious consequences. Well, I don't care. I say what I think, me. Think? Think? You haven't got the equipment to think. Well, you are a fine one to talk about equipment. Shut up. I'm going to work. So take notice of Curly and stop mithering on about Holdsworth and his flaming raffle. Careless talk costs jobs. Well, I don't care. He did fiddle it. Oldsworth fiddled it. Of course he did. Because that twisted him. He could hide behind a corkscrew, that fella. Well, I don't know why you're getting so upset, Rita. Of course you know. Oh, look, if I've quite unknowingly offended you in look, some way... Look, just... don't crack on. You don't know what I'm going on about. That business at your supermarket. Ah, now, look, I've got to say something, and I hope you don't take this amiss, but I was very upset when you gave that trolley load to charity, and I'm not against charity. Oh, that's nice for you. Yes, but it could be taken two ways, that sort of a gesture. Some people could have got the impression that you're actually sorry you'd won. Look, Reg, you're forcing me to say this, so I will. The whole thing was a fiddle. Oh, how can you say that, Rita? Because it's true. It had to be. You had my ticket stub in your hand when you dived in that drum. Oh, I say. I don't know where you're going to get Look, these lurid ideas. Look, I'll Reg. Now, come on. Admit it. Well, all right, somebody had to win. So why shouldn't it be a friend? That's what friends are for. Don't you understand? I have never been so embarrassed in my life. And by it, that's saying something. Oh, well, I didn't know you were going to take it this way. All right. I admit, I wanted it, and not for my sake, for Better Buy's sake. I wanted an attractive winner, because it's part of the Better Buy image. But basically, it was an impulse. An impulse to do a good deed. Because you see, Rita, a man like me wants to give. I've always believed in that, you know, haven't you? That it's better to give than to receive. It wasn't Kimberly that took me, you know. It was her mum and dad, especially her mum. Now you're learning, son. 
Have you ever seen our Vera's mother? What a rat bag. Now, between me and you, I think Kimberly's mugging's about as much fun as a day out of the chest clinic. Oh, Kimberly's not like her mother. She loves me, Jack. Underneath. Best place, I think. Hey? Now, that, come on, stop moaning and have another drink. So. They made a break off that engagement, Jack. Have a good mind to go round there and tell them exactly what I think of them. Do you know, it'd be a lot less trouble if you just found yourself another bird. And as far as I can see, this country is swarming with very fanciable birds, but don't tell our Vera I said that. Nah, Jack, me and Kim were made for each other. We were two of a kind. Do you know, son, if somebody else had said that, I would have stuck up for you. But they're ruining her life, Jack. Yes. Who else would be mugging up to marry her? They might as well stick her in a nunnery. She's going to be an old maid. The selfish swines. Well, that's it. I'm going to go around there. I'm going to tell them. Oi, oi, what, what about your drink? Did you see that? Curly's left his drink. He's gone potty. Well, you know why he's gone potty, don't you? Working with that Oldsworth, a twister. How do you mean, twister? Shut up, Vera. I won't! I'm on about that draw that he fiddled this afternoon. You don't mean to say that was a fiddle? Of course it was. Rita Fairclough, she's his girlfriend, isn't she? You're not going to tell me she won fair and square. No, with her services rendered, that's what it would give it her. Ooh, and I've got a full shelf of pilchard at home, the rotten article. Oh, you are Good oh. evening. Uh, has Kim Barlow been in tonight? Oh. I've not seen him. Oh, good. I don't want him mithering me about that flat amount he's renting. Not when I'm having a drink. Well, you don't need to worry tonight. How do you mean? Well, he's entertaining tonight. He's invited Alma to dinner. What, at the oh. flat? No, round by the dustbins. Of course, at the flat. Where do you think? Well, it can't be that bad, can it, if he's inviting guests round? Oh, good point. Hey, maybe that invalidates his lease. Using your flat for immoral purposes. Liz? Hey, just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That was a very good steak. Well, as soon as you said you'd come, I went round to the butchers on Albert Road. Oh, I know that one. And I asked him for his best fillet. Oh, he's expensive, though. You think why they charge him in a restaurant, that makes it seem reasonable. Oh, he's a good butcher, but he's a cheeky devil. <laughs> you know, since I've been doing my own shopping, I found that standing in a butcher's queue is an education in itself. All the byplay with the ladies, all the variations on that'll put a twinkle in the old man's eye. <laughs> I bet Alf Roberts never says the same selling a quarter of cheddar. Oh, he wouldn't. Hey, how's your campaign going to get your repairs done? Oh, you know about that? Oh, yes, well, Audrey keeps me up to date. You know, I think she's on your side. She said if Ken Barlow can get money out of Alfie, there's hope for being old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Ah, well. Good having company. Not much pleasure eating on your own. Oh, I know. Newspaper propped up against a sauce bottle or sat in front of the telly with a tray. <laughs> well? Cheers. Cheers. May I be frank with you, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor? No, that's not going to work. Right, I'm going to be brutally frank with the pair of you. Do you really want your daughter to end up an old and lonely spinster? Oh. You. Thank you, Mrs. Well, come in, in the warm. You'll take a mug of cocoa, will you, Adrian? I don't suppose you'd say no to a hot water bottle in your bed tonight, would you? Come on. There we Where's Curly? Had his breakfast and opted. Did you hear him come in last night? Couldn't help it, could we? Hey, the noise he was making, clustering round the flaming house as if he was on a skateboard. Yeah, well. I'm not surprised uh, Curly's upset. He doesn't like sharp practice, don't Curly? No, it's probably gone in early, you know. You know, to sort holes in the because somebody should. I have warned you, Vera, don't meddle in that, because you're going to be upset and all, because you'll be out of a job. Right, I'm off then. Oh, well, at least you'll be the smartest, best-dressed mechanic in the garage, Ken. Yeah, not to mention the brilliantest. Yeah, well, that goes without saying. And I'm sure it'll be fine your first day at Walker's, once you get over it. It's just that... What? 
I've been my own boss for so long, you know, I might be a bit like a wild animal, you know. Not civilised enough to work in a team. Yeah, well, as long as you don't go around biting people. <laughs> and don't worry, Kevin. We'll get this money for Mr Seymour sooner or later. Mm, much later. Mm. I'll see you after anyway. All right. Bye-bye Bye. there, Rosie. <laughs> hey, you don't think she cries a lot, do you? Because she senses the tension in the atmosphere, do you? You know, because they say babies can do that, don't they? She just cries because she's a moody little madam, aren't you? Yes! <laughs> now go on, get gone, and don't come home until you've been given instant promotion to the team leader. Oh, yeah. I'm expecting to be running the show by the end of the week. <laughs> I'll see you. Good luck, love. Sat there eating bananas all through the picture. And we were on the back row. We must have had at least four. Got to keep the potassium level up, he said. Well, Kevin, he never offered me one. Do you know, I've met some right weirdos recently. Now, you don't think I'm going off, do you? Well, you wouldn't be missed better by if you were, would you? I suppose not. Did you do anything interesting last night? Not very. Hello. Who was he? Who was who? You know who I'm talking about. That man in your arms outside your house. You've been spied on me! Who was he? Oh, you think we tills on the blink, Mr Walt? Who was he? Mr Walt. Who was he? Though it's none of your business, his name happens to be Adrian. Adrian? Would the warehouse manager please report oh, to the Well, we may have a few empty thing. shells, Mrs Thank Douglas, you. but it's been more than worth it. You know, I thought that trolley race went down superbly well, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Public relations coup de gras. Oh, yes. Well, it works out all right for Rita Bearclough, didn't it? I bet she couldn't believe her luck. <clears throat> I hate your gam, Phyllis, turning out in this weather. I get fed up of staring at four walls every night. Not got a cold, have you? No, but I like to keep a box handy. Do you know, I think January is worst month of year. I mean, everything's grey, isn't it? You feel grey. I bet if you had your blood examined, that'd be grey and all. I should have thought you'd plenty to keep you to you. <laughs> well, I wish you'd tell me. Well, winning all that free grub at Better Buys. For your information, Phyllis, I gave it all to the hospital. Ooh, conscience troubling you, were it? Conscience? Well, the summer do say that it was no coincidence. Manager's lady friend finishing up with winning ticket. Some meaning you, of course. I said some, and you can hardly blame them, can you? I mean, it's a bit like port when it Paris sweepstake. Oh. <laughs> I'm not becoming a biscuit fiend. It's just my turn to provide the uh, tea break victuals at school oh, this week. I thought you may be restocking after Alma had eaten you out of house and home. Was it a success, your meal together? Total, though I do say it myself, what did it? She positively purred over my gazpacho. Did she now? And drooled over my likely grilled steak and green salad. Drooled as well, <laughs> fancy. Oh, Alf, I'll, um, I'll leave you my key, just in case workmen turn up. There'll be no workmen turning up today, Ken. Yeah, well, no workmen can't be trusted to keep a promise these days, but I'll leave it, just in case they prove us wrong for once. There'll be no workmen turning up because I've not ordered any work to be done, Ken. It's good enough for him as it is, is that flat up there. I wouldn't mind if he was paying me 100 quid a week. You might get 100 quid's comforts then. I wonder just how well they did hit it off. Eh? Hey? Him and Alma. I mean, there's every reason they should, haven't there, when you think about it. They're both ripe for a rebound. Mind you, I'm not sure she's his type. She can be a bit common, yeah, Well, Alma. that's why he wants the flat beauty fine, isn't it? So he can entertain his fancy women. Well, I'm not paying for it. Well, wouldn't it be worth, what, a few hundred quid, is it, just to get two lonely people together? No. Oh. When did your heart turn into a tin of rice pudding, Alf? The day I realised it was down to me to earn all the brass. As your dad used to say, you're low when you pay, master. Exactly. Oh. Right, who's this, Adrian? Come on, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I order you to talk to me as your boss. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, I see. Ashamed of him, are we? Well, he did look a sort of pathetic character, a wimp if I've ever seen one. No, I'm not ashamed of him. His name's Adrian Gosthorpe. Adrian Gosthorpe? 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 I've known him since I was a kid. His mother and my mother are cousins, and as a matter of fact, he's stopping with us. Stopping with you? Yes. In the same house? No, we've built a bungalow in the back garden for him. If 
theater, theater. Look. Do you know anything about this 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 bloke that Kimbo seen? What bloke? Uh, his name's Adrian Gosthorpe. Well, she's never mentioned any bloke to me. He's only staying at her house. Oh, I got his feet well and truly under the table. Are you sure there. she's never mentioned it? I've told you she hasn't. Uh, is that the conversation appertaining to the smooth and efficient running of the better by Mr. Watt? No, no, it's personal. Well, how did you get on? All right, I suppose. Do you think you're going to like it there? Well, let's say I didn't hate it. Oh, <laughs> okay, then. I thought you'd had a horrible time. The rest of the lads was great as well. A very matey bunch made me feel very welcome. There you go. All that worrying for nothing. <sighs> Rosie asleep. Yeah, she is. Miracles do happen. <laughs> I've made liver and onions. Oh, great. <laughs> can we afford it? Of course we can afford it. We're not going to starve. I'm sure if Mr Skinflint Seymour would want us to do that. Yeah, well, he won't get his money from a couple of skeletons, would he, eh? No. You're looking very nice for a dinner time anyway, aren't you? Are you saying I'd turned into a frumpy house mum or something? No, I'm well, not. It's it just... says in all magazines you have to get dressed up when your husband comes home from work. And Listen. I presume it means dinners and all. I'm not complaining. Well, I should hope not. In fact, I was reading in one of these magazines how a wife should greet her husband stark as now and again. Well, it's always tonight. Mm. Right, off with your penny and on with the mink. Reginald is here to escort you to luncheon. I'm not wearing a pinny, and I won't be seen dead in mink. Good. That'll save me a bob or two. <laughs> something, uh, something the matter? Yes. What? I'm beginning to get some fallout, Reg. Fallout? From the trolley race that you fixed so I'd win. Oh, now, Rita, fixed is not a better by word. I simply orchestrated events so that we could have an ABC one winner. And not your local scruff who would not have reflected the better by image in the media. That's what it was all about. You fixed it. Rita. And people are beginning to say you fixed it. Who's saying that? A customer this morning, Phyllis Pierce, as good as accused me to my face. In fact, as good as said I was a party to it. Well, that is monstrous, that monstrous. Well, I'm glad you think so. Well, I hope you told her that you knew a good slander lawyer. No, I didn't, because I don't. Oh, Rita, Rita, this sounds to me just like local tittle-tattle. Probably inspired by envy. And I've had a lot of envy directed at me in my career. Quite natural, I suppose. And do you know what Reginald's response to that sort of thing is? Treat it exactly like royalty. Royalty? Yes. Tittle-tattle and be damned. Now, come on, put your coat on and let's mosey on down to some wine bar. I don't think that's a good idea, Reg. Well, what's wrong with the wine bar? I mean, for you and me to be seen together too much at this moment in time. You don't? No, I don't. Not till tongues have stopped wagging. As they will, when they find someone else to wag about. Do you know, Rita, one of the many things I admire about you is your innate common sense. It's breathtaking. Is it? It is. Because what you say is absolutely right. We've got to play this very Elizabeth Taylor Richard Burton. To the paparazzi, we are just good friends, but we know the truth. Now, I'm going to be in contact again. You can count on that. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Hey, I should be here. I've gone to the bank. A snap. <laughs> Oh, well. Well, what? How did it go? How did what go? Stop acting for damn coy. Your tete a tete with Ken Barlow. No, he invited me for a meal of that sort. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, he's a damn good cook. Seemed very pleased with himself this morning. Called it a total success. Which could only mean that uh, you had to sing for your supper, couldn't it? Audrey. Mm hmm? I know you lead a pretty dull life in that shop, but don't try and compensate for it by inventing a steamy affair for me. Ken's a maid, for obvious reasons. End of story. Oh. That's why I've gone straight to the bank. Surprised to see you in here, Red. Oh, uh, why is that, Jack? Well, I thought a man of your standing might have popped off to Florida or something. Spot a winter sun, you know. Yes, yes, well, I do like to get away, but we're better by introducing new products and uh, new marketing concepts virtually weekly. It's not easy to get away, frankly. Must be very tough at the top. It is. Mind and body operating at a constant Mike one. Mind you, that store, it's a credit to you. Everybody says so. Well, I think so, Jack. Especially our area. Oh, really? Oh, excuse me. Surprised to see you out and about today, Phyllis Love. Are you another one that thinks I'm decrepit? 
Well, I've news for you. I'm not. Not by a long shot. And nothing could be more obvious, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> now, can I get you something to warm your cockles, a sherry or a port? <laughs> if you're paying, I'll have a whiskey. Uh, it's my pleasure. A whiskey for the Lady Jackson. Okay. Make it a double. A double, yeah. Are you on your own, then? As lonesome as the pine. Why, you're not thinking of propositioning me, are you? I'm not. <laughs> And Rita Bearclough, is she stuck in cabin? No, no, Mrs Pierce. <laughs> no, no, what? Well, it mustn't be naughty. <laughs> Especially when the uh, dispersions are grand. Huh? Are you saying you didn't fix that race so Rita Bearclough could win it? Categorically. <laughs> That's not what I heard. And I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, really? And which bandit clapped out old nag was that? <laughs> <laughs> His missus. Vera Duckworth. husband in? No. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. He's gone back to work. I'll give him this. Well, what is it? It's the bill for me car. It's the 1,250, like I said it would be. You couldn't give me a cheque now, could you? No, I couldn't. Well, make sure he puts it in the post tonight. Well, actually, Mr Seymour, we've been discussing how we're going to pay you. Have you? Yeah. We thought we'd pay you £400 now and say pay the rest at £10 a week. <laughs> You're joking, love? No. Well, it'll take you, what, two years nearly to pay me off at ten quid a week? I mean, how much am I going to be losing in interest and what about inflation? I'm sorry, love, I want my money now. Well, you tell your husband I'll see him in court. And I mean that. So why is he stopping at your house? Well, I'm not speaking to you. He's your lover, isn't he? No, he's not my lover. He's just lodging with us. Oh, that's his cover, is it? Roger the Lodger. Pathetic. Well, it doesn't fool me for a minute, does Roger the Lodger? Adrian's a very respectable young man, and he hasn't got a one-track mind like some I could mention. Well, it certainly looked one-track the other night when you were necking with him and you weren't exactly sprouting branch lines either. And what I could Will you let me pass? It didn't take you long to start going out with someone else, did it? Just let me pass, oh, please. Oh, were you going out with him at the same time you're supposed to be engaged to me? Which raises a rather interesting question, doesn't it? Are you two-timing him or are you two-timing me? Yeah. Well, see, huh? you seem to be of animated conversations with various personnel today, Mr Watts. Do I? Yes. And was that one person as well? Yes. And I didn't figure in at all, did I? You? Yes, me. No. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I know when I'm talking about someone and when I'm not talking about someone. Don't you get ratty with me, Mr Watts. What about Mrs Duckworth down there? Well, what about her? Has she spoken to you about me? Yes, as a matter of fact. She never stops talking about you all day long. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. 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 Oh, aye. Uh, hey, you'll, uh, you'll need the key. You're not getting in without that, lad. <laughs> I take it nothing's been done. Well, I told you this morning nothing was being done. I pay rent for that flat, don't I? Well, if you can call it that. Listen, if you were living in London, you'd know what rent was. But you do receive money from me, which presumably goes into your pocket. What's that supposed to mean? I don't hide it from the taxman, if that's what you're suggesting. What I'm suggesting is... You seem to see my rent as pure profit. Well, that is the classic greedy landlord syndrome. You get rich and fat while I live in squalor, and well, I'm sorry, Alfred, it's just not good enough. Every company has its costs, and your costs are my reasonable comfort. Well, that's what I'm providing, isn't it? A roof over your head. And I might tell you I bitterly regret it. Yes, well, no doubt you'd say the same thing if the roof was corrugated iron and the room was a cow shed. Well, of course it would, because rent you're paying, all it is a cow shed. No point in talking to you, Rackman. Hey, I say, just a minute. Look, don't bother bringing me that key back tomorrow, nor any other day, neither. You never said there was anything wrong with that flat when I did you a favour and let you have it, because that's what it was, a favour, a good turn. And now you're trying to take advantage of my good nature. There's no wrong with that flat, Ken. Note. 
Rotten riser I've been complaining about, probably. Whatever's happened, it sounded like a piano were falling down the stairs in the shop. That were me. But have you hurt yourself? Well, of course I hurt myself. You know when you fall down a flaming flight of stairs. Uh, well, you need any help? Not from you, I don't. It's your flaming fault in the first place. I didn't push him, you know. I was in the flat, honest. Oh, Ken, in the mood he's in, he'll probably say you mugged him. Well, thank God that's over. I've had nothing but stress, stress, stress. And that can be a lethal cocktail, I can tell you. I mean, as if I haven't got enough on my hands running this place as the flagship for the better my fleet without being torpedoed by the members of my own staff. And you've not exactly been a tower of strength, have you, Mr Watson? Oh, no. Where was the encouraging word there? The offer of help. Every time... Mr Watson! I'm talking to you! Sorry, mate. Where have you been? Oh, we had a big tidy up, would you believe? First day, unpaid. Oh. Well, there's nothing wrong with Rosie, is there? It's just seen what has been. <sighs> what did he want? He's brought you his bill. Oh, he doesn't trust the post, does he, eh? Him? Of all the fellas, it had to be his car to go and shunt a 24 carat bog face. <laughs> it's insane what they charge for labour there. Could have done it for half that, less. Have you told him how we're going to pay it? Yeah. And? You won't accept it. Eh? He wants his money straight away, Oliver. Oh, what? He's going to have you summoned. Summoned? Yeah, he's going to take you to court. You mean he's going to sue us? Well, whatever it is, Kevin, I'm frightened. Yeah. Well, I'm not frightened. We could have our house taken off as you could end up in prison. Oh, don't be stupid. Neither of those things are going to happen. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, Sally. Come on. It's not as serious as that. I've had a horrible day. <laughs> Baby's not stop crying. Our wash has got a blink of broken two plates. I'm stuck in this house worried about this. I've even shouted at Rosie twice. Come here, you silly sausage. <laughs> we'll sort it out, I promise you. <laughs> What's that rubbish he's playing? Oh, sounds nice and romantic to me. Hey, he's not got Alma up there again, has he? No, he hasn't. They're just good friends. Yeah, well, I tried to tell her to tread a bit careful going up there dining with him on her own. He's likely a sex maniac oh, on top of everything now, else. Now, Al, for God's sake, let it drop. Well, just think about it. Look, he's left his wife. He was always a ladies' man. But he had three wives for a start, hadn't he? Now he's got a flat of his own playing soppy music. What does that tell you? I know what it tells me. He's likely walking about up there in a smoking jacket and heaven knows where he's smoking. Are we going home or are Yes, we? yes, yes. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes, well, that's what comes from not spending a measly few quid on the repairs for him. It's likely to cost you a lot more if you've got to spend a week or two in bed with that ankle. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. I'd rather walk about my hands and knees. Just listen to that. It's like having Noel Coward up there. Oh. Yes. Oh. All right. Yes, Go on, I'll turn that on. I see him crossing the road with that young lady. That's, yeah. uh, that's Adrian Gosthorpe, isn't it? Yeah. You know who I thought he was. So he's, he's working here at the Building Society now? Yeah, he's the mortgage manager. We think it was the branch manager the way he acts sometimes. Yeah. Thanks. Mrs Duckworth? What? Is this your bucket? Well, it looks like it. Mind you, one bucket looks very much like another, doesn't it? I have just nearly brought my neck tripping over that and there's filthy water all over the floor. Oh, don't worry about that. Cleaners will clean that up. I want you to clean it up, Mrs Duckworth. Now, 
Me? I'm going home. After you have cleaned up the water, yes. Do you know, I've been walking around this flaming bucket all day. It's as if we're Siamese twins. I noticed you don't ask Miss Betty about to clean shelves, do you? No, because we know you've got your favourites, Mr Oldsworth. You are fired. Eh? Hey? You're fired. Finished. Done with. Why? What have I done? Oh, don't become the innocent with me, Mrs Duckworth. Other people have tried to pull the wool over Reggie's eyes. Smarter people than you. Oh, yes. You are a born troublemaker, aren't you, Mrs Duckworth? What trouble? In fact, I would say that you are a snake in the grass. That's right, isn't it? A snake in the grass. I'm most certainly not better by material. In fact, it beats me why we ever employed you in the first place. Give me that. What are you doing? He wouldn't take us to court for 1,250 quid, Kev. He wouldn't, would he? I've told you. We'll worry about that if and when it happens. I don't want our names dragged all through newspapers and all through the courts. What have we done to deserve this? Look, we made him the best offer we could. £400 now and the rest at £10 a week, and that's pushing it. Look, he can do what the heck he likes as far as I'm concerned. We can't do any more. He can go and whistle. I'll see you at dinner. Oh, come on, Sally. Stop worrying. Look, he's just trying it on. He could see how he was fixed. I reckon once he's had a chance to think about it, he'll snap his hand off. I'll see you at dinner time, all right? Bye. Well, it's good to see how put you off your food. It's no good starving yourself to death, love, is it? Get yourself a bit of toast, then. I don't want any toast, do I, Jack? I've lost my job. I've, I've been victimised, and all you can say is get yourself some toast. Look, I told you. I told you a dozen times, would you listen? No, you had to go sounding off about that trolley race being a fix. I'm in a way here, I did like a... And flaming woodpecker on it. Well, that trolley race, what a fix. And if you need any more proof, just look at me sat here now, instead of clocking in at better buys. Oh, yes, he had to get shut of me, did Oldsworth, cos I knew too much. He got shut of you because you talked too much. Oh, well, tar, Jack. Tar bunch. I might have known you'd back me to the hills. Look, it's no good going on at me. I can't get your job back. Curly doesn't want to know. So the best thing for you to do is to say goodbye to better buys and get yourself down to the job centre. Oh, you reckon, do you? Well, you've no choice, have you? Oh, haven't I? Well, we'll see about that. Ah, oh, Mr. Watts, I've caught up with you at last. Could I have a word with you? Yes, Mr. Watts. Um, it's about Mrs. Douglas. An unfortunate business, but I really have no choice. I hope you do appreciate that. I mean, I realise I've put you in a very tricky position because she's your lawyer. Telephone call for Mr. Holdsworth. Mr. Holdsworth, telephone. Thank you. Oh, must. Um, look, you just carry on working and I'll catch up with you later. Oh, yeah, okay, Mr. Holdsworth. Taylor. Oh, Mr. Watts. Can you close down this till for the time being? We're short staffed on the shop floor. And can you uh, fill up the tin peas? If you say so. Well, look, Kimberly, I've got to talk to you. And I thought I'd made it perfectly clear to you that I don't want to talk to you. Uh, just one thing. What's this Adrian got that I haven't got? What can he offer you that I can't offer you? You owe me that, surely. I owe you nothing, Mr. Watts. And I've got no intention of discussing Adrian or any other part of my private life with you. Now, would you just leave me alone and let me get on with my job, please? Oh, but keep... Hey, staff problems, Mr. Watts? No, no problem, Mr. Holdsworth. Good. Uh, I'm sorry about the interruption, by the way. Now then, about Mrs. Duckworth. I do realise that you might be under some pressure to try and persuade me to rescind my decision to uh, terminate her employment, but that is impossible. I just wanted to make that very clear. Look, Mr. Holdsworth, if you wanted to fire the entire staff, I couldn't care less, all right? OK, Mrs. Prescott, can you manage, love? I'll keep in two packets when they come in, all oh. right? I'll have to take weight off my ankle for a minute or two. Why have you come in at all beats me? I could have managed perfectly wrong. Yeah, but would you, who'd have done this wholesaler's list if you had? We'd have managed. Yeah, we'll have to stop the shows then. Oh, if they don't see what they want, they've got tongues in their heads, you know. Yeah, there you are, you see. See what? You don't know the first thing about customers, do you? <laughs> they've got feet on the end of their legs, love to take them somewhere else if they don't see what they want. And I dare say they'd close for dinner time, wouldn't you? Oh, Phil, what we take over this counter at dinner time these days doesn't even pay the electric bill. It's not the same as it was when the factory were over the road, you That know? is not the point, Audrey. The point mm -hmm. is, folk... Oh, well, hello, Phyllis. Hello, Phyllis. Hey! 
Is that chair for likes of me? Yeah, well, I've had a bit of an accident, you see. Though. It's his ankle. Oh, I am sorry. Hey, you shouldn't be here working in this shop. You should be at home with your feet toe. Oh, half rest. If as much chance as that as trying to nail Jolly to wall, Phyllis. What can I do for you? Small van. Right, love. Is that all? Yeah, for now. Uh, 42, please, please. 42. Hey, Alan. Hey, Alan. Hey, you go looking after yourself. I oh, will, love. I will, yeah. I'll be one about in a day or two. Ah, that's what Harry Palmer reckoned. You know him. He used to live in back of Victoria Road. Oh. Hey, he tripped over there, cat in thall. Took a right knock to his antle. That's over 12 months ago. Do you know, he's never walked since. Oh. See ya. See ya, Phyllis. He's coming along. I mean, he seems to have grown every time I see him. <laughs> when I think what a little mite he was when he was born. Well, he wasn't that little. No, not compared to how he is now. Oh, you're a bonny fella. <sighs> yes, you are. Coffee. Oh, you yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Better have a bigger jar. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's all right. I can get it. No, no, let him do it. He gets happy playing martyr. Martyr? I'm not doing this for fun, you know. Well, I've told you, if it's that bad, you should be at home resting. Oh, change the record. Woman. So how did it happen? Well, he uh, fell down the stairs to Ken Barlow's flat. One of the steps were up. <laughs> oh, You're really enjoying this, aren't you? You two. So if it didn't break my neck, we could have all had a good laugh. Yeah, you still wouldn't have stopped at home even then, would you? I might do if I knew somebody in the shop was looking after it properly. Ooh. That's £6.82, please, love. Well, you just have to look on the bright side, Al. What bright side? Well, if it had been Ken Barlow that had fallen down them steps, it'd be more than repairs to the flat you were forking out for. Oh, thank you, Gail. You really know how to cheer a fella up, don't you? Yes, I know, and you should be at home resting. Oh. Will he listen to reason, Gail? Will he act as like? <laughs> but I can be just as awkward as he can. By four o'clock this afternoon, he will be begging me to take him home. <laughs> there you go, lads. Sergeant. Hey, what do you have to do to get Sir Brown to hear? I was before then, too. right, you know. What? Phyllis. She was here first. Phyllis who? Jack, there are fellas coming here I can't stand the sight of. They give me the creeps. But I still have to serve them, don't I? Because that's the way Alec likes it. And that is what he pays me for. I'd remember that if I were you. Or it might not just be your Vera who's looking for a job. Yes. You know what I want. Aye, is it from here to here for a start? How oh, Vera would still have a job if you weren't shouting your mouth off in front of Flaming Oldsworth. I was only saying what she told me. Any road, you'd be better off without him. My God, he's a shifty old devil, that Oldsworth. Now, are you serving me with the light hell, or do I take my custom elsewhere? It's usual to pour a drink for a lady. Show me a lady in a will, 55. You'll find that just right. That didn't hurt, did it? More than you will ever know. Why does everybody have it in for the duck with say? Oh, come on, Jack. It's not the end of the world. There's plenty far worse off than you. Just think what young Kevin and Sally are going through. Ah, two sausage, egg and chips. Never. Hiya. Hiya. Hey, look where the wind's blowing. You've come to give us a hand. You're just in the nick of time. Your pinny's hanging up behind the door. You know what you can do with her? Listen, you're not saying her to cup of tea, then. Go on, you've twisted me arm. Martin, two cups of tea, please. Well, I say a lot to this beautiful son of yours. Ah, and he is, isn't he? Aren't you beautiful? Who is beautiful? He's not like that all the time, you know. He has a great pair of lungs on him when he wants to use them. Excuse me, girls. This morning, then? He's been to see his grandma, Audrey, and his granddad, Al. Mm-hmm. And if you're thinking of meeting me, ma'am, at lunchtime in the Rovers, forget it. She's got her hands full with Alf. Alf? Yeah, insisting on playing the martyr and going into work. <laughs> How did he do his ankle in any road? He yeah. fell down the stairs. I mean, it's a wonder he got away with just a twisted ankle. I hope so. It could have been a lot more serious. Look, he landed on his wallet. Oh, do you know, that <laughs> is wicked Martin. Uh, you're not bumped into cell on your travels, have you? No, why? She's looking for me. No, no, I just wondered how they were doing with that rat Seymour. 
There's nothing they can do, is there, if they haven't got the money? Mm, I know what I'd like to do soon, anyway. Yeah, well, we know what you'd like to do, Rambo, but right now we'll settle for you keeping them customers happy while we drink our Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Three bags full, ma'am. I hope you're taking notice of this. Well... Well, just who's doing all the work around yeah. here to keep him in a life of idle luxury. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Hey. You know, it's a rotten thing to happen, though, isn't it? Eh? Well, to Kevin and Sal, I mean, just when they've got everything in front of them, the whole world falls in on them. I mean, what is this Seymour fella trying to do to them? Nothing he can do, is there? Kev's made them his best offer. You just have to like it or lump it. Hiya! Hi, shh. Hiya! Sure, sure, I've just got to sleep. Uh -huh. Had some good news this morning, didn't I? Oh, well, that makes a change. Yeah, a chance of some overtime. Not much at first, like, cos the rest of the lads have got it carved up, but it's a start, isn't it? Wow, don't go working yourself into the ground, Kevin. Oh, don't worry. Can I smell chips? Yeah, it'll be on the table in two Ooh, minutes. good. There's uh, a letter for you there. It came second post. Right, thanks. What is it? Oh, from a flaming Seymour solicitor. Oh, he has it. He has, yes. He wants payment in full within 14 days, else he'll see us in court. Appointment to see your Mr. Gosthorpe. My name's Mr. Watts. Could you take a seat, please, Mr. Watts? We're gonna have to find somehow paying this off, Kevin, you know. Oh, yeah. Where are we gonna get that sort of money from, eh? How many more times do we have to tell you? Well, then we're gonna have to borrow it. Oh, yeah. Then it wouldn't be 1250 we owe, would it, eh? It'd be double that. We'd be paying it off forever. We couldn't even afford the interest charges. I don't want us being dragged to all the courts. I've had enough of this all my life with my dad. It's been rouse, rouse, rouse over debts. I never met you and the last thing I wanted was for Rosie to start off her life like this. <gasps> and you think I do? Which is why we're not borrowing the money, right? But heaven knows what's going to happen to us if we don't pay it. We're going to end up on a bad debts list. We'll never, ever be able to get HP on anything ever again. We'll even have bailiffs around taking all our furniture off Look, us. we've got 14 days to pay it, right? We don't have to chuck ourselves into a blind panic. Oh, look, Sal, I know what you went through as a kid, and you're bound to fear the worst. But I'm not your dad, am I, eh? And there's no way I'm going to let those sort of things happen to my wife and my kid. I promise you. Oh, Sally. Look, we'll just see where we stand. See what this same old fella can do and what he can't do. And we'll take it from there, all right? Mr. Watts? Okay, Mr. Mr. Watts, Adrian Gosthorpe, mortgage consultant. Mr. Gosthorpe? Right, Mr. Watts, I don't believe you gave us any details over the phone, so we'll start from the beginning, shall we? Are you married? Nope. Engaged, perhaps? I was, until this conniving little rat came and put God knows what thoughts into her head and poisoned her mind against me. I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but these things do happen. I'm sure Ms. Wright will come along one day. In the meantime, you're making a very wise move. You can't do much better than put your money into property nowadays, and I can assure you we'll do everything we can to help providing your financial status is sound, of course. What exactly is your occupation, Mr. Watts? Assistant manager in a supermarket. The same supermarket where my fiancée works, as a matter of fact. Your ex-fiancée. She wouldn't be my ex-fiancée if it wasn't for a slimy little toady who came along and ruined our lives. A jumped-up little rat who works in the local building society. This supermarket? Better buys. Norman Watts. Got it in one, so you won't be needing this. Will you, Mr. Gobthorpe? Gosthorpe. Yeah, it's not too tough to see me now, are you? I am, as it happens. I'm really quite intrigued. Hey, To see what kind of a man would use such a charming, innocent girl in the way you used Kimberly. 
abused her? Constantly pestering her for sexual favours, dreaming up all kinds of schemes to get your evil way with her. If that girl hadn't shown such strength of character, such purity of soul, heaven only knows what might have become of her. I don't believe this. What do you take me for? I don't think there's any point in our continuing this conversation, Mr. Watts. I suggest you leave now, or I'm afraid I might have to call security. You swine! You won't get away with this! Ah, I've salad like a word, love. All oh, right. Oh, Sally, she's so gorgeous. Oh, she is now. She's quiet for the first time today. Oh. Hey, if you've come to see if you can do a couple of hours, keep you out of mischief. Get on. No, I haven't. Is your uncle any better then, Mr. Well. No, it isn't. He should be at home. But will he listen to me? If I listen to you, I'll be out of business in a week. Oh, go away. What can I do for you, love? Come on. Well, I don't really like to bother you, Mr. Roberts, oh, but... Well, me and Kevin, we're in a little bit of trouble and... We need your advice. What sort of advice, love? We've had a solicitor's letter. Solicitor's letter? I mean, I don't really like to trouble you about it, but I've got to talk to somebody. I'm, I'm going out of my mind with worry about this. Oh, well, let's have a look, then, shall we? Yes, Amanda? Right, put him through. Hello there, Mr. Newton. Mr. Newton? How are you? Fine, just fine. Oh, good. Now, what can I do for you? I've got a bag. Love. Really? Well, that's great. But uh, how much below the asking price? Oh, I see. And they got nothing to sell? Yeah, well, I couldn't agree with you more. I'll, uh, uh, yeah, let me know, will you? Oh, good man. Yeah, well, you know how I'm fixed. They can complete yesterday, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. OK, uh, I'll leave it to you, then. Thanks for calling. Bye. I'm off then. I'll be back about four. Hang on a minute. Have I forgotten something? No, nothing like that. I've just had a call from your estate agent. You know that young couple they showed around my flat? They made an offer. An offer you can't refuse? <laughs> right. Well, that must be a relief. Relief? I'm over the moon. First time buyers. No chain. Oh, it's not a bad pad for first time buyers. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. You know, when I think of the place I first bought, well, they wouldn't let a dog live in that now. But you've come a long way since then. Hmm, I like the thing, sir. I'd better start thinking about getting the rest of my gear out, hadn't I? That'll be the end of another chapter in my checkered life. See you later, then. See you later. Hmm. Betty Mize, is this the head office? Can I help you? Right. Well, I'd like to speak to somebody in authority. Then who would you like to speak to? Well, I don't know. Can you tell me what it's about, please? Well, I could tell you what it's about. It's about victimization, that's what it's about. Well, you really will have to put it in writing. You will, I, I can tell you what it's about now. Well, it is customary to... I don't care what's customary. Oh, sorry, I don't I flaming can't... well believe this. Look, all I want to do is talk to somebody. Now, listen here, you. Hello? Hello? What do you think you're doing? I told you I'm going home. I've got things to do. You're coming with me. Audrey, how many times do I have to tell you? I'm not shutting the shop yet. Not for another hour, at least. And that's your last word? It is. Right. Well, you're on your own. I'll be back in an hour to pick you up. Well, you can't leave us like this. I don't want to leave you, Alfie. I want to take you home, because I don't like to see my husband suffering. But, you know, frankly, I am running to the end of my patience. Now, either you drop the latch now and come home, or you're on your own. Well, I'm not shutting the shop yet. Well, there's no more to be said, then, is there? Audrey! Audrey! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what do you do for an encore? Smash me over the end with a bloody steam hammer. Oh, so it's uh, it's no better then. Well, it was. You uh, you fixed the stair, I take it. Yes, yes, I see. And uh, the window frame, the damp patch. The, 
Yeah, well, they've not got round to that. Yeah, well, uh, when they do get round to it, there's a leak under the sink, there's so a perhaps what? they can get that done. A at leak the same under time. the sink? Yeah, yeah. You know, Alf, uh, you really will be better resting that leg. Yeah. Never mind all that. What about a leak under the. Oh. Tougher than you thought, were they? Sorry? Great batches. I was expecting you back an hour ago. Oh, no, they were no problem. I tied it all up in half an hour. No, I called in at the estate agent. Estate agent? Hmm. What do you think of that? Hmm. Very nice. That's what I thought. I thought we might go and have a look at it. We might? Right. But why? We've already got a home. Oh, that's not our home, Mike. That's the one I used to share with Peter. I want us to have a place of our own. Mine and yours. Somewhere where we can make a fresh start together. And not be living with the memories of Peter everywhere we turn. That's why I put my place on the market. You what? This afternoon. And that's when I spotted this. Well, that place will cost an arm and a leg. We can afford it. With what I get for my place and what you get for your flat. Well, I only hope I can find a buyer as quickly as you found one. Hey, we don't see much of Mike in here these days. Well, I can't say that I've noticed. Oh, well, Alec has, that's for sure. He reckons his takings have dropped by half since Mike started drinking elsewhere. Well, if he's that desperate, you'd better put a G and T in there. Large one? Yeah. Yeah, lads. Yeah, cheers, Jack. There you go. Cheers, Jack. Yourself. So, so where's he expect you to get that kind of money? Oh, well, search me. But I'm not going to a loan shark, that's for sure. Oh, what's he want, blood? <laughs> Might be easy if he did. So what did Alf Roberts reckon? Oh, we told so. We should write back to see more solicitor. Explain how we're fixed and hope he sees that the offer we made, the best is likely to get. And if he won't wear it? I'll see you in court. Providing Sally doesn't go round the twist first. Second miscellaneous. Hello, Reg. Hello. Oh, but I'm not too late. Last minute crisis at the store. Small problem over stock discrepancy. Turned out to be a computer error, of course. Oh. Again. See, by rights, that's Mr. Watts's province. But uh, had I left him to sort it out, we would have definitely been there till this time next week. Well, sit down and get your drink. Oh, thank you. Still, oh. the lad's been under a lot of pressure lately, hasn't he? Well, we've all got problems, Rita. We just have to learn to leave them at home. Well, that's hardly likely in Curly's case, is it? Not where the cause of his problems is working under the same roof as him. Mm. Anyway, there's been no more mutterings about that trolley race, then. No, not a word. Mind you, I didn't think there would be once I'd given that Duckworth woman in marching orders. God, blimey. Got a tongue like a viper, that woman, you know. But she took on more than she reckoned when she locked horns with Reginald Holdsworth. Oh, yes. There'll be no more talk about fixed trolley races, I can assure you. <laughs> well, I can't think where Curly can have got, sir. It's obvious, isn't it? He was avoiding us. He went out of this house this morning at the crack of dawn like a ferret down a rabbit hole. And I'll tell you something else for now, I know. If you're expecting Curly, to put a good word in for you, forget it. Because at the end of the day, Curly is just like everybody else in this world thinks an output number one. Yeah, well, I don't need Curly to stick up for me. Eh? I phoned Better Buy's head office this afternoon. You what? Oh, yes. I got a rights note a bit, you know. So if you've got any complaints, put it in writing. You haven't? I have. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, and I've posted the letter and all. Look, nobody treats me like that flaming Mr. Iron Mighty Oldsworth did and gets away with it. 